early this morning on Lake Hartwell in South Carolina on the single most important day in the sport of bass fishing because this is Championship Sunday and on this day we will crown a new world champion. Let's get it going. One event, one tournament that stands far above all the others. The one where we find our world champion, also known as the classic. If you dream of fishing competitively, sooner or later you will dream that dream of yourself on that stage, holding up that trophy, seeing your name on it, alongside the names of all the others who took on the best of the best during three straight days of the toughest competition you can imagine and came out of it victorious. All those names, unforgettable, each one a legend for who they are and what they did on this day, the final day of the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. Giant bass. The bombs keep dropping, and Lee Livesey with 33 pounds, six ounces. He is stone cold. Kyle Welcher, a brand new Academy Daily Leader. That day is here. We are started underway. And it is the single most important day in the year. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. Championship Sunday, no other way to put it. You win today, you hoist that trophy today, your name instantly becomes legendary. Tommy Sanders here with Davey Height and Mark Zona. We got two guys at the top. That's our lead story. And what are the astronomical odds that we would come into Championship Sunday with a tie for the title? Let's take you back to the way hit yesterday. Some jaw-dropping moments, of course. Jason Christie, a favorite of so many because he's so, come so close so many times here at the class. And he, he makes no secret about it. This is what he aims for. This is his life goal and his chosen profession. Coming in with 19 pounds and six ounces. Seven ounces, a brand new Academy Daily Leader in Park Hill, Oklahoma's Jason Christie. Well, he would not stand alone atop that leaderboard. Let's call him the young upstart. Second year only on the Bassmaster Elite Series, still seeking his first win. Is it going to be this one for Kyle Welcher? 17 pounds, 10 ounces. He is in a two-way tie for the lead. Proven once again, he is stone cold Kyle Welcher. Well, he you better be stone cold today. Pounds, Absolutely. Pounds. Former profession was a poker player, and he is all, all business here on Lake Hartwell, baby. Yeah, he absolutely loves this lake. It fishes a lot like West Point, where he spent most of his career fishing. We'll see how things work out. He's got his hands full with Jason Christie today. Well, there's the tail so far. Uh, moving in the right direction, arrow up for Jason Christie. More day two over day one. Opposite story for Welcher, but Welcher says, Pay no attention to that. I could have done so much more on this day. A lot of confidence. Jason Christie, boy, he is wanting this so bad. He's wondering, will this be his day? For both of them, a huge, huge task before their own Robbie Floyd standing by with Christie and Welcher. Jason Christie's been in this situation before, twice going out on the final day of the Bassmaster Classic. It didn't go your way. I know that first time Edwin beat you. That's a 30-pound bag, but I know you've lamented that thought of being here that last time. What can you learn from history? Um, you know, the last time it, the conditions changed, and I just had a tougher time fishing. Um, today, I'm just going to go fishing. You know, it's I actually, when I got in the boat this morning, I deleted the waypoints on my Garmin. Uh, I looked at Google last night, kind of looked at kind of what I want to fish. I'm just going to play the conditions, go fishing, and whatever happens, happens. You know, I have been in this position twice, and I've lost it. But how many guys have not been in this position? So it is what it is. Making changes, though, too. I'm seeing you do stuff this week that I, I'm not used to seeing you do. Yeah, i got a spinning rod in my hand. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? Uh, the spinning rod's actually got me here. I've caught some really big fish flipping the jig later, but... 
The spinning rods carried me, and what was funny is the first day I almost didn't even start there. I almost just kind of committed shallow because I felt like that would give me the best chance to win, but there's just not that many fish shallow. Well, year in and year out, for the past decade or so, you have to agree, Jason Christie, one of the most feared guys in the sport. Absolutely right, and we've talked about this earlier this week. This whole tournament is a process, and Jason Christie has perfected that process almost throughout the history of his Classic tenure and the rules of the game, pretty simple. You had better catch them today. <laughs> Absolutely. And, of course, he's going up against Kyle Welcher, a very gifted young angler from Alabama, and he has put the number up. He has tied Jason Christie, and he is ready to go as well. He also with Robbie Floyd. Third year on the Elite Series, Kyle, and now you're on the biggest stage with a chance to win the Bassmaster Classic. Tied going into this final day, man. You thought it would take a certain number to win this Classic. You're only 16 pounds from there, but unfortunately, Jason Christie hasn't caught less than 17 pounds. What makes you think you can beat him and the other 23 guys? I just know how lakes like this fish. You know, this is a clear water impoundment. There's a lot of pressure on this lake, a lot of spectator boats on this lake. An eclipse in that 16 or 17 pound mark three days in a row is an extremely difficult task. It doesn't matter who you've got trying to do it. It's all about the fish. And here it doesn't seem to hold up like that. So far, this has been the biggest weight classic we've ever had on Hartwell. But it does seem like it's just hard to do that, you know, for three days in a row. You've got one kind of magic spot. You know there's some bigs there. Can you catch those bigs today? We'll just have to see. The conditions are a little bit different today. I'm really hoping hoping that I can generate two or three of those really good bites today and it'll make the day a whole lot easier. If it doesn't pan out there, we're going to just have to run around, run some fresh water, and hopefully generate some big bites there. How those nerves feeling? I'm, I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcher and Christy at the top, that's the big story. Another big story is our playing field, full of fish but complicated. Absolutely right. And Lake Hartwell has definitely shown up. Great weather this week. Looking at our hummingbird unlock the lake. And the number one key, number one, Hartwell is a monster. You're looking at about... Just under a 1,000 miles of shoreline here. Your hummingbird unlocked the lake. All of those icons right there. The number one key in this tournament, three pounds or better. That is what got you to this final day. And really the great thing, how healthy this fishery is, Davey Height, looking at this hummingbird unlock the lake. Three pounds or better has been caught all over Lake Hartwell. It really has. This is the fourth Bassmaster Classic on Lake Hartwell, but the the place is fishing better than it ever has. This is three plus pounders, but a lot of those numbers you see are four, four and a half pounders. The lake is fishing really well. Kyle Welcher is a numbers guy, but this is gonna be the heaviest weight to win today we've ever seen. So great to have you with us. We've got seven hours of live on the water coverage for you coming for the most important day in the sport of fishing. Davey Hyde, you have experienced it. You have won this tournament. What's going through these anglers' minds right now? Well, I really love what I'm hearing Jason Christie say about his two second place you know, losing the lead two times in the Bassmaster Classic, he's got a positive attitude. There's a lot of people that would have traded places with him. He's got the right attitude today, but Kyle Welcher, he certainly does too. He told Robbie Floyd, I'm good. That goes a long way. And really, the, the, the look, there's 25 phenomenal fishermen trying to get the title of Bassmaster Classic. But the story of this final day, it is Jason Christie. If you can compare him to other sports, he's Dan Marino. He is one of the best on the planet to not get it done. And you start to ask yourself, you only have so much more time in your career. It's going to be a – look, the classics of the past for Jason Christie, we have seen crazy things happen on the final day. Look for that to happen again here. He is so feared, so respected. You watch any angler. When Christie comes on TV, everyone stops yes. to watch this guy. He is a phenom. He is cool. He is, he is casual. He is calculated. He really gets the job done. And really, look, we're going to look at some highlights from days one and two. What are the astronomical odds? Number one, coming into this final day with a tie. But for Jason Christie to be able to make his way to back to the Bassmaster Classic, and have a shot to win this tournament on the same lake where he failed to do that four years ago. Just think about those odds. Yeah, those odds are, are like you said, astronomical. But we, I just don't think we can forget that this lake has been been fishing so good and you hear stories from people like Hank Cherry that's not in our top 10 today, Brandon Cobb that everyone thought was our going to be our favorite coming in and you hear stories of lost fish, but then you see Brandon Cobb and Hank Cherry catching those fish yesterday coming back. We're, we're focusing on Jason Christie, and he certainly deserves that. He, he has earned it. But this tournament is going to be very fun to watch today. We could see somebody catch a 20-plus pound stringer and come from in the teens and, and win this tournament.
Well, let's take it out live to Jason Christie as he gets underway on this very, very important day. Man, I'm just not, you know, look at that one following it. You can see Christie's lure and the fish like in the middle of your screen. There was hundreds in here yesterday and I've literally seen maybe 10. And the problem is they're like that when they're all singles. And it's hard to get them to eat, but for, they're gone. I mean, like everything, 300 yards. Uh, we're gonna fish this little ditch right here, back out where I caught that first one, and then uh, I'm just gonna go fishing. I mean, it's the third day of the Classic. You wouldn't expect anything any different, would you? Something's gonna change, at least for me. That is very interesting, Jason Christie with That's one right. you know, fish. I was thinking they're coming here and catch me, hopefully one or two good ones, and then you know you're going. I, I would have some fish, and just the opposite. I mean, just luckily, luckily we at least got one, so that's the positive. I mean, we we still got the best section going out right here no, to catch no, no. another one or two. But they're just not grouped up. And, I, and there's just not that many fish in here like there has been. And it's weird, something, something different happened last night because there's leaves and trash everywhere. It's like they, they ran a bunch of current last night or something, I don't know. There's a group right there. Well, that is one of the right ones for Jason Christie. But the alarming thing is he has had his limit every day in the first 20 minutes of competition. I, you're right, Z, but I really like what I'm hearing from Jason Christie. When we were here before and he had that lead, it was like, I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to do what got me here. And it I really cost him. And he's got a very different attitude this that's morning. I mean, the ones that's automatic is when there's groups of like five. But most I've seen is three and they're just, just and they may not even be bass. I sure would think, though, if they would all, if they're going to come out of here, they would hold up right here where. This ditch is. I just checked the water level. Jason Christie said, you know, with the leaves flowing, maybe the water rose, but it hasn't changed. Just just a little slight drop overnight. So Christie with one good one. In the boat so far, let's take a look at Kyle Welcher again tied with Christie to start this championship Sunday at the Classic. We'll take a look at some of the action from Kyle first from yesterday, from day number two. Exactly right, and that's a scary proposition what Kyle Welcher's doing. A well, little bit of meat and potatoes, you know? catching some spotted bass out deep. But it's when he locks a big swim bait, a big, big swim bait in his hands where he does the majority of his damage. And he said he can visibly see a lot of these big bass that he was catching two giant shots from Welcher on day two. Yes, interesting listen, listening to Kyle Welcher yesterday, and you almost think, man, he's just, he's just flying. He's just doing whatever. He's, he's fishing deep, he's fishing <laughs> shallow, he's catching them two feet deep, he's looking at them, he's not looking at them. But watching him in you know, the last few years on the Bassmaster Elite Series, that's what he does, that's who he is. So this is no different for him. If you see him struggle for a little while, you'll see him change up just like that oh, yesterday. That big large mouth, he said he'd seen that fish for two days. If you listen to his demeanor and how he approaches a tournament, you can tell he used to gamble for a living yes. <laughs> because he hangs it all on the line. Yes. He said, look, I will absolutely go for this. And if that swim bait works, I will blow this tournament away. Well, you can bet he is all in on this day, his biggest day in the sport so far. Kyle Welcher, there's our leaderboard as it stands mm -hmm. right now, unofficial scores from our first 30, 40 minutes of fishing right there. And it's Stetson Blaylock on top. Steve Kennedy had a tough day yesterday. 
But again, we're going to be looking at Jason Christie and Kyle Welcher, a relative newcomer, trying to make it big, trying to win the Classic. Just being this close to knowing, like, we are literally five bass away. I've caught thousands of bass in my life, and we're five bass away from winning the biggest tournament in the world. That is a surreal feeling, but this is what we plan for, and this is what we prepare for. Like, everything that we do all year is to get in this position. So I, I thought it was a possibility, and we came into it now. We're just too close to really step back and just enjoy the moment. We have to try everything we can to try to get it done. Coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. You still have time to win $1,000 playing along with Fox Bet Super 6. Simply scan the QR code now, download the Super 6 app, and enter your Bassmaster Classic picks for a shot at the jackpot. The contest closes soon, so download the Fox Bet Super 6 app and play for free. Everything is in play right now on Lake Hartwell 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. If you're just picking up with us, this is the third day of three days of fishing, the most important day of the year in the sport. I want to recognize our host city, Anderson, South Carolina, really the gateway to Lake Hartwell, a, a really bass knowledgeable community here. Neil, Paul, and everyone at Visit Anderson making a lot of this possible. Let's take a look at our unofficial leaderboard right now and the man on top of the leaderboard. Stetson Blaylock of Arkansas. He has been super steady throughout this tournament. You get this guy in the mix in the first day, he generally stays till the end. This week, he's doing something very important. His father-in-law is so close to him. Well, he just lost him, he's thinking about it. My wife lost her dad uh, unexpectedly during the Harris Chain event a couple weeks ago. And, you know, he was, he was more than a father-in-law to me. He, he was a friend. You know, I'd known him for 20 years and fished a lot with him. And, uh, you know, I noticed late in his life, he started wearing a cross around his neck. You know, uh, Lindsay's mom asked me if I wanted that, that cross. You know, do I believe that wearing this cross is gonna help me catch more bass this year? Absolutely not. But I know where he's at and I know that he's in a better place and I know that he's looking down on me. No matter how I do, whether it's good or bad, he was uh, one of my biggest supporters, and I'm definitely going to miss him for sure. Important week on so many levels for Stetson Blaylock, and right now he is, as we say, our unofficial leader with four fish in the boat. Let's take a look at some of that action early on Championship Sunday with Stetson Blaylock. Exactly right, watching Stetson Blaylock today. It's been a, no big one, but a nice two bullet approach this tournament, just like Jason Christie, but different. A wacky worm. Not no big one, but a nice one. Early in the morning and then backing it up with shallow crank. And the one thing about Stetson Blaylock, the, the, the interesting thing about this tournament is all eyes coming into this championship Sunday. You're looking at Kyle Welcher, you're looking yeah, at Jason yeah. Christie. The last time we were on this lake for nervous, Bassmaster huh? Classic in 2018, it was a come from behind victory. <sighs> Stetson Blaylock has done exactly that so far today. Yeah, we can't. Oh. Can't keep your yeah. eyes off Stetson Blaylock. He's had that solid week. Like Kyle Wester was talking earlier, you know, you're just 17, That's 16, what we needed 17 right pounds. there, baby. That's one of them. Strong second place finish in 2019 for Stetson here as well. He knows this place. He can win here. In that top spot right now, guys, with that five pound, four ounce largemouth to get his, his fourth fish of the day, but that is a great tone setter if he wants to make a comeback from lower in the top 10. I'm in bird bird's eye view with Stetson Blaylock. That is what is amazing about Lake Hartwell is you could catch a bunch of good spotted bass deep and then boom, one of those giant largemouth shows up. And we talked about it. If you really watch what he's doing right here, power winding a crankbait from, call it two out to about eight or nine feet of water, which is a technique that really you thought you would have seen about three or four weeks ago. 
and he has you generally want wind to generate that bite that bite has lasted this entire tournament for Stetson Blaylock where in most parts it probably should not yeah I, I totally agree and Stetson when we talked to him he said I can't I can't even imagine that this is still working right now and it's working when I don't have wind but here's something that I think is so important we've talked about pressure the boat docks getting all this pressure the ditches the drains Stetson Blaylock has been doing something that we've seen nobody else do. Mark Frazier is doing it, allegedly, but we never saw him on camera. So Stetson is fishing stretches of bank and using a red crankbait. We've not seen anyone else doing this in this tournament. And that's, that's big on day three. In 2018 here, our champion came back from sixth place. Stetson Blaylock started this day in sixth place. Three pounds, 11 ounces back in 2018. It was a six pound and a and half deficit. Mm. Ah. Mm. Thank you, Such. Man, that gives you a phenomenal look at the transitions. If you look at that light, that shallow water, you're right, where it kind of makes that transition, that little shelf. And he's one of the things, if you watch Blaylock power winding that crankbait and then instantly picking up his spinning rod, he said he has seen a lot of fish tracking his crankbait where he's been able – whether they commit to it at right at the side of the boat, he's been able to, to have a follow-up bait to catch those fish. Yeah, if you've never fished a crankbait a lot, that's a great aerial there. That you can yes. see the clay, the sand, and then it, then it goes dark, it goes green. That's where your bite occurs like 80 or 90% of the time, right when you see that transition to dark. It's an awesome shot right there. He said after day one, if I can get this to work for three more days, I got a great chance to win the Bassmaster Classic. Go out to South Carolina's Patrick Walters, as expected, having a good tournament here. <laughs> this was earlier. Patrick Walters probably has had the best start every day of this tournament so far, getting a lot of bites. And you could see Patrick Walters said he's around a number of fish. Catching 30 to 40 yes. fish a day. But yesterday, weighed in five spotted bass. He does oh, not need to do that today. He uh, needs a few largemouth in there. Yeah. Yeah. We might be able to grow in some big fish spots. I think I figured out how to catch some suckers. No, we're back. You hear him say, I think I figured out how to catch him. He's been catching a lot of numbers, but, but getting off to his best start yet this morning. Patrick oh, Walters is looking at bass. Pretty much every cast that he makes yes. with his forward-facing sonar, he is looking at fish, but we heard him on day one and day two. I need to figure out a different bait and catch these fish a little better. It looks like he's done that this morning. Hands down, if you look at that footage from Stetson Blaylock a minute ago, whoever wins this tournament today is going to need one or two of those better than average, those big Hartwell largemouth. Spotted bass today will not get this done. That's why you... Stetson Blaylock's first one to yes. do that, catch that five-pounder. I, I totally agree. But two for someone out of the top three or four. But someone down, you know, further down the field catch three of those. And we haven't seen that yet, but we've heard stories of people having three of those hooked but not putting them in the boat. Take How about a guy like big bass hunter Steve Kennedy? He's got one of them in his limit of 11 and a quarter pounds. He's jumped into second place from 18th. And he is known for looking for big bass. Um, when we were at our commercial break, we were talking about it. That deal with Jason Christie this morning, only catching one bass, and it's the right one. Yeah, it's it good is one. the right one. If you have not tuned in to this tournament on FS1 throughout this week, Jason Christie has done major damage the first hour in fact the bulk of his weight he's been able to upgrade going shallow later in the day once or twice but the bulk of what he has put on the scale with dave mercer at the weigh-in it's been in the first 90 minutes and that is not the case here today yeah, he's got to be asking himself you know what what have i done <laughs> what have i done to to lake hartwell or what have yeah, i done I you know wrong in the Bassmaster classic but I, I said this earlier i really like his attitude absolutely if he'll leave there and just go fishing he'll probably be fine instead of just letting it spin him out and he really seems to have a better attitude than i've you know he's always a great fisherman but he's he really is like i, I deleted all my waypoints this morning listen man i we know jason christie I guarantee you, in the back of his mind right now, he is going, 
Really? I mean, really? There was hundreds in that ditch the last two, hundreds of bass. He told the three of us. Yes. There's too many fish in there. <laughs> I can't decide yeah. which one's oh, on my yeah. target. He yeah. told us that. And now this morning there's very, very few. And the singles, they've talked about that all week, that little groups of them, three, four, and five fish in a group, you can get one to bite. I was going to start the broadcast this morning and say, Jason Christie doesn't need to worry about a limit. He catches it in 30 minutes. Then he can go upgrade shallow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Joey Nania, one of the anglers who made a huge move on day number two. The angler from Alabama, very skilled guy. He's been around the game for, let's say, a couple of decades overachieving. And Robbie Floyd is with him right now. What are you seeing with Joey? Well, Joey Nania has a mixed bag this morning, spots and stripers, but the stripers don't count. But he's caught some good ones. But early this morning, he actually was up at the top of our leaderboard. We know he doesn't have a, a very long run from the launch at Green Pond this morning. He caught four fish early, has four fish for eight and a half pounds, but they aren't really fired up like they were yesterday. His big spot said things kind of shut down for a bit. He went to another one. Things really weren't fired up. Um, had a couple of strikes, but really not the activity. But his mindset is, and you've been talking about this, you know you don't think you're going to be one on spots, but for the guys that are catching those spots early, they need that confidence. If they can catch 12, 13, 15 pounds of spots, then make that move, well, that's exactly what Joey Nania is trying to do right now. He just wants to get that limit, get those spots, and then make the move. The sun's actually been trying to come in and out right now as far as the weather is concerned, and he's expecting also later today, and I didn't know this, that uh, the wind's going to be blowing and blowing hard, so he's expecting that. So going to make the adjustments, just doesn't want to make that dock move until a little bit later. b and trailer hitches on the line with Robbie Floyd. And for if you're watching on FS1, that was a striped bass yeah. that he let go just a second ago. You can't keep those. In. It would have been fun. But, Robbie, real quick, a lot of the spectator boats that are out there are following some different anglers, some of the bigger name anglers in the top 20. What is it like with Joey? I mean, he's not as well known of a pro. Is it? <laughs> is it a circus or no? No, no, he had a couple of guys on him, and then they say, hey, well, now where's Hank Cherry? Well, I started with Hank Cherry because that's the question. You look at the guys outside that top ten, that's who I'm going to go to that's going to make a jump. And just like Joey, Hank was catching them early, just not the size, but he only had two or three people around him. Looking at another guy, we see him jump up, Steve Kennedy. I don't know why I'm not going to cover Steve Kennedy. I know I'm actually going to go cover Steve Kennedy, and I'll tell you, are there that many people because – you want to show, if Steve Kennedy starts catching some big ones, it's going to be fun in that boat, and I'm going to put Dan in there to make sure that we see it all. So, so Robbie, you, you mentioned that Joey said that the wind's supposed to blow today, and he's looking you know, towards that wind blowing. Did he tell you what he plans to do? Because he's been going from fishing for these spotted bass with his forward-facing sonar to the shallow docks fishing for largemouth. Is he do, planning on doing something different? No, I, I – I think you guys are saying it perfectly right. They, you, this is not going to be one from the uh, the spotted bass offshore. I, they think everybody thinks that you're going to have to go shallow to catch the ones that are going to win it. But we've seen it before where the guy that thinks that they have to have that big bag doesn't need that. First, you got to get that limit. But no, I think we're going to be seeing everybody go shallow. That wind's going to change things up. But Joey is a very good electronics fisherman, so he's going to fish to his strengths right now. And um, if they weren't biting at all or if he didn't have at least four fish right now, I think he'd be spun. But those guys that are really good at that, they're going to do it until the sun comes out. And then as soon as the sun does come up, as it's coming out right now, they're going to make the move to the banks. Robbie Floyd, thank you so much. I was just thinking how great it would be if you could pay a visit to Steve Kennedy. Absolutely. That would, that would be fun. Robbie Floyd doing a great job so far today. There with Joey Nania. Having a good morning so far. Stetson Blaylock still unofficially the man on top. There's Kennedy right behind Takami Ito. Proven he is serious about taking this trophy today. He has gone to work very quickly. Jason Christie, your leader, your co-leader to start. He is in fifth place. Got one good fish in the boat and his uh, adversary on top, Kyle Welcher, still looking for his first good one. Oh, man, we have got 25 anglers out there today, and we'll repeat this again. They all start the day within seven pounds of each other. A six pound, 12 ouncer was caught yesterday right here by Brandon Cobb, so that's how close things are. We've got a great field out there among the 25 seasoned veterans. Some, uh, some uh, lesser-known yeah. assassins out there who are ready to take someone down. It's going all, it's all going down here on Lake Hartwell, and we'll have more in a moment. The 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook, is sponsored by. 
Hummingbird. Mercury. Nitro Boats. And by Bass Pro Shops. Good Sunday morning to you. It is Championship Sunday, as a matter of fact. It's just the most important Championship Sunday of the year. That's all. The Bassmaster Classic, the World Championship here on Lake Hartwell. That trophy is the most desired object this week. Someone's going to host, hoist it at the end of the day. Could it be this man, Takami Ito, third-year man from Japan, who is a great personality, fun personality, but proves he is a really serious competitor with a ton of game. Absolutely right. Taku Ito spending a lot of time pre-practicing here on Lake Hartwell. Slipped oh, spot this up a maybe. little bit. Taking a look at action earlier Small today. One. 13 pounds and 6 ounces day number one, but really backing it up solid. Pounds. Yesterday, over 18 pounds of bass. Okay. Taku certainly one of our favorites coming into the Lake Hartwell because he is so good using his electronics, using his, as he says, Japanese finesse techniques. Uh, and certainly very, very fun to watch out on the water. So positive. He loves what he's doing and, and works very, very hard. Prefished about 25 days here on Lake Hartwell. Christmas. The he prefished on Christmas. Talking to Taku Ito yesterday after the weigh-in in the interview room, he really had a couple different things going. I said, why so good when it's cloudy? Because you are a good deep fisherman. And he said, I'm not a good dock fisherman. I don't skip under the docks as well as other people. I don't do it as often. So when it was cloudy yesterday, those fish were roaming, not underneath the docks. He got a couple big bites. He said at 11 o'clock, two six-pounders on this dock, this region, I'm going to go try to find where they're at. Let's get out to let's get let's get out to Justin Hamner from Alabama, second year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Very confident about his chances here. Really likes what he's doing. Yeah, Tommy, we talked to more anglers yesterday, m more than I can ever remember in a class that said, "Yes, I can win." Absolutely. And Justin was one of them. Justin Hamner fishing a little bit of a herring bite down by the dam, and only about call it a quarter mile from there, he has a rock pile in about 30 feet of water that he said, I promise you, there are five bass that weigh 20 to 25 pounds. I've seen them on my electronics. Just very, very hard to catch. But every day he has caught one or two big largemouth. Off the, what are you going on oh, there? Look out. Yeah, go on now. <laughs> this is Hamner live. Back on the nurse, man. Yeah. Oh. And that has been spotted his bass. approach. There we go. Quality spotted bass like that, and that's when he'll shift, yeah. focusing on deeper largemouth. And he has said, literally, he has lived in that area of this lake all tournament long and has had zero company. 30-year-old who delivered a, uh, an essay to his classmates in middle school about how what? he wanted to win the Bassmaster Classic. What? out to a man who has uh, proven that he knows how to win over the past two yes. years. Texan Lee Livesey, great day yesterday. Looks like he's on a different lake. No. No, I think that's going to be our best bet. We'll see if we don't get... There he is. I've thrown right there 157,000 times and never caught one. <laughs> Finally. I told my, told my guy yesterday, one day I'm going to catch one doing that. That's, the right one. That's one of them. Good little start, little three something. Mm. A little fatty. Gonna be a three and three quarter probably. Go ahead and get the day started. No, big item. He's a three though, three thirty. Boy, he is a dangerous fisherman this tournament. Solely focusing on largemouth in an area of the lake. He said, if I catch a spot, it just got basically has gotten in my way. 
Lee Livesey also, like Justin Hamner, made the comment, oh, I'm around plenty to win this tournament. And the only angler in the top ten is power fishing Stain Ward. Yes, the that only has made one. it really. That was impressive. That, that looked so easy. It's so easy <laughs> to win the Past Master Classic. Lee Livesey effortlessly putting a great, great large mouth in the boat. Hey, let's throw it over to Ronnie Moore right now, our own Ronnie Moore at the screen of knowledge, ready to uh, deliver the goods for us. Well, guys, I'm over here at the screen of knowledge, and uh, right now – we're talking about a couple guys that have really done very well over the first two days of competition, and I wanted to deliver that Justin Hamner, Lee Livesey, guys we just watched catch fish, those guys, I'm going to dub them as the VMC on-point anglers because two 16-pound bags in a row for those anglers, that is what you want in the Bassmaster Classic. You want to catch a big bag, but consistency shows. We have the two guys at the top that are tied. We have our day one leader, Brian New, and then fourth and fifth, on that leaderboard of those two consistent anglers. So for uh, for our VMC on point, I'm just going to have to dub it. To those <laughs> Absolutely. Two guys. Sorry. Those right. guys, that's we, fine. Uh, we, it uh, is fine. We handled it totally fine. To put a camera on you. Justin Hamner, Lee Livesey, these guys are doing two completely opposite things. We mentioned it, and we've seen it already in their fish catches this morning. Justin Hamner fishing right beside the dam. They are right beside of them and fishing for spotted bass, live scope, electronics. Then we have Lee Livesey power fishing, and he said, 20 pounds lives in my area. Today's the day I have to catch it. Because of their consistency, both anglers in that 16-pound range, which is exactly what you want, but with the estimations, we need 18 pounds or so. Uh, on average, they're going to need an uptick today, but they're right there in the top five this week. Thank you, Ronnie. Boy, this is, yeah, so absolutely. many stories. Yeah, that, a lot Ronnie, of twists and turns. A lot of twists and turns. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, indeed. We're going to get a little bit of everything today, obviously. One thing about Lee Livesey, watching what he's done this week, is he's been pretty much power wind in a shallow crankbait and a bladed jig. But watch for one bite possibly to transpire with Lee Livesey. He said he had an incredible day fishing a buzz bait, a topwater bait, yeah. in practice. The way the conditions are setting up today so with the wind blowing, right. um, he's certainly someone that we're going to have to keep an eye on all day long. Turn on or I'm not going to catch anything. I'll know in the next pass. I'm going to make a pass at all four corners and two sides before I leave. Fish some stuff in the back. I got to get in one area, put my nose down and cover as much water as I can. And that is another weird thing. Let's Listen to Lee Livesey. He said every single day he has collided with them in Big Beaver Creek and 6 and 20. But he said both days of this tournament. That area up the lake I'm in has a good population of you know, three to five and a half pounders. Just got to get lucky and get four or five of the right bites. He said both days of this tournament he's had to relocate them. They're, they have not been in the same areas. Justin oh. Hamner, on the other hand, on the other side, has told us, I I've, I've seen so many, I'm astounded I have not had a giant 20-pound-plus day so far. The weather was supposed to be so consistent, but it's it's been different every single yes. day. Every single day. The but wind it, blowing it, this it, afternoon. I can't help but think how ironic it would be. Jason Christie has not had the start he wanted and not had the start he's had the last two days. Will he have to pick up a spinnerbait on a final day this year to win the Classic? <laughs> I don't think we see it. I do. I don't, do you I do. really? I do. Really? I do see Jason Christie throwing a spinnerbait this afternoon. Oh, so many stories. We're starting to weave here. So many things you want to follow all day long, and that's exactly what we are set up to do for the next uh, better part of seven hours, six and a half hours. Championship Sunday, the final day of the World Championship with Stetson Blaylock of Arkansas on top of the leaderboard with a pretty nice lead as it stands right now. Steve Kennedy is trying to fish his way back into the classic champion conversation as well. So much more on the way. We will be back to Lake Hartwell in just a few moments. Don't go away. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Championship Sunday, a lot of activity on the lake there. Everyone, all 25 anglers who are left from the original 55 after two days of fishing 
are out here and all of them with somehow you could justify a shot at the trophy. Now that shot yes. right there with moments ago, Jason Christie making a big move. Now you're, you might be tempted to think, well, is he getting a little bit antsy? Is he getting a little bit uh, jacked up about the, the slow start? We said this would be a weird championship Sunday and said, well, pretty much a limit. A five ass limit is a given for Jason Christie because that's exactly what he has done days one and two. His primary area, he is done with it. Only one bass in his live well. It is going to be an interesting day in the boat with this dude. Absolutely. And Jason Christie said repeatedly, I don't want to be leading the classic going into the final day. Better that I'm tied than having the outright lead because you can see what his lead was in the final day of the classic 2018 here at Lake Hartwell. Also 2016 at basically his home lake, Grand Lake, and it did not turn out the way he wanted to. So you can't blame the guy for being a little bit uh, gun shy about leads. How is it? Uh, how is uh, insane is it that there were hundreds of bass in that yes. ditch the That's last two days, and today there was one? <laughs> Let's get out to another right. Oklahoman right now, Luke Palmer. One, good, one positive thing I will say, though, is that we've seen Jason Christie die in areas like that, but leaving a little earlier, that may be a sign that I'm not going to stick with hey, this and, and lose it all. He's still pretty good at fishing yeah, shallow. He, he so can kind of yes. catch him any way he wants. This was earlier today for Luke Palmer. Luke started the day in eighth place. Palmer fishing an area, a little road bed in the back of this ditch, and he said there were, uh, like Jason Christie, hundreds of bass in his starting area. Fishing the blueback herring bite early and then transitioning to boat docks. We'll probably see that here next hour or two with Luke Palmer. Great, great tournament, but a lot of, like a lot of your leaders, like that's a key is pounder. this right here, big, and she leaving. oversized largemouth wow. on boat docks. That's a gorilla. Right in the front there on the right. Yeah, you see her swimming yeah. off there? Yep. Yeah. That is a big dude. Oh, I got a big one too. Stay on, baby. Stay on. Stay on. Dude, this is a gorilla. Oh, look at that big son of a gun with her. Come here, baby. Please get in this boat. Please. Don't come off. God, look at that giant right there with you. Gosh, dang it, son. Look at that toad. Yes. Dude, there's a six or seven pounder with her. Oh, man. Yes. That right there can do it, son. I got a little pumped up about that. Hell, I'm looking at this big one out here swimming around, and hell, my bait's going up under the dock having a good old time. Son. Well, that right there is a pretty impressive call for the Oklahoma angler, <laughs> Luke Palmer. You know what? I'm going to throw it to Mike Sukon. Such. Yeah, what do you got, Z? Can you give us a BFA on that one right there, my friend? Oh, yeah, you could. He put it in as a uh, four-pound, five-ouncer. Right. You got to say it, Such. BFA? Skeeter boats. BFA. Skeeter boats. BFA. Skeeter BFA. Boats. I'll BFA. grab the radio on that one right there. alert, baby. <laughs> Happy day. There we go. Skeeter boats, BFA, Luke Palmer with a giant largemouth. He was actually, if you listen to what he was saying, he was actually looking at a bigger one cruising off of the dock when that fish ate his bait. That ain't no 4-5 either. No. 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 Bigger, no. no. That. But we have heard that all okay. week. Such tighten up. Bigger fish swimming away, a little fish on, but that wasn't a little one there. Bigger fish alert? Bigger fish alert. Okay. Look at how far he started back in the lead. It was four pounds, one <laughs> ounce only. Get it up right there with that Skeeter boat. It's, it's the, time the time has passed, Such. The time has passed. We well, moved on. <laughs> we started out nothing like I wanted to at all. Uh, and hang on. Got something going on right here on my bait. You know, things, things were just, it was tough. Uh, nothing was panning out for me at all. Um, and I really thought my, I thought my herring fish would go ahead and bite this morning. I was, I was kind of pumped up because I got sunlight. Uh, but I said, 
I got one little old, little old dock that had a pretty good fish on it in practice and skipped up under it and uh, there was a giant in front, like it looked like a, she's seven or eight pounds. She just decided to swim out and not even eat it and I'm watching her and look back and my line's just going out the side of the dock and I pick up and it's like a, I don't know how big she is, she's big, she's over five and uh, and boom, pulled in the next dock, catch one, two and a half, three pounds. So it's, it's starting to look up. Uh, I'm getting to do what I think I have to do to possibly win this deal. And I mean, I'm gonna have to catch them. I need two more five pounders and uh, to go ahead and I gotta, I gotta get up over 20 today. That's, that's the main goal, but this has gave me the confidence. I'm, I'm gonna stick this in my hand the rest of the day. I might pick up a jig a little bit, but the, the yum dinger's gonna be what I'm gonna throw the rest of the day for sure. One of the keys for Luke Palmer, if you watch him fish these docks, he's ab absolutely able to see them the, with his front-facing uh, sonar. The color I think I have in my box is uh, green pumpkin purple. He said the number one key, get that bait under these docks and soak it. Dead stick it for 20 to 30 seconds. If you try to move it, you will absolutely not get a bite. Well, Luke Palmer said, I don't mind dock fishing. Just give me no wind today. <laughs> Makes it a whole lot easier. And he's getting that condition right now. Gosh, and that bite right there absolutely just got him back in the mix. Oh, God, look at that. Absolutely. Guy. Another Oklahoma angler with a spinning rod in his hand. We yes. don't only see it from Luke Palmer either. Luke Palmer from Colgate, Oklahoma, bound over the Lake Eufaula area of Oklahoma. Yes. There's the six or seven. Couple of those, and he's makes up this, to make a difference. Makes a, makes the difference in one swing of the bat. <laughs> There's your unofficial leaderboard. Luke having climbed up into second place, right behind Stetson Blaylock, tightening up at the top. Maybe not the two we expected to be at the top right now. Joey Nania, Steve Kennedy also moving up into the action. More to come from Hartwell. Twenty twenty two Academy Sports and Outdoors Bass Master Classic. This is the World Championship and this is the final day. We are down to twenty five anglers on this day in Lake Hartwell in South Carolina. In the upstate part of the state and upland reservoir more or less with lots of fish. Lots of challenges to putting those big ones in the boat. We're seeing a little bit of everything coming to pass early on on this day. There will yes. be much movement up and down that leaderboard. They started so close together, and nobody's running away, that's for sure. Yeah, when you see a guy like Luke Palmer make up that difference in, in one shot, that will keep him up shallow the rest of the day. We made the comment, see guys that are a little bit desperate chasing your leaders, Welcher and Christie. A lot of those desperate guys are the most dangerous. Absolutely, but you got to notice Jason Christie, the move that he has made, he left an area that we all know he thought he'd have a limit when he left there, but going shallow, and like you mentioned earlier, Z, he's a pretty good shallow water fisherman. Probably one of the best boat dock fishermen in our field. Well, he just moved to this area not that long ago. I don't know if he's moving out. Maybe just change of position. Jason Christie again started the day tied. Kyle Welcher of Alabama for the lead going into this final day. Both of them about three pounds ahead of the rest of the field. Okay, and if you're just tuning in on FS1 right now, here, here, here's the main deal with Lake Hartwell is start out deep, catch numbers, catch numbers, get your five bass limit. When you go shallow like we saw Luke Palmer catch that big one, the problem on Lake Hartwell is you do not get many bites it, it's it's a time consuming proposition of course jason christie with a lot of history on this lake here classic history as a matter of fact back in 2018 started the day with the lead on the final day and as often happens on the final day of the classic not everything goes exactly <laughs> according to plan Was it too long before he could feel that? Uh, oh, oh, oh boy. No, not even the well, coverage that, goes exactly that, according to drone. plan right there. Ah, that was our drone. I wonder if it's still there. Right there is what kind of luck we're having today.
Oh boy, nice. Yep. Not good. <laughs> Somebody's in trouble. <laughs> yep. Nobody got in trouble, Tommy, but. It, I remember that moment and the best line of that Christy <laughs> May was, that's pretty much been my day. Yes. <laughs> Frighteningly similar to the first 90 minutes today, Jason Christy. Going to be doing a lot of running around right now. And you said that first pocket he went into, he has had key, key boat docks throughout this week. And granted, that should, with the weather that we have, that should only get better throughout the day the higher the sun gets. It really should, Z. But the thing about Jason Christie this week, he's been so confident in his starting area with so many fish in there. And he, he says, I'm really dialed into him. There's four or five groups of fish there in the same places every morning. He said, the dock thing I haven't quite figured out yet. It's got to be frustrating for him leaving that area that he felt most confident about putting keepers in his live well. And then doing something that he's great at, one of the best in the business, but really just hasn't had it figured out this week, he said. D Davey, that's the th it seems like that's the thing mentally. You've been in the Classic in th these moments. Yes, the bite might get better throughout the day, but he needs another bite or two soon because you, you mentally might not be in the game late in the day when they start biting. That pressure mounts we every just hour. just covered some strange final days with that guy. Yes. Yeah. Final day of the classic, anything can happen. Let's get back to Luke Palmer. Just put oh, a, a giant man. largemouth in his boat. I want you to watch how slow oh, he's that fishing that yum dinger. <laughs> oh, here we go. There we go. Keep them moving. Just keep them moving. <laughs> Get the old dinger going, son. <sighs> she was pegged. <laughs> oh, man. I'm getting week one. A little poo nanny, I guess, ain't I? Little dinger. Dinger's coming on, son. <laughs> that looks like a baby in there. It's tired of little. <clears throat> there we go. He is tweaked out of his mind. Yes. <laughs> oh, what a Getting cool. Getting rid, rid of the 15 ouncer. He should be our new Bassmaster Classical heater. Wow. The kind of day you dream about. Don't pinch him. Back over to Jason Christie. And this is his wheelhouse, fishing this way. I mean, I hate to say it, seeing him with a spinning rod. You know, it's not. been tough so far, but, uh, you know, my deep hole or my deep little ditch, it just didn't, something's changed with the water. Um, there's stuff floating everywhere in the channel. I mean, everywhere I've been, there's just been, it's just different than it was. And, you know, I didn't see any fish to speak of, really in that first drain. Now I'm just gonna keep this jig in my hand all day and, and uh, flip as many flips as we can. You know, I got a lot of stuff. I spent a big part of the night last night before I went to bed looking at the exact kind of docks that I want. And right here you can see, I mean, I can, they're knee deep or less. You know, most of the fish that I've caught have been, uh, this week, have been out of those kind of docks. And I, I think it's just because they react, um, you know, with it being so much shallower than with it being deep and having the opportunity to, uh, like, follow it down. So I got a bunch of that stuff marked. We're going, I mean, dude, I'm all in. I know. I'm, I'm all in. I mean, I believe if I get seven or eight bites doing this, I'll have a chance to win. Now, I may not get, I may not get that many bites. 
I mean, but it, I have nothing else that I think that I can catch a big bag doing. And it's, uh, it's really a timing deal. I mean, we're all, you know, a lot of us are fishing docks. I know just by running into everybody throughout, throughout the week. And you just have to pull up to the right stretch whenever they pull up and get ready to eat. Um, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of dead time doing this. I mean, you'll go an hour without a bite or more sometimes, and then you'll hit, you know, one or two docks that'll have some fish on it that just pulled up. Take a look at the bank. Very, very flat bank, similar to Luke Palmer. That's been one of the keys for the bigger large mouth. Very typical this time of year. I'm gonna try to steal one of your pets. Hopefully you fed them up this morning. Jason Christie outlining his plan for the rest of the day. Certainly got the tools to do that, as we have said many, many times. Let's go take a look at our day one leader, Brian. New 20 pounds on day number one. A South Carolina angler. Brian New with a great first day of this event. One of, uh, like Jason Christie, a great, great boat dock fisherman. For him. We've seen yep. him catch most of his fish when we've had a camera on him with a swim bait this week. A smaller swim bait than we've seen Kyle Welcher and Steve Kennedy, those anglers throw around the boat docks. Good one right there for Brian New. Swim bait and a jig all week long. Had a tough day yesterday. Felt like a lot of lot missed opportunities for Brian New. Had to play catch up ball late in the day. Wound up with 13 pounds after 20 on day number one. It really concerns me about Jason Christie. Fishing new docks and fishing a little faster than we've seen him fish without that limit in his live well early this morning. Yes. Good one right there. back and he is all business this morning yes not talking to us that's, oh, a quiet, that's fine that's, that's quiet. fine go catch him <laughs> although i do like when when brian gives us a little something because yeah, it's, like something. it's, it's yeah. something he can communicate there is no doubt about that fun to listen to stetson blaylock still the man on top after about the first well, a little less than 90 minutes of fishing for most of our 25 anglers who are out there today you saw luke palmer Actually uh, on fire for a little while there. Really making a big move up that leaderboard. Brian New reestablishing himself in the top three right there. Joey Nania, Steve Kennedy, and all the rest. Final day. Championship Sunday will continue after these messages. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Final day championship Sunday at the Bassmaster Classic. This was Steve Kennedy's disappointing day number two. Steve Kennedy after posting, well, eight, 18 and a half pounds or yes. just over that on day number one, falling off big time, almost half that weight, 11 pounds and nine ounces on day number two, up and down on the roller coaster. And now he's back at work and now he is working his way back into the conversation. Our own Robbie Floyd is standing by with him right now. What's going on with Steve, Robbie? 
I had to step out of the picture. Steve catching a couple of bass, almost back-to-back casts. They were small ones, but it's this area that he's in that kind of magic for him this morning. He made a jump up the leaderboard, and he actually told me he was coming out of this pocket and kind of looking at his graph, which he always does, and he saw one. Actually, he was still sitting in the driver's seat, set it out there, and I think, was that the four-pounder, Steve? 4-2 4-2 that he caught sitting in the driver's seat looking at him on the graph. And he's throwing that little, what, the uh, little three-and-a-half Kitek swim bait. So it's on a swim bait on the smaller size, not the bigger swim bait. We're going to see him throw a little bit later when that wind starts picking up, throwing that bigger six-inch model. And, and it's interesting, though, that I think he was kind of over this spot until he caught a three and a four, and those weren't spotted bass. There was a large mouth in that mix as well. So he's going to stick here for a bit, and he's looking for those uh, big swim bait bites a little bit later. Robbie, one of the things that we have seen throughout this tournament on day number one that big swim bait definitely worked for a lot of the players that were in the mix but it was wind activated we had a lot of wind all the way up until weigh-in on day one you seen steve kennedy slip a little bit on day number two and it looks like it's relatively the same conditions today as we got to see yesterday when kennedy struggled with that big swim bait I think he's looking for the right win. And he told me earlier in practice, he said, I wasn't catching them on the swim bait. He said they were wanting the, the wacky worm, and they, they were biting it. But then when the weather changed, he threw the swim bait, and then they it kind of got him going this time. So I think you know he's very comfortable with that swim bait. It didn't hurt him at all not throwing that worm underneath those docks because uh, I think he was having a little bit of a struggle. But this is kind of bread and butter right now. Until then, if he can get more of those three- and four-pound fish, and, and there are a bunch of them in here in standing timber, he's seeing them jump. Actually, they're about eight foot off or the bait's about eight foot off and they're coming up and jumping up and grab it he had probably a a three or four pounder on a little while ago and it got off so he's around good fish right now the bonus fish are still down river robbie you've been all over the lake up the rivers the first day with john cox we know that all over the lake down the lake but we've heard a couple anglers yesterday kyle welcher said the area that i caught most of my shallow fish there were a lot of leaves floating it's like the water came up and then jason christie was saying the same thing the area that he was in today have you seen that any or has that just been in little isolated coves and creeks I, I i think the water may have came up and i am seeing more floating debris so that that would be a good sign so yeah i've seen more stuff in the water so that's a possibility and i want to talk about one thing you were talking about with christy and the people and the flotillas and we've been asking about it when i came to steve kennedy i saw a mass of boats um going the other direction that was uh, jason christie so man you got to know he spun a little bit and he has all those people watching him just wanting him to catch that limit you know we watched th- this morning robbie he, he seemed very calm with you earlier. He did, Robbie, out there with Jay, with he Steve did, Kennedy. But he, yeah, I'll say he he did, but you could still. And I said, man, I'm sorry, I hate to ask, ask those tough questions. He said, you got to ask them. It's part of it. So he knows exactly what's on the line today. And I'm just glad hearing him kind of making that change. I've got to do this to win, and he knows what he's got to do to win. And everybody's fighting that same battle when you got six seven pounds separating the top to the bottom i think there'll be a 25 pound bag today i really do wow well i hope you're right oh. robbie we'd like to see That's that great. robbie floyd good job out there uh checking up uh getting us up to date on steve kennedy let's get back to jason christie again if you're just joining us started the day tied for the lead with kyle welcher and did not have the start he wanted in his opening place that really set the tone for the first two days That is not a big fish, but that is a very, very yes. critical fish. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to take him a little longer, obviously, to do it this morning and get his five fish in the live well, but get a few fish in the live well. I thought it was. I thought and, I had yuck on my And to show my you stuff. why he's one of the best in the world, if you rewind that fish catch, if you watch the placement of his jig, work. that is what makes him one of the best at this. Let's go to work. Hamner. Oh, don't give me. That's a big spot, man. That fish came out of nowhere. It was, <laughs> you watch him unhook that fish. <laughs> Yesterday when we talked to him, he said, I don't get nervous. I'm not a guy that gets nervous, <laughs> but I was nervous the first day of this Bassmaster Classic. I think it's still going it's for him. Get a couple more. Just in Hamner. Has a lawn service business. Said he wins this tournament. He's done. Yeah. He's a, he said it yesterday. <laughs> Why not? Said I am done with it. We're to Kyle Welcher. Oh, oh, great camera work there. Ooh. 
another one with him. He's got it good too. Thank you. And we talked about Jason Christie having a slow morning. Take a look at this cast right here. Keep your eye on the bait. Good. I believe that's Brian Evie with Kyle Welcher today. <laughs> talked about Christie with a slow morning. A little bit of a slow morning yeah. with Kyle Welcher, too, kind of leaving the door open for the rest of the field. I think that's the weird thing is that Jason Christie didn't have a three-pound lead coming into today. You wouldn't know he was tied because all eyes are on him. The excitement is still there for Kyle Welcher because he's tied. Line. But, I mean, Christie definitely had more right. pressure than Welcher. Yeah, we're still trying to kind of get a feel for it. One thing I noticed today, which I'm actually kind of surprised about, is the bait is shallower, at least in this area right here, than it was yesterday, even when it was cloudy. So I just moved up on the inside of the bait where I've had a little bit of them schooling. And I had a really nice one eat this swim bait finally today. I didn't hook him. And then I had them come up schooling and caught my fourth fish on a little jerk bait. So we got a little bit of momentum starting to uh, start rolling. So if we can start generating some bites on some of these bigger baits, whenever you're in these areas that have so many shad and a big population of fish, that's one of the main reasons I'm throwing this bait is because I feel like my areas have a lot of fish in them. And I just want to figure out how to catch those three pluses with what you have to have to win this tournament. So that's kind of why I'm leaning on this, this bait so much. And I've had a couple bites on it in the past five or 10 minutes. So if it starts happening, we'll have some good stuff going on. I didn't know until yesterday that he fished West Point I've Lake in Georgia a lot. Over my so right similar shoulder. to Harwell. Yes. Some scattered brush piles. There's been a ton of bait on this little shoal all week. And, uh, I swear, I mean, I've weighed in some fish from here every single day, and I came here today and caught three. Two of them are pretty nice, over two pounds, and then uh, one small little keeper. But we're two big bites away from having a real shot at this thing, so we're going to keep chunking. Both of your co-leaders, Jason Christie, fishing boat docks. See Kyle Welcher throwing a big swim bait. They are going for it. Yes. Those are both big bass techniques. Kyle gave us a quote last night. He said, I could catch 14 pounds and do really good, or that's I could cool catch 17 there. pounds and just get annihilated. Get right. That's point. such as wow, that's what this day is about. Make this move, and then we'll get out of here again. Robbie Floyd's not the only one thinking we're going to see over 20 pounds today. A lot of these anglers think it's yeah, because they've they've seen fish follow and they've lost yes. some fish. They, they know it's certainly possible. Need, you just had to fish don't clean. don't need very many of those times where you're not catching one. Well, look how he is power winding that crankbait. Said a lot of the fish would hit that bait as it would pendulum tor towards the surface after it was rooting. He could literally see him on his front facing sonar just like that. That is a, we saw at Lake Lanier, that is yes. a clear water spot of bass deal. As soon as it starts, you're like setting the hook straight up on some of these fish because the way they track that thing in the clear water. Another great hummingbird bird's eye view of just exactly. Yeah, and a lot of really his biggest spotted bass that he's caught this week have come off of the islands, really yes. mid-lake towards the dam. And this is something rare you don't hear in a Bassmaster Classic. He has basically had free reign of doing this with zero company, nobody else really in the field except for Mark Frazier, who had a good day one doing this. If you can make it, you stay in the top ten until the final day doing I mean, something sure different, do right here. then you have such an advantage because those boat couple. docks, Jason Christie's fishing some new docks, new docks today, but those docks have been fished by the other anglers yeah. the last two days. To make note for anybody that's not been to Hartwell, some of the biggest bass in the lake live on those boat docks, instead of trying but there's a reason they're big. They're not make dumb. Make something happen on places that I've already fished. I mean, I know there's a couple areas I can go probably get a bite through. Seeing a lot of fish on the screen, though. I probably need to just stick with dropping around on them.
Stetson Blaylock has been leading this tournament for the majority of our fishing time we have had today on Championship Sunday. Ah. Let's take a look at our unofficial leaderboard as it stands right now and changes now and for the remainder of the day. In fact, Brian New, our day one leader with 20 pounds, back on top. Stetson Blaylock, Luke Palmer, we saw him having a great, great interlude there. Joey Nania and Kyle Welcher rounding out our top five. And Brian New, like so many of the anglers, so impressed by the fervor of the fans. That's what makes this thing come alive like no other tournament. I don't know how many people were at Blast Off today. It was unbelievable. You know, I've never been a part of something like that. Uh, you know, of course, I've seen the classic pictures in the past, but man, I fished a lot of tournaments all over the country. And uh, you, the classic's the only place that you see crowds like that. It's unbelievable. And I love all the fans. I love, you know, everybody that loves bass fishing. You are awesome. Ultimately, the fans are what make the sport what it is. Twenty-two Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Minn Kota, Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Rapala, and by Progressive. Well, after Kyle Larson's big win at Fontana, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Las Vegas, where the best drivers on the planet look to strike it rich and grab a win. The engines fire today at 3 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Well, it is Championship Sunday, biggest event of the year. Who hoists that trophy at the end of the day? We're a long way from knowing. Right now at the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, as expected, some big time moves and not necessarily expected moves of the leaderboard, but you learn to expect the unexpected when there's so much on the line. Nobody oh, leaves anything no, in the you bag. Did it, Tommy. No, nobody. Uh oh, the music. Yeah. Mark Zona. Exactly Go. right, Tommy Sanders. The power pole replay of the day, my friend, so far. We thought we were going to see a power pole replay of the day. It was going to take big, better than average size largemouth here on Hartwell Championship Sunday. Out of nowhere, Luke Palmer said, man, I've got some boat docks and they got the right ones. Said he was eye spying one about six and seven pounds, six or seven pounds, and his line took off by this one right here. Luke Palmer from Oklahoma, <laughs> guess what, bud? Championship Sunday, you are the power pole. Such, end it for me. Luke Palmer, Luke Palmer climbing up from eighth place, four pounds down, you are in the hunt, you are the power pole. Replay of the day. <laughs> exactly right, yep. Such. Yep. I appreciate that big one right there for Luke Palmer. Going to need about one or two more of those to stay in the hunt. But that is what we said. A lot of the guys that maybe we weren't looking at coming to this final day, big one for Luke Palmer. Power pole replay of the day. Well, so great so to far. have you all with us this morning, this Sunday morning, which is the most important morning of the year for the sport of bass fishing. Whoever's crowned today, Davey, goes into the into the books as a legend and shall ah. remain so through history. Your name will never be forgotten. When we three walked out of the hotel this morning, both of you guys said, and it's warmer. It feels yes. like fishing weather today. It's not going to not showing up for everybody, but boy, we've seen some good examples of what may be possible. Yeah, and, and really, if you kind of watch the way that this entire tournament has transpired, the first 90 minutes are out of control. Fish catches all over the map. And if you look at Classics past here on Lake Hartwell, hate to say it, here on the Bassmaster Live set, we were praying for fish catches. If you look at this tournament as a whole, compared to the other events that we've had here, the fish catching has been great. But really all three days of this tournament have been fishing weather. They, they have been. The water temperatures have been rising. The nights have been getting better and better, warmer and warmer. Fishing has been better, but you really can see now that so many of these anglers concentrated on the boat docks and the pressure for those boat docks. I hate to say it for Jason Christie, he is one of the best, if not the best, boat dock fishermen in this tournament. But they have gotten so much pressure. Stetson Blaylock fishing by himself. you got to keep an eye on him today. Somewhere you watch a Jason Christie. Look, there's so much technolo technology, front-facing sonar that these guys are using. 
you almost want to see a Jason Christie say, I am not looking at that depth finder anymore. I am going dirt shallow. Wouldn't that and be great? I'm turning my depth finder. <laughs> would off. be fantastic. Let's get back out on the water right now with our leader, unofficially Stetson Blaylock. Stetson has won here in South Carolina before yeah, and like on the Elite Luke, Series. Luke Palmer, he has a giant largemouth in his live well, probably the biggest one he has caught all tournament. This would be fish number five for Blaylock. Not a big one. But it'll be number five if I can get him in the boat. Come here. and catching a lot of his fish uh -huh. on a demon colored crankbait. Yes. Those that follow and don't bite that bait, he's following up with this uh, wacky style. I think it's a yum dinger. Yes. That's kind of been the two prong approach so far for Stetson Blaylock, and it's really strange. The majority of what he's weighed in has been spotted bass, but these areas, these shallow areas that He's been fishing out of nowhere. He'll just catch a good large mouth. Doesn't back it up with, you know, numbers like you'll see the guys doing on boat docks. Man, it is frighteningly calm today. And he is, Sizzle chest calm. You know what? <laughs> Sizzle chest. Z, David, he is fishing 18. Hartwell this week exactly like he fishes Wachita and Hamilton in his backyard in Arkansas. This is a bass. It's a better one. Can't tell if it's a. I think it's a good one. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh good gosh, yeah. Oh, let me get this fish. Let me get this fish. Yes. Oh yes. <sighs> That's the chug. <laughs> That'll work right there. A bunch of them down there too. Gosh, those fish are built. He's almost a three pounder. Not quite, but almost. Should get him over 47 pounds. Give him a pound and a half lead on Brian New, who's also has a limit, about 12 pounds. Stetson is the biggest of the day so far at 14 and a half. He's already at that approximate winning weight that a lot of people guessed of 47 to 48 pounds. Yeah, so this is just a young dinger. Color's called dirt purple. Got an O-ring on there and a 132nd weight. Eight pound Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon tied to a 15 pound Smackdown braid. Throwing it on a 610 medium light H2O Express TAC 40. And I mean, I'm honestly just watching live scope. And when you see one, get it down there as quick as you can. These spotted bass will run, they'll come a long ways. Like you can see them and you're not sure really sh what, what, you know, not real sure what they're gonna do or where they're gonna go. But when you drop down on them, sometimes they'll streak right to it. Those bigger ones streak right to the bait. And usually they have it before it ever hits bottom. Occasionally you'll have to sit there and shake it. You know, once you see the fish go down to it, if you lift up and they're not on there, that last fish I caught, he was sitting there on it. He was holding it. I mean, he was 
he ate it on the fall, but they're not all gonna be like that. And I think the biggest key is trying to fish, but also trying to look. I mean, love or hate it, hate it live scope is, is where it's at. I mean, you have to, you have to accept the fact that it's, it's made fishing harder, but it helps you keep an eye on everything that's going on around you. And I just feel like the way that, you know, Garmin revolutionized the deal with this technology, it makes it to where it's, you know, it, it honestly makes fishing a little harder when everybody has it. Just because a lot of these fish that never saw a bait, now they're getting fished for. But it also can, you know, like me today, I mean, I've thrown at 50 fish already and they, they're not all gonna bite. But when you get it around one that wants to eat, it, it's ball game. There's your leader, Stetson Blaylock, started the day in sixth place, has made a good, positive move, move in the first couple of hours fishing here. Another good, positive move from uh, down below the top 10, 14th place, as a matter of fact, is Chris Johnston of Canada. Chris, and we have a B&W trailer. Hitch us some live conversation with Chris on tap right now. And Chris, if you can hear us, talk about your day so far. Are you on schedule or a little ahead, a little behind? See if Chris can hear us. Chris, can you hear us? Oh, we're not hearing him. We're just going to uh, watch your fish. We can't hear you, but uh, we'll watch. We're happy to watch. Oh, man. That's what I'm looking at. Look at all Trying of those fish. <laughs> Chris Johnson pointing there. It's forward-facing sonar. It's a group of fish, and that's what we've heard all the anglers yes. talk about. When you see them in groups like that, you can usually get them to bite. Those singles are a lot more difficult to, to I mean, catch. He had a half dozen of yes. them right there yes. worming around on his bait. First Canadian to win an elite event. He was eighth place last in last year's Classic. This is his third championship. Chris Johnson with a little bit of a tough day. One of this tournament, 13 and a half pounds, backed it up with a big stringer yesterday, just under 18 pounds. Chris Johnston, maybe we'll get some words with him a little bit yeah. later. Back over to Brian New, our first day leader, 20 pounds, still the only angler over 20 pounds during the course of this tournament. That is a perfect hummingbird bird's eye view of what Brian New's been concentrating on as far back in these pockets or creeks that he can get in. And whether it's the little ditch where it makes that V in the back of that pocket looking at that hummingbird bird's eye view, if it has a boat dock in there, all the yeah, better. so they had, I mean, don't have a whole lot, but a little limit. Haven't been able to make it go yet. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm definitely going to keep pushing it throughout the day. I'm not going to die with it, though. Uh, mixing in a little of this and a little of that, fishing, you know, some brush out deep. And uh, I've caught two like that off the scope and uh, pulled in a pocket to fish some docks. And I've seen a couple on the scope through the old Zoom's Linky out there. Caught me one. Then I seen them schooling in the back of the same pocket. Caught me a, a three-something largemouth and a, and a two-something spot. There was a lot of fish there, but that's all I caught. I'd be okay with weighing in that three-pounder. I mean, I had 20 the first day, and I weighed in a three-one. So I've got one that I don't mind weighing in. Just going to keep scratching and clawing. Well, Brian Newt making a great first step here on Lake Hartwell on day number one. 
the Academy Sports and Outdoors yes. Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. And he is still in good position right now. Getting the job done is Brian New. Stetson Blaylock, though, with a pound and a half lead ahead of New on top of the leaderboard right now. 25 anglers out here on this day from the original 55 who qualified. So plenty of action up and down that leaderboard. Yeah, and if you really look at that top 10, there's a lot of anglers in there that do not have their five bass limit, so a lot of room to move. Well, there's a look at our fantastic host city, Greenville, South Carolina, beautiful place, a mix of the old and the new, and we will be right back. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. I think for me it's going to have to be a 20 plus pound bag. I think, I think I really need to catch the biggest bag of the tournament to have a chance. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think somebody's going to catch 21, 22 pounds tomorrow and they're going to be the winner. And, and, and a couple of those guys at the top are going to catch good bags but not 20 pound bags and I think they're going to get caught if they don't stay on their game and catch them it's it's any really if you look at the top 25 a big bag for anybody in on that list could could be enough and that's i think for me it's going to be five good fish our tournament leader stetson blaylock and his assessment of what will be needed to win the biggest bag of the tournament means over 20 pounds right now let's take a look at our progressive elite series angler of the year Stetson Blaylock is usually a part of that conversation year in and yes. year out. But right now, the leader is David Mullins of Tennessee, just barely edging John Cox, a blazing start for him down in the state of Florida as well. Micah Frazier, there's Stetson Blaylock, definitely a part of the watch there. And Buddy Gross, the most recent winner on the Bassmaster Elite Series from the Harris Chain of Florida. Yes, yes, we had a great Florida swing. And look forward to your stomping grounds in a couple weeks on Santee Cooper, which could be one of the best tournaments we've had in a long time. It's setting up yes. to be one of the best, no ah. doubt about it. Hopefully over 100 pounds there at Santee Cooper. All right. Well, let's turn things over to Ron Moore. He is ready to go, loaded with information, and ready to share. Well, I Ronnie. wanted to bring it into the Bassmaster Classic Outdoor Expo presented by Marathon over here at the Screen of Knowledge. And we've seen a couple anglers take different approaches. That deep water game, we've seen the shallow water game. But one thing that rings true is a stick bait. A do-nothing stick bait is one of the most deadly baits on the Bassmaster Classic stage or the Elite Series. And so for our Berkeley right bait, right time, we're going to highlight that simple stick bait. But we're going to do it in a different way because we've seen anglers out in 30, 40 feet of water put a little bit of a weight on it. Maybe a tail weight, get it down there a little quicker. We've also seen guys up shallow, very, very shallow, with a weightless stick bait doing that. And baits like the, the Berkeley Max Scent General, ones that you can skip underneath those docks, ones that you can drop on a drop shot or a Nico rig. There's a lot of ways to fish this simple bait. One of the most basic baits, if you've never caught a fish in your life, this will catch you a fish from Florida to New York, Texas, California, and even this week on the Bassmaster Classic stage. So the Berkeley right bait, right time so far has been a simple stick bait, but it's going to catch fish in one inch of water or in 50 feet of water this week. Ronnie, real quick, back up to that uh, shot of that bait skipping under that boat dock. Now look, for folks that are watching on FS1, that is a very, very hard thing to do. Explain exactly what we're looking at right there for everybody that's watching this. So, I mean, an angler on a boat on a raised platform has to get that angle, has to get everything perfect with their setup to get that bait in that small hole. And that's the deal is a lot of these, when the sunlight shines down on Lake Hartwell, it's going to put a shadow on a dock, and that is where the fish is going to sit. So it's basically like skipping a rock, and when you get it into that spot where the shadow is, those fish hide and use that little bit of shade as an ambush point, and that's where they're going to bite your baits. But you have to be perfect not only casting and presenting that bait. Exactly right, and a lot of that, you talk about that, General, that's a weightless bait, and a lot of these bass are not on the bottom. They're actually suspended. They're right under that float that you're looking at, which makes that weightless bait very, very, very deadly. That's kind of their safe space. They may be sitting over 10, 15 feet of water under a dock, but that little bit of canopy, that little bit of shade, Here's that gives them comfort. Thank you, Ronnie. More good, good stuff right there. We saw Lee Livesey present a little good stuff for earlier today. It's been a while since we've checked in on Lee. Great potential. He was He's anticipating this final day. And he's oh, on the boat dock. There he is. 
little one. Watch what swims out with them. That didn't come with them. It's a bite though. see right there. Let's go from Livesey back over to Jason Christie, of course, uh, co-leader to start on this day. If you're just joining us, this is the final day of the Classic. And the he is covering some water. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He really is. Head down, mm. eyes up. Jason Christie with a jig in his hand. I really believe that it's 10 o'clock. Like if we can have two wayfish by noon, you know, I just kind of think it's going to happen late. I might be wrong, but so I'm not, you know, by any means in panic mode. Listen to Christy kind of doing the mental I mean, calculator. All I can do is drop my jig in there and try to boat whatever bites. Going back on what Ronnie was talking about, these boat docks that have played a big factor in this tournament. The higher that sun gets, no matter if it's spring, summer, fall, the higher that sun gets, the better it positions them under those docks. They're not roaming off of them. Best, best part of the day yet to come for fishing that way on Hartwell. Davey, does 2018 creep in? Just to remind people, Christy had on this lick 2018 a 20-pound bag, the only one of the tournament on day one, went into day three with a 4'11 lead, caught only four fish, and lost by 18 ounces. Does that creep into his head any time today? He thinks about it every day of his life probably, mm -hmm. certainly today. But I like his attitude. He's, he's not spun out. And he was very positive this morning. The, you know, the creek that he's been catching his lemon in every morning just wasn't happening this morning, and he didn't try to force it. I, I like his mentality right now. I really do. Good, 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 good. Jason Christie with the plan, doing the calculus. Not getting overexcited about the way things are going right now. There's your... Day one leader, Brian Dugan. Giving a hat up to the kid. Interaction yeah, with the kids. On, man. Nice, man. Love nice it. thing to do. I'd you... ask for a fishing rod. <laughs> Final day of the Classic, taking some time out for the fans. He was talking about the fans and how much they uh, they excite him a little earlier. So good good on Brian New. But Stetson Blaylock, who said, I'm going to have to have 20 pounds to win on this day. We'll see how that's progressing. He's got 14 plus right now and in good shape. We'll be right back. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Well, you still have time to win $1,000 playing along with Fox Bet Super 6. Simply scan the QR code now, download the Super 6 app, and enter your Bassmaster Classic picks for a shot at the jackpot. The contest closes soon, so download the Fox Bet Super 6 app and play for free. Championship Sunday at the Classic. This is another big part of the Classic, the Bassmaster Classic Expo presented by Marathon at the Greenville Convention Center. It's 10 o'clock local time. Yes. The doors have just opened, <laughs> yes. and, and everyone is just fogging in here, ready to take a look at, at the, all the incredible things on display. A look at the future of all those products you like to buy to, to supplement your, your bass fishing interests here from apparel and electronics. You can see a lot of the legends of the sport. It's been often said that, uh, you know, 
bass fishing is a great sport because so many of the original legends are still around. You can talk to them. Bill Dance, we just saw Hank Parker, yes. Roland Martin sitting just over there. Just off the set right there. I, I always get a lot of anxiety when they open the doors. But really, looking at what we said that this was going to be a weird ride here on the final day of the Bassmaster Classic. And every day of this tournament, generally this time of day, when that sun gets high and really sucks those bass to those boat docks, the best part of the day, at least for the biggest ones on Lake Hartwell, have really been from here until our weigh-in. Yeah, I really like what, what Jason Christie is doing. He's committed to those boat docks, and his attitude is great. He said, if I have two fish that I think I should take to the scales, he's talking about three-pounders, by noon, then I'll be good to go. That tells you that he's expecting good things that afternoon, but you can't forget all those docks have been fished yes. really, really hard for three days. Stetson Blaylock is doing something we haven't seen anyone else do all week. Well, Stetson Blaylock told us he's going to have to catch 20 pounds to do it. You think of all the scenarios, and should the top guys continue to falter, it could be the best bag of the day. That, that absolutely, wins the absolutely hit. right. I mean, biggest stringer could end up absolutely holding the trophy today. Back out on the water right now on Hartwell with Jason Christie. Two fish in his live well. It is going to be all eyes on this man right here from Oklahoma. So, so close in years past holding the trophy. Kyle Welcher, both tied coming into this third day. Yesterday I had two big bites swimming that jig. Like I'd pitch it in there and then just start swimming it back out underneath that. Underneath that shallow foam, and so I'm kind of trying a little, few different things, but. And Davey, another thing for some folks that are watching this on FS1, you can go a long duration. We've talked about it. You can go a long duration and not get bid on these docks at yeah. the same time. You can get on the right rip and do damage. One, one thing that you've seen on Hartwell, when you get a bite, there's a pretty good chance the next dock or two will have one. Yeah, and, and so many of these fish are, are paired up. You, you might catch a two-pounder and there'll be a six or seven-pounder there with it. And what often happens is the next person that comes through, maybe 30 minutes later, if that bigger fish is willing, then... They would catch the bigger one that you might see a, a guy say, wow, I caught a two-pounder and there was a five-pounder with it. And I think that's what's happened with Luke Palmer today. And let's talk about somebody that dedicated his tournament, really, to fishing the exact way Jason Christie is. Somebody that was in the top five on day one, Greg Hackney. And here's where the, the other side of this game. Greg Hackney caught 11 pounds yesterday. These docks burned him. Yes. Doing the same thing. Uh, another person has just had a, a tournament unlike what we expected, but you saw what he could have done. Ah. Brandon Cobb, day one, those docks burned him. Yes. Now he said he could have had a 25-pound bag yesterday. He lost yes. with his – he had the Skeeter Boat's big bass of the tournament so far is 6-12, and he said he lost a 6 and two fives. He could have had almost 25 pounds. He lost multiple big fish both days, but day one it really hurt him because he had so many bites that were just pound and a half fish. Taku hooked up here. He's got a limit. No, no big ones yet. Good classic for Taku, though. Yeah. One of the most fun anglers that we cover throughout a season. His second classic fished last year at Ray Roberts. Oh. Boy, he's one of those anglers that had it stayed cold. Yes. Would have. I mean, yes. he's top ten going into today. He certainly got a chance to win, but had it stayed cold. Ugh. Yeah, if they would have stayed grouped up out deep, I believe a little bit of that warming trend hurt a lot of those guys that just dedicated themselves to fishing deep here on Hartwell this week. Could have been Taku Disneyland there, Davey. It could have been Taku yes. Disneyland. Ended up Taku Chuck E. Cheese or something. I think it's happening right now.
Nice one. Yeah, nice one. He's been pre preparing to lift that trophy, and uh, yes, he's right there. <laughs> Good solid spots there, but that's just, just hard to catch those it fives. Is. It is. So rare. Those will keep him in the mix if he can come. Get a combo of a couple bigger largemouth. He does have one solid largemouth in his live well right now. We saw earlier today. And that's that's what he said his game plan was today. He said in the interview, I'm a professional live scoper. That's what I do. I'm a professional live scoper. There's so several I, of those out yeah. here. I want to catch right. fish doing that, and then around 11 o'clock when that sun creates some shade, I'll go fish for those six-pound largemouth I saw. Taku started the day in ninth place. He's in 11, just lost a couple of spots so far. That will change. All those changes up and down the leaderboard. Bass Track is tracking them for you, but Stetson Blaylock, man, one solid thing about day one, he is the man with the lead for the most time. Brian New, Luke Palmer, Joey Nania, and all the rest will be back to Lake Hartwell momentarily. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Today, two Big Ten rivals wrap up the regular season on Fox. E.J. Lytle and number 23 Ohio State face the Michigan Wolverines today at noon Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Welcome back to our continued coverage and let's have a TH Marine weather watch. You see right there, 65 degrees, mostly sunny. And the wind southwest, four miles per hour. It's forecasted to increase as the day moves on. I'm Dave Mercer, just back from takeoff. And I'll tell you, we were very, very lucky not to have a fog delay this morning. I mean, it may have looked crystal clear in the coverage, but just after the boats left, the fog started to roll in. But as you can see from our TH Weather Watch, a beautiful championship Sunday here at the greatest spectacle in sport fishing, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. Speaking of the Bassmaster Classic, I'm joined by Bassmaster Classic champion and two-time angler of the year, Davey height and man I had a trouble sleeping last night Davey height that's how special this championship Sunday is going to be yeah I, d I had a little trouble too but you and I probably got a lot more rest than a few of these anglers actually all 25 it's incredible that all 25 anglers coming into today have a legitimate chance to win the Bassmaster Classic I've never seen that only seven pounds separated first from 25th place and there are seven pound bass swimming around here on Lake Hartwell the two anglers tied atop the the leaderboard Kyle Welcher Jason Christie have had a slower start this morning than they have the last few days a very different morning like you mentioned David it has been warmer but we'll see things unfold the last few hours the afternoon has been the best time of the day the previous two days and I think it'll be that way today I'm excited about it, but I'll tell you one thing that's exciting. The doors just opened here at our Outdoor Expo, presented by Marathon. And, man, you can see behind us, they are streaming in by the droves. And everybody excited, everybody talking about, this is what I keep hearing over and over again. This may be the only classic since Pittsburgh, where the weights were incredibly small, that everybody in the top 25 has a legitimate shot of becoming a Bassmaster Classic champion today. 100%. They were so close in because of weights. The fish were small and the numbers were small. Here, there are a lot more fish and bigger fish. It's incredible that it's really this close. Now over to a man who says he fears big fish. He <laughs> likes catching them, but he just not strong enough to catch them, he says. But Takumi Ito is definitely strong enough to win this title. Already got one Elite Series wins to his resume. You saw him catch two in front of this dock, basically straight in front of the boat where he made the, the last cast. Okay. Saw that fish on his sonar and cast behind the boat and hooked up here. It's good one. It's good one. It's good one. 
Yeah, good one. Yeah. Good one. Yes, good one. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, it's good. Oh, very nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, very nice. Come here. Come here. Yes, three pounder. Yeah. Whew. Beautiful spotted bass yeah. there for Tiki. Yeah. Well, it won't nice, be easy nice, to nice. win this catching only spotted bass, but those are the kind that maybe you give yourself a chance. Takumi Ito quickly becoming one of the most popular pros on the Bassmaster Elite Series, and it's truly because of his infectious excitement. You know, everybody, I mean, you can't not cheer for a guy like Takumi Ito. He loves every moment, and you can see how intense he is. He pre-fished here for the Bassmaster Classic on Lake Hartwell. He'd never been here. Pre-fished 25 days, including Christmas and New Year's. I talked to him about that work ethic. And, and he made it very simple. He said, this is the biggest dream I've ever had. I won the Bassmaster Classic playing a video game as a child, and I've dreamed about it since then. But he said, it's the biggest dream, but it's also the biggest nightmare to leave my family at home and be away from them. And if I'm going to be away, I'm going to work, and I'm going to make this work. And that's truly what drives him. Every day he's here, he's on the water. Yeah. Uh, bait. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I got to try to catch a fish real quick. He claims not to have strong arms, but he must have an incredibly strong neck because you never see him not Big looking one. down. <laughs> Big one. So when he's saying big one, that he's looking at his sonar. He has three graphs on the front of his boat. Has has them for Come sonar, on. for for side scan, and for forward facing. He just saw a fish, and he can tell by looking at his graph. So many days, so many hours, like we talked about, the size of the fish, and yes. also Come identify on. Come these on. fish. Oh no! Oh no! That was a big one. Come on. So the fish is, is no. reacting to the bait. I'm professional rive scoper, but it's very difficult. Oh no. It's a maybe maybe three and a half. Oh. You see his electronics there right in front of him. He has those two on the bottom side of the side and one. then one up like front. A fruit. There's a soft plastic jerk bait. Half ounce jig head. Half ounce jig head. So he's using a soft plastic jerk bait. Look, something that imitates that, a blueback herring that these fish love so much here. Come on. Half ounce jig head. And that is your Bass Pro Shops top lures from Taku Ito. And as he said, he is a professional live scoper. I mean, very good at this approach. And for the novice, basically, it, he can see what that fish is doing. It's like sight fishing, but in any depth of water. So every single cast, he's learning. Yes, and he's around a lot of fish right now. You can just tell how, how, ex how excited he is. And, and just not getting around fish, he's able to tell those three, three and a half pound fish. The fish that he just got so excited about just a couple casts ago, he said was well, three and a half pounds. That, that's a signal of someone that has spent a lot of time looking at their sonar, being able to not just say good one, but he knew about, you know, within probably a half pound of exactly how much that fish weighed. And then for some reason on Bass Track, they don't know how to judge how, what size they are. <laughs> I don't know what causes that. There was a time that Takumi did not even know what a pound was. If you remember yes. that when he first joined the Elite Series. Oh, yes. They were judging how many pounds he was like, I, I don't know what a pound is. That's not how yeah. I measure things. But he has clearly figured it out. For our viewers to let you know, although these are the best professional anglers in the world, they're still anglers, and they don't tell the truth, yes. Davey Height. Yes. To prove that, on the Bassmaster Elite Series, we have an award that we give out every single week, and it's 
the person that is closest to their Bass Track actual weight. So we have to pay them to tell the truth. $1,000. <laughs> many, many blueback herring. A lot. A lot. Certainly can tell the difference between the, the blueback herring and the and the bass. I can't overstate how how much it means if you just stop and think about spending 12 hours a day for 25 days looking at your electronics, not even fishing, preparing for this day, for this one day. How excited he is and how anxious he is because of what he has done to prepare for this, the biggest stage in our sport. And that's that's how you come from halfway around the world yes. and compete, you know, and, and not just compete to make the classic. I mean, he won an elite series title in his second season on tour, but it's that time commitment. I mean, he's fishing against anglers that have fished Hartwell for their entire life. Yes. But he's fished Hartwell more than the odds on favor yeah, coming I into this it. event, Brandon Cobb, in the last year. And, you know, people have different priorities different walks of life we all come from that but but i can you know i can only have the utmost respect for someone that puts that much into what they want to be the best in the world at travel halfway halfway across the world to do it and then spend that amount of time Kumi Ito, not far from our takeoff by the looks of things, and that's a real good example of how effective that technology is. In the past, if they didn't eat, you didn't know what was there. He knows those fish are there, and you can see just how much work he's putting into getting those bites. For probably half of my career, I was not even around any fish, but I'm glad I didn't know it, to be honest with you, Dave Mercer. Yeah. <laughs> could be almost more frustrating to know they're there and not get them to bite. But atop the leaderboard, Stetson Blaylock, an elite series champion, and maybe just a few hours away from this title, but a lot more fishing yet to come at the 2022 Bassmaster Classic. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen! Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. What a Bassmaster Classic it has been here in beautiful Greenville, South Carolina, the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. Just a few hours, well, several hours of competition left ahead of us, but Greenville has been an incredible host this week. Rolled out the red carpet, unbelievable. You think, you know, after being here four times, you would think, uh, maybe it's going to get a little softer. It gets better and better every single time. But let's have a look at our leaderboard. Well, Lake Hartwell right now, Stetson Blaylock is your unofficial leader with 47 pounds, 4 ounces. Our day one leader, Brian New in second. And Luke Palmer in third place right now. Kyle Welcher and Jason Christie held the co-lead going into today. You see Welcher in fourth and Jason Christie in ninth. But let's get out to our tournament leader right now, Stetson Blaylock. Fishing with a heavy heart this week. Lost his father-in-law last week. And man, what an incredible oh, blessing a Bassmaster Classic title would be. I got too far past it. The first boat dock I think we've seen Stetson fishing on live. Been catching a lot of it. Here we go, hooked up.
good fish here. Caught a glimpse of it there. Oh, oh yeah. Holy crap. Thank you, Lord. Dude. Stetson Blaylock started the morning with a five pounder and we said he needs one more of those that could certainly give him what he needs to win. We've talked about it. there's 15 anglers five in case pounds, two, two ounces five pounders they could win this event. That's Stetson second. He's where he needs to be. A lot of fishing time left. A lot of fishing time and the best part of the day for Jason Christie and Brian knew some of those anglers. But Holy crap guys. We're, we're two, two bites away. Yeah, we're getting there. I don't think he realizes <laughs> that he's a lot closer to there than he thinks. His smallest fish, 2-4. Five pounder number two. That's gonna be a huge call. And man, what a fish there. And on Championship Sunday, Davey, you have been there. You have felt it. You've had this experience. How big does a 5-2 feel on Championship Sunday? <laughs> uh, I think we would all feel like Taku. You don't know if you can even lift that fish, you know, even though it's only five pounds. It's just a, a, a feeling I can't even put into words, to be honest with you, Dave. But Tetson Blaylock, he, when he caught that first pound, five-pounder, we knew that he had a chance. But now he really does understand the moment that he is in with two five pounders in his live web. That is your marathon peak performance and wow what a championship Sunday. Stetson Blaylock is happening having as you see his two smallest fish before that one a two four so one of them is going to go back in the water and that weight's going to continue to climb Davey Height. Yeah Stetson Blaylock having a you know a day of a lifetime really and truly in the bass fishing world to to catch a second five pounder at only 1028 he certainly has to be our marathon peak performer this morning Stetson Blaylock you are in the driver's seat to hold the Bass Master Classic trophy over your head a lot of fishing time Jason Christie is one that that knows that uh, one or two hours can change everything oh. on the final day of the Bass oh, Master yeah. Classic but Stetson Blaylock uh, gosh you got to be be happy for him so far this morning and oh, something that God. that I'm started talking about this morning Dude. all these anglers fishing the boat docks that's the first dock that we've seen on live him fishing he has been fishing basically Three by himself minutes, around man. isolated islands I mean I don't even know man it doesn't really matter at this point I just need I know I need five more four three more big ones I think I'm gonna be all right when it's all said and done because I'm fixing to catch me a couple more heads. One of the things that makes our sport different. I got me four rigged up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust, get, get out one more rod and put up a couple of rods because this day is spelled out itself. No, I ain't gonna need that stuff. One of the big things that makes our sport different, Davey Height, is the doubt, the not knowing. You can't look at the scoreboard, so he has no idea. But I also think that's what makes our sport so special. It's the doubt in the not knowing and the nerves that he is gonna feel rolling into that arena this afternoon. A absolutely, it's the mental part of our sport, not knowing whether he needs to adjust or not. I mean, you just don't know if you're leading the Bassmaster Classic or you're trailing by five pounds. Well, he may not know, but he is officially leading the Bassmaster Classic Championship Sunday. And Stetson Blaylock atop the leaderboard with 50 pounds, six ounces.
Lots of fishing ahead. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. It is the greatest day in professional angling championship Sunday here at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. But that an incredible shot of the Toyota booth inside the Outdoor Expo presented by Marathon. And it looks much different right now. <laughs> that shot was obviously taken when we were closed. You can hardly see the carpet here now, Davey Height. And I, absolutely, it was incredible to me that I thought it was 10 o'clock. I thought, well, today the crowd's a little smaller, but it wasn't even time for them to open the doors yet. Do you hear the music? I hear the music. It is definitely time for our Power Pole replay of the day. And shocker, it has to be one Stetson Blaylock. No, Davey Heights? Unanimous decision. Stetson Blaylock this morning. Getting out of the gates really well oh, this morning. Oh. Starting off in sixth place. Oh, yeah. Caught him a five-pounder early this morning. But then later in the day, the first bow dot that I've personally seen, Holy Stetson crap. Blaylock fish all Thanks. week this week. We're, we're two pounds. Throws a wacky worm under there. Today. I'm sure a yum dinger. He likes to throw a lot. Yeah. Another five-pounder. Stetson Blaylock, you have to be the power pole. Replay of the day, replay of the week, maybe even replay of the classic. A lot of fishing time left to go. But like you said, Dave Mercer, they got to catch him now. He's got two five-pounders in a live well. He has he has taken control of this tournament at this point, and there's going to be nobody small ball on their way to this title. Stetson Blaylock may not just be the power pole replay of the week, the power pole replay of his life. Yes, yes, yes. Man, an unbelievable morning for Stetson Blaylock. Went out in sixth place this morning, three pounds, 11 ounces behind the leader. And now everybody is chasing him with a five pound lead in the Super Bowl of bass fishing. Hey, I think that fish, he he realizes he, he he's, he's right there. He might not realize he's got the lead, but that's the first time. And he's Stetson Blaylock is an all business kind of guy, but he knows he's in the driver's seat right now. Our co-leader going into today, Jason Christie, is on the move right now. He has dropped down the leaderboard to ninth place, and Christie has been here before. As you can see right there, had a four pound, 11 ounce lead in 2018, right here on Lake Hartwell. 2016, the first time he was in that position on Grand Lake, had a five pound, 11 ounce lead. So a five and a six pound lead, basically, and both of those went away. One of those, I believe, was taken from him by spectators. There was just so much traffic. The other one, Grand Lake, it, it just, he lost. I mean, yes. he got beat. Yes. When somebody brings in 29 pounds, five ounces, or yeah. whatever it was with Edwin Evers, he got beat. Um, the, the one thing that really stands out, though, real quick, only brought four fish to the live well, to the scales, excuse me, that final day. He had a spot that was guaranteed to catch him a limit this morning, and for some reason, those fish were not there. Now back over to Takumi Ito live. Christy talked about this coming into this. He said, I, I don't want to lead. Yeah, I, and really, if you look at the track record of the last 10 years, the majority of classic wins come from behind. Takumi Ito hooked up. Yeah. Uh, no, small one. Yeah, I need more. Heard him say there, he knows he needs more. He Maybe knows no. he needs those bigger fish. Green. Yeah. Smaller? Yeah, smaller. Yeah. Pretty good. Culling for ounces, and right now he needs to start culling for pounds. Yes. But somebody who's no stranger to giant fish, Steve Kennedy, the former heavyweight champion of professional bass fishing, and our own Robbie Floyd is standing by with him. BMW trailer hitches on the line. Robbie Floyd, what are you seeing? 
Well, I've been with Steve Kennedy for a while, and I saw that flurry in the pocket, him trying to catch those spotted bass, and he stumbled upon a good four-pound largemouth, and he's been hopping to spotted bass sites one after another after another. He told me earlier, he said, I'm waiting, you know, till the wind gets up, and I'm going to go to the, hit those docks. But as we hear, and he can't hear, that Stetson Blaylock may be making that, that move earlier. And I asked him just a minute ago, is there a certain time you want to do that? And I think everything is dependent on the wind. So... Even though the wind may or may not be helping, it obviously is helping Stetson Blaylock. I think he's looking for something that he may or may not need, and he just doesn't know it. But he's looking for these three-pounders, and he knows that he probably needs five-pounders if he's going to win this thing. So, Robbie, now you've been on the water for four days in a row. Get a good feel for it. You saw practice yep. day, how many fish you saw up shallow, a lot of those fish around boat docks, that sort of thing. With Hank Cherry, and, and now that you've been all over the lake with so many different anglers, do you have a feeling – those boat docks have, have just gotten beaten up too much? Because you see people like Steve Kennedy that you're with there now that you know he loves to throw that big swim bait around him, and now he's offshore fishing. And and that's what surprised me about Steve and, and doing this. I mean, he's he's doing great at what he's doing, but does that win you the Bassmaster Classic? I don't think so. But I was really surprised, and I'm really surprised he's not going out there. But you're talking about how these docks keep getting hit by everybody, and there are big fish out there. I'm, I'm surprised he's not making that move right now. But the fish that I saw, and I was with Hank Cherry the other day, and he was even a jerkbait fish, but it was around docks. I saw a two-pounder being caught with a seven and an, and an eight-pounder tied to it. So there was 15 pounds I saw in those two fish. They are in there. Everybody knows they're there. Today, is it the day that they bite now that the sun keeps coming in and out? I think they're going to be, I think we're going to see some big weights here towards the end. I would definitely stick into the weigh in, and we're already seeing Stetson catch fives, and I don't care how you count it, five fives equal 25 pounds, and I still think that's very possible today. It's just how can they get them to bite? Scott Martin said the same thing. I won't take the bait. Do something a little different. If he throws that big spin. Bait. Maybe that's the enticer that some of these wacky rigs aren't doing. Thank you very much, Robbie. We'll let you get back to watching that. And Steve Kendi, let's check in with him earlier today. Yeah, you see him there with a smaller fish. And gosh, you just, you want to get bites in the Bassmaster Classic. You, I mean, we all as fishermen, you want to catch fish. And, but the final day of the Bassmaster Classic, I just I just see a lot of people fishing for bites and and yeah you can catch a four or five pound spotted bass on on Lake Harwell or you can catch a, a largemouth out that deep but the percentages are in your favor fishing shallower here on Lake Hartwell today. Over to Jason Christie and twice he has led going into the final day of the Bassmaster Classic. Has the cold lead this time but now has dropped well, to ten. Well we're in the same boat we was in. The last time we went live, just trying to get the next bite. You know, I ain't thinking about nothing else. Just what can I do to get the, where can I go? What can I do to get the next bite? And, you know, I've had the same cameraman the first two days, and we both, and it's just, we'll hit one dock where we'll catch two. And uh, it'll, and that's what, I mean, that's what I know is you just keep fishing. We're gonna hit, we're gonna hit a little ding ding, and then, you know, then we just, I mean, we're gonna do the same thing. Just what, it, that's just the way it is. It's the uh, only way I know to win. I mean, I can, you know, go back to fishing deep and stuff like that, and I just feel like this is my best chance to win, and that's, that's why I'm here. I'm not here. For any other reason, I mean, I'd rather finish 25th and feel like I fished to win rather than finish second or fifth and and go to sleep tonight not knowing that I didn't fish to win. I mean, I'm that's what I'm doing. I mean, everybody that knows me knows that. I mean, like I ain't care about nothing other than first. And I believe that we are going to hit. We're going to get the bites. I don't doubt that one bit. I really don't. The one thing I do notice, he, he talked to us this morning and said, hey, I've got one in the live well like I need to have to take to the scales. I need one more before noon. So he's got over an hour to do that. 
But I've been watching him closely the last two days. He seems to be fishing faster around these docks than he has been. And it's hard not to. It's hard not to. When you when you think you're a little behind uh, your your schedule, then you want to speed up to make up for that time. And, and I hope he slows down a little bit. One more good three-pound bite will, I think, calm him down. Have a look at Christie's catches from earlier today. This is, this is where he started all three days. And this is where he told us after the first day's weigh-in, there's really too many fish in this creek, in this ditch, this area that he started in all week. And this morning, although he caught this good solid one, and this is a, you know, a solid three plus pound fish. We will start the class like that. That's, that's what you want. But then it went away and he said, they're just not here and when I see some they're in singles they're not in these groups where they they fight good so he went to the boat docks and, and early on caught his second fish here but it is really really slowed down since then and the one thing that jason christie said he's a great dock fisherman i just haven't quite figured out i should be catching more fish on the docks than i am there you have your leaderboard stetson blaylock on the top of that leaderboard and jason christie has dropped to 10th place but remember he's only got two fish and i have faith in jason christie and the karma of the Bassmaster Classic universe. They can't rip it from them another time, can they? Only the fish will tell. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. It just kind of fits my style, more of a finesse. You can you can you can contend here with finesse style presentations, and you can figure something out here on this lake that you can run the whole lake and catch fish on. And honestly, most of my fish this week in the tournament, the past two days, have come off new water. Uh, so that's kind of a, something that is very rare for me because I like to find areas, a pocket, a creek, a grass line, something like that to be successful for a tournament. And here, you don't have to do that. And I think it just plays into kind of that, you know, you don't know what you're gonna run into when you can run around and just fish new water and fish what looks good and feels good. It just sets up, and, and it fishes a lot like home. It's, it's a perfect mixture between what Washita fishes like and Lake Hamilton right there in Hot Springs, which is the two lakes that I grew up on. I mean, you, you split those two lakes in half and that's what Hotwell is, except the spotted bass here are a lot bigger. And for me, it's just a lot of fun. I just, I feel good and comfortable here. Don't worry about what he said. Let's have a look at what he's done. Oh, that yeah. shows how it lines up for Stetson Blaylock, and it couldn't line up on a better day, Championship Sunday. Absolutely, oh, this this classic, uh, because we've been able to talk to him behind the scenes, it's, it's really incredible. Another competitor said, tie on a, yeah. DT6, a red, Demon there. DT6 and go down the bank and just just don't, don't ask yourself any questions, they'll bite it. And he's been able to catch a lot of his fish like that, but then he's also done a great job with his forward-facing sonar, seeing some fish that are following the bait, and then taking a, a yum dinger and pitching in and getting that fish to bite that maybe wouldn't bite any other way. So a, a great combo, but to me, his biggest asset, and he talked about it just, just then, fishing new water, fishing water that not only is new to him, but is not had other anglers on it all week. When, when some of these anglers say, well, I'm a fish a new set of boat docks, well, that set of boat docks was fished by someone else yesterday. Four box, Christy Mullins, Welcher, and Takumi Ito. And Davey, I had to ask you this, is being fluid, is that gonna turn out to be the biggest thing we take away from this event? It just seems like all the anglers that have not blocked one technique and one approach in their hand are the ones that are succeeding here day after day. Yeah, I just think that's not only here this week, but that's just the evolution of our sport. For so many years, even before I was fishing and it started to kind of fade away uh, while I was fishing, but now it's just so hard. These anglers are so good, so diverse that to just put one bait in your hand and say, hey, I'm gonna do this all day long, uh, you just don't see that happen very often. And Jason Christie, you know, he's, he's a guy that would love to do that as much as anyone, but you saw he had a spinning rod, a finesse approach, 
and also a, a half ounce jig approach in his plan this week. Kyle Welcher is, man, the more you watch him, the more he's he's constantly changing areas of the lake, changing baits, change, you know, from a finesse style bait to a big swim bait here this week. Stone cold Kyle Welcher. And man, I'm telling you, the reason I call him that is unflapped. You know, this morning just so, I, I literally said, if you win this, can we get some emotion from you? I mean, you can see his history as a professional poker player because yes. you don't see a, a lot from his, you know, facial yeah. expressions. But he's clearly running and gunning right now. What's that tell you, Dave? Yeah. Hey, this is like to say, you hey, know, you really talk to him a lot. This is his style. He you you look at him, you say he's not catching anything. And, and you know, he's co-leader of the Bassmaster Classic. This is just what he does all day, every day that I've seen him on the water in the Elite Series. He's amped it up just a hair here. It is the World Championship of Fishing, but this is the way he deals with every day. It's similar to Patrick Walters, but a little different. It's just controlled chaos, but at the end of the day, he's going to be atop the leaderboard. Speaking of controlled chaos, they're a good aerial view of what it's like to lead the Bassmaster Classic. And as soon as you take that lead, people, they find you, and uh, spectator boats have started to find him. This is, this is where it starts to set in, and this is where some people, I've, including myself, the, the time that I finished second in a Bassmaster Classic, this changes your mentality. This, this can change the whole game because he knows the reason why these boats have found him. He's leading the Bassmaster Classic. Stetson is all business, and I think he'll handle this well, but he knows what's going on now. I don't think he had a clue he was leading, but he knows now. He doesn't officially know, but he knows. One by one, you start to see photographers show up. Yes. And, you know, at the beginning, you think, well, maybe they're just stopping by. But as they start to build, you and know. As they want to get closer and closer to you, and you want them to stay farther and farther away. It's a great aerial look here of, of what he's been doing most of the week, fishing these banks. He caught that second five-pounder on a boat dock, but this is what he's been doing, these, these sand red clay a little rock mixed in on these banks that we have not seen anyone else fish and he's fishing them with a bait that you think wow there's no wind the sun is out and he's catching them a lot of his fish and definitely getting all of them to follow a crankbait and it's so unusual that usually goes down a month ago two or three weeks ago but to see it with the water temperatures we have and the conditions we have it really is incredible What's incredible to me, every single year, especially at this event, it stands out. Every other sport is a closed playing field. These guys are dealing with the pressure of, you know, anybody can go out in the lake. There's nobody holding a sh sign in this sport. It, and it's amazing. I think it's one of the most amazing things about the sport. Totally agree with you, and it's... It's just another part of the sport that when people that don't keep up with tournament fishing, they just say, well, it's just fishing. <laughs> That's just a, a whole other aspect of it that most people don't ever even realize if they don't keep up with our sport. It's in Blaylock. We'll leave him and... Head over to our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And what a season David Mullins is having this year here in the Bassmaster Classic in contention. And once again, wearing the Aaron Martin's colors. And uh, I never get tired That's of seeing right that, there. David. A little log on a point going into a pocket. No. <laughs> well. I said it was beautiful, then. Come here. Come here. I said it was beautiful. Pot log on a point, going into a spawning flat. Get in there. 
He's your progressive Enjoy Bassmaster your Angler of the Year leader over on the Bassmaster Elite Series. But we also have our Falcon Rods Rookie of the Year watch. And you see right atop of it, Jay Shakurit. See him around the classic, shaking hands, kissing babies. He's leading Rookie <laughs> of the Year. Davey Hyde, pick one name on that list that's going to chase him down throughout the season. Well, I, I would pull against Jay because he's got off to a great start. But Cody Huff was a, a name that everyone heard coming in. Matty Wong, you gotta love him. You gotta pull for him a little bit, also. Matty Wong, incredible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out here. He's in tenth place. Daisuke Aoki is gonna charge up that leaderboard as the season moves on. We'll be back in just a few minutes. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook, is sponsored by Toyota. Final day of the Bassmaster Classic, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic 2022, the 52nd edition, and we are in the big day, the payoff day. Absolutely. Championship uh -huh. Sunday, and Stetson Blaylock, the man on top of the leaderboard right now with, in fact, a very healthy lead over the day one leader, Brian New, over our leaders from day number two. Also got a Luke Palmer, a Kyle Welcher, Tuck Ito making a big move on this day, and Steve Kennedy coming up the board in nice fashion. We've still got plenty more fishing to go, lots yes, more to cover before this day is done, Mark Zona. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders taking a look at our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, and these are all fish catches from the dam as you move northbound here on Lake Hartwell, your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, and here's the best thing about this map, gang. Whenever you have that many fish catches spread out throughout a system, that is a very, very healthy and diverse fishery. Interesting looking at that Minn Kota unlock the lake as we've seen Stetson Blaylock making very, very big moves here really all day long. But there has no, been no fish bigger than this one right here for Stetson Blaylock just a few minutes ago. fish right there, putting Stetson Blaylock securely in the lead. And you look at a lead like that, you look at a lead of about, call it four or five pounds, Tommy Sanders. I know that looks safe because that's about the biggest lead we have seen in this tournament so far. Yep. That is not, no, it's not a safe. safe lead on this lake right now. We got a couple of leaders who are at the top of the leaderboard to start, and they can make, well, one or two catches like that, and they are right there joining the fray as well. So a lot of fluidity up and down the yes. leaderboard. That's what we want on uh, Championship Sunday at the Classic. We want to come down to the last minute. So glad you are with us for all of our live coverage of this special day in, in the world of fishing. Welcome to the Bassmaster Classic Outdoors Expo right here, presented by Marathon. And in our studio, we now welcome our special yes. guest for the next few minutes, Brandon Cobb. And Brandon, people are astonished that you're not on top of that leaderboard right now. I, I, I'm sure it's a little perplexing to you, but just sometimes it breaks that way. Yeah, it definitely does. This uh, <clears throat> this week at Hartwell, man, I, it was kind of one of those things. You see a lot of the front-facing sonar fish catch early and things like that, and I knew that the fish weren't quite in the stage I wanted them to be in, but that practice day we had was getting warmer and it was getting a little bit better. Then it was really warm on the off day. I was like, I think it's going to be right by the time it starts. An interesting thing that you said before this tournament to me as we did a little bit of pre-tournament reports were that you wanted it to be, you wanted it to be cold coming into this where a lot of the your competitors wanted it to warm up talk about why you wanted it so cold yeah so the reason i want it cold and kind of the reason i missed the main bite this week i think is the normal movement of fish on hartwell is they group up in massive schools on in these ditches like you see a lot of these guys fishing but on specific targets in the ditches not like where they're just roaming around like you see them fishing the fish will group up on like a little bit of rock, a couple stumps, a little tiny drop in there. And you can literally pull up and catch 15 to 17 pounds in 30 seconds. I mean, it's like <laughs> instant, like you catch them as fast as you can. And it got warm, broke those schools up, fish went to the bank, and then it got cold. They kind of went back out and they keep moving. So they're, they've moved off of the true pre-spawn places, but not up on the bank. The last time we were here for the Bassmaster Elite Series, you dominated it. 
all tournament long. The one thing I have to ask you is, is all of your experience here. You came in as the biggest favorite in this field. Did you feel the, 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 the pressure mounting as we got closer? Yeah, I wouldn't. I didn't have like the nerves type pressure necessarily, but with everything going on with, you know, I had a lot of, which I, I love having people cheering me on and spectators, but I had a lot of boats following me around. Just a lot of turmoil, I guess. I never felt concentrated, if that makes sense. On day one, it wasn't that I was necessarily nervous. It was more I just wasn't couldn't focus like on day one I lost a bunch of fish day two was the same way lost a bunch of fish but I just could never get in like what I felt like was a rhythm and uh, a lot of that was probably with just it, it was just everything going on between the media coverage and the boats falling the around circus. Just, just the circus yeah I never felt like I was focused on fishing hardly well let's get out on Lake Hartwell and the and started the day with the co-lead Jason Christie Still having a little bit of a slow start of it today and has got ground to make up as it stands right now. Exactly right, Jason Christie. Start in a key ditch earlier this morning. And we were doing whatever we could to manufacture drama with Jason Christie, but he provided it he this morning. went ahead and helped us out. His starting spot where he has done all his damage this week for the first 90 minutes, it just dried up. And he has throttled them days one and two on his front-facing sonar in about 10 to 30 feet of water. Jason Christie has covered a lot of water since then, fishing shallower docks. And this is Jason live. Jason Christie with two bass in his live well right now. <laughs> Sometimes you just catch one and you just get excited. Not that I peed on myself, but it's a fat one. Tell you, man. Dude, that's, I mean, he like, only has three in the boat, with it. but he has two of the right it. ones. As as you and he told us, if I get two of the right ones by as noon, as you I'm good. I'm going to be good. Do you agree with that, Brandon? I, I do. And this, and this right approach he's taking, these shallow docks, this is what I kind of banked on, but it just – I, I think the more and more fish are coming, and I didn't have that fallback, the morning plan right. that he had. I didn't have that. I, I kind of put all my eggs in these shallow docks, and they just didn't get on them till too late. But, yeah, it's getting the time of day where – and actually the row of docks he's on, I fished. It's a really, really? good row. Yeah, that's one, of, that's one of the better rows in the lake. Kind of break down, if you look at the flatter banks that you see, Christian, kind of break down – where you're almost able to drive down this lake and go, that's the perfect bank with the perfect dock. Yeah, and, and that's what, what he's doing, these flatter type areas, especially with, you see, they're more isolated. It's not like 50 docks in a row. He's fishing these. What Those fish get on these flatter banks because they warm up a lot faster, and then they there's nothing on them. I mean, there's no cover, so these flatter docks are the only thing. A lot of times you'll actually find groups on these flatter docks. And uh, the one thing that was unique this week is – a lot of the fish, usually it's instant. These flatter docks, like you skip under them or whatever, you can't it. get your reel engaged. But it was a lot slower this week. I think the fish are just getting up there. That really fat fish you saw, that, that fish probably just came up there today. So it's, uh, it was a lot harder to catch them than normal. And I, my strategy is fish as fast as I can and cover as many as possible. And I don't think they were biting that well on these. So it, you had to slow down a little bit. Let's get out to our leader, Stetson Blaylock, and you've had a chance, I guess, to assess a little bit of what he's doing here. Brandon, what do you think of this approach? Yeah, I haven't actually watched a ton of live with Stetson, but I, I know, like, the dock fishing, that big one I think he caught a while ago, was uh, a lot of the shallow dock fishing, or just docks in general, is uh, definitely something I'm familiar with. But the, the kind of – when I – kind of cut my teeth on Hartwell and develop my strategy there, there was no such thing as front-looking sonar. Yeah. So it's kind of hard for me to reinvent the wheel of the way I target the lake. <laughs> and uh, a lot of that is kind of weird. Do you find it strange? So we've seen him obviously caught a big, big dock fish here a few moments ago, but really a bulk of his weight this week has come grinding a crankbait in one to call it six or seven feet of water, mid-lake, clearest water you can find, without wind generally you want wind and you also want colder water temps yet he has throttled them every day of this tournament wind in a plug does that surprise you that 100 surprised me i actually cut all my crankbaits off the first day of practice <laughs> when i saw the water tip 
<laughs> so it, uh, that, that's definitely not something that I would normally do. It's something different that maybe should or <laughs> shouldn't work maybe, but that's why he's doing so well because he's kind of thinking outside the box. Taku Ito moving up the leaderboard today. Started in ninth place. He's in sixth now. Watching Taku Ito had a big second day like you did. You had a big second day, Brandon, and it could have been, from what we heard, it could have been a lot bigger. It was. Uh, day two was crazy. It, uh, I've, I've weighed in a lot of 20-pound bags at Hartwell, but I truly believe on day two, if everything went perfectly, a couple of fish I lost broke off. I think I could have had the biggest bag I've ever had on Hartwell. You're kidding me. I, 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 it sounds crazy, but I legitimately think I had 24 to 26 pounds. Oh, you are absolutely kidding. It, it was it was I, unbelievable. For, for everybody at home, mm -hmm. we're watching Taku Ito right here fishing deep. How did, how did you no, catch them yesterday compared to day number one where you struggled? We had a camera with you. What was the difference, or did you do the exact same thing? I did a lot of the yes. same. The one difference cool. was is... I targeted a, the day one. I kind of ran around the entire lake. It looked kind of probably a little scattered and like I was a little spun out, but that wasn't really it. I know heart. Well, the fish move in different stages on everywhere on the lake. And I never felt like I was in an area where the fish were doing exactly what I wanted. So I ran all around trying to find them in the appropriate position for the way I wanted to target them and realized that they were kind of the same everywhere. They weren't quite up there. So on day two, I just kind of milked out an area and fished everything for the most part. Were you just focusing on largemouth? Yes. If yeah. I this time of year, if I catch spots, it's not by like, mistake. Yeah, it's by mistake. I don't I don't target spots this time of year. Hartwell has got kind of a reputation as a spotted bass lake, which growing up and even the last few years, I mean, to win, you have to catch at least mostly largemouth. There's still it's still got a ton. I mean, it's not it's not truly a spotted bass lake in my opinion at all. Kyle Welcher currently in fifth place. Let's go over to Justin Hamner. Fished his way into the top ten. A lot of confidence going yes. into today. He's yes. not quite made it fire yet. Taking a look at Justin Hamner right here. Probably oh, like man. he's on a different lake yeah. right here. Justin Hamner fishing down by the dam here on Lake Hartwell. Stay on. Gosh, there was a giant with it. <laughs> Come on. It ain't over with yet. There was a giant with it. Oh my gosh. Solid fish right there, Justin Hamner. Starting to see him get away from what his primary deal has been, fishing an offshore rock pile that he said has the winning fish on it if he could catch five. Give us a prediction real quick, Brandon Cobb. What? Obviously, the last hours of competition days one and two have been critical. Give us your pick. I feel like Stetson, he's already transferred over to that kind of shallow water plan, and he has two big ones. He really only needs. That was low-hanging fruit, man. It was, but it's hard to, I mean, I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like he, he's already got two big ones, and I think he's going to get another big bite. With that, I mean, with what he has now, I don't think he has it, if right. he doesn't catch another He's going to need another he's call. He's going to need another call, but he's already transferred over to that plan. So I think, I think he's got it. Let's take it over to Ronnie Moore ah. right now. He's got a quick screener knowledge hit for us. I have Brandon Cobb with us. While we have Brandon Cobb, I wanted to bring this up because, yes, day one was tough. But for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, a lot of people were counting on Brandon Cobb and some other local favorites and our defending back-to-back -back classic champion. And on day one, it wasn't looking too good. He knows that you know all the stats, Brandon. Hank knows his stats as well, 48th and 41st. But yesterday, we saw a total flip-flop in the fantasy standings overall and for even my team specifically because of this. 6'12", big 
bass for Brandon Cobb. That's going to be worth bonus points if that holds up today. Also, he vaulted up that 12 to 15 spots in the leaderboard. That's valuable points for fans, even though he didn't make the cut. And then Hank Cherry had just about two pounds more than Brandon did on day one, had him just a few spots ahead, but it allowed him to jump up yesterday with 19 pounds, nine ounces. A big bag for him. Had him all the way from 41st into 11th place in contention going in the day. That's kind of scary having the two-time back-to-back classic champion in contention. But for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, those were two of the highest picks, and they did salvage on day two and make it worthwhile. All right. Thank you very much, Ronnie, and thank you, Brandon Cobb. I mean, usually you say, oh, guys never know when they'll be back to the Classic again. Uh, anybody who's been with Brandon yeah, can tell you absolutely. he's going to be back. He's won a pile of tournaments, and not only that, you love when Ronnie Moore says, hey, thank you for ruining people's fantasy fishing team, <laughs> Brandon Cobb. I didn't Cobb. mean it like well, that. He <laughs> gave, oh, Ronnie. He gave him some Ronnie. points. Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie noted that he gave <laughs> points. Ten pounds on day one, I deserve all the rude remarks I can get. <laughs> That's the, the, the best, smallest man. bag I've ever had at Harlem. Absolutely the best. Oh, you're, you're good, Brandon. Thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you for being with Thank us you. here. Well, Justin Hamner, one of our guys out there, is his first time, second time ever to fish on Lake Hartwell. And Justin Hamner is a young fella. He may appear young. He's about 30 years old, but he has been focusing on the classic basically since childhood. When I was, like I said, when I was seven years old, me and my dad won, won a tournament, and I really, you know, we were always watching Bassmaster, watch the classic. We would go to the classic. He's the guy that taught me, well, a Carolina rig, but he taught me to love the game and this passion. And he definitely shares that with me. And I wasn't going to give up until I got to the elites and to knock it out my second year of trying. It was a relief. I, I did it. My dream come true. Boy from Northport, Alabama. Justin Hamner. The 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Berkeley. Well, this is the time of the year when bass fishing fans the world over kind of come together around this one singular premier event. They either come here to our host city, Greenville, to attend the Classic in person. They watch on TV and all points of the globe. And right now, we are about three hours and 30 minutes yes. left of fishing time. The three days go fast, and the, this last day goes very, very fast. For all of those needing to do something explosive, having to play catch up, whatever, that doesn't seem like much time. For Stetson Blaylock, if he knew exactly where he stood, it seems like a short period and of time. And one thing to talk about in that top 10 right now, if you look at the top 10 anglers unofficially on that leaderboard, all of them have limits except one. Jason Christie still sitting on three fish, but with that being said, he will have a lot of room to move if he executes on that five bass limit. Come on, fish. What the heck? We gotta find that area. I mean, there's a stretch in the lake that's got more up. Maybe at the flipping dam. May have to run down there. I how, will. How Even is, if it's an hour and a half. How is it that calm the right dam, there? Down by the dam. <laughs> and we're just in Hamner looked to. like the ocean. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Even if we only get an hour and a half. Here's the difference right here. <laughs> you ready? Get ready. <laughs> Absolute middle of the ocean out there. Oh, I was about to run. <laughs> that was predicted for today. 10 yes, mile an hour yes, winds. Yes. That's what right, that is. Yeah, we got, but it's we, not everywhere. We got to the little boundary. We can't gas no more. Got to run to the other side of this dam. That looks like prime wacky rig water right there. Totally with white caps going into the bank. He entered that last bass as a 2-4. He was 4 pounds, 10 ounces low yesterday. 4 pounds, 10 ounces low, low on his bass I'm track. sorry. It's fair to say if you looked on bat. Oh. Stay on there. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Mm. Laugh, 
Do that guy, I don't know. <laughs> That we miss. He's coming. Yeah. He's coming. Mm -hmm. Bad thing is I'm probably gonna have to retie my stuff. Half ounce war eagle jig, and you saw that's the one challenge on these docks. If you look back at that fish when he hit that fish. Those cables so on the back, it could get really ugly. I, I mean, and what makes me feel good is that I pulled in, I'm like, dude, it's the wrong kind of stuff. But that's just what they, they want, the shallowest thing. It doesn't matter if it's deep, it doesn't matter if it's, I mean, the shallow stuff, they want that, but it doesn't matter if the pocket's deep. I mean, if I fish something new, you just fish it with a fresh mind. Two five pounders. Or two six pounders. Half ounce war eagle jig with a yum craw chunk trailer. I thought he was real big for a second. He was on that rope. Yeah. Yeah, when he was on that rope, I was like, oh. No. We got our three smallest. We just need two big ones. Just pull out the old lucky jerky. That should cut his six pound deficit in half and put him in second place. Hmm. He started 311 ahead of Stetson Play Life. I'm fishing this stuff. And again, I pitched in there and I hit the trolling motor. I was like, that was a bad idea if there's one in there. And then it sat there and it, and it goes. The best time of the day for this. Yeah. Where a lot of his damage has been done on these boat docks on Hartwell is from now until 3 o'clock. And we look at the 17 to 18 pounds that Stetson catches early and we're mesmerized by it because these guys haven't filled their limits. 311's a decent gap on the if, if Stetson has 20 pounds even, Christy would just need 16 right. and a quarter. Right. That's okay. that's his I'll worst bag of the week by Absolutely. over a pound. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So thing with Stetson, though, he's got a two and a quarter, For two sure. and a half. And Stetson can still grow to the biggest bag of the event easily. Some of the Chaos here in the background of the expo, and that's part I mean, of the she attraction. Is after yeah, I know her, she's. No. <laughs> she commands your attention. We're here at Club Expo, yeah, going on right. where music is pumping. <laughs> well, according to his timetable, he is pretty much. Getting to be right on schedule. Needed to be where he wanted at a certain point by noon. He's, uh, he's there or almost there. He's pretty close. His uh, deep water game kind of fizzled out on him this morning, but he is turning. He's riding the ship on Lake Hartwell. Jason Christie, if you're just picking up with us, started the day in a tie for top spot with Kyle Welcher while Welcher has not quite made up all the ground. Jason Christie is on the verge of making up some more ground, you have to think. Absolutely. Taking a look at his finishes. Bassmaster Classics led by almost five pounds, led by almost six pounds. And here's the thing. Both of the final days, Jason Christie only catching four fish. But I'm going to tell you, as I look, those are, for Bassmaster Classic, those are big, big leads. The last hour for him has been huge. Yeah. Huge. He does, however, have four fish right now, but we yes. expect that and to we, not, not hold up much longer. And we have to say that because we said it about Hank Cherry in 2013, losing that giant fish, costing him the Classic. We said that every year Cherry was in it to win it for a Classic, and now that he's gone back-to-back, -back, that's a thing of the past. Christie could right a lot of wrongs no this week with the right no five doubt. bass and today. And look, man, the, uh, Stetson Blaylock's a wonderful fisherman. You pull for Jason Christie right now because this tournament has haunted this man 
for so, go, so long life. to be that close. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, we're not. We're not. Listen to Jason in advance of this tournament all week long. A phrase that comes up a lot is, is it my time this time? If it's not my time, when is it going to be my time? Getting some flossing done while yeah, he's heading to yeah. the next set of boat dives. Multitasking. Watch ah. what a bass angler does. A top-tier bass angler, anyway. Here's the fellow tied him for first place to start the day, Kyle Welcher. Nothing really big yet in the live well for him. Has had his limit for a while. No, and Tommy, you kind of thought if Kyle Welcher was going to make a run at that trophy, that swim bait, that oversized swim bait was going to have to play so far today. Not the case. Solid one right here, though, for Welcher. That'll work. Dude, barely hooked. I don't know how he stayed on. That's a little chunker. It's a chunk. Well, Stetson Blaylock had scoped out a pretty, oh. pretty healthy lead there for oh, a while, yeah. but Jason Christie making big moves today. Brian New working his way back into oh, it. So Stetson, thanks. nobody gives the classic to you. No. you, you you're going to have to perform all day long. And he said it yeah. himself, I got to have we're 20 pounds. There. You made the comment when we were at break. You said, oh, don't run away with this. Please keep it. It is absolutely still a tournament. Absent. That's what we want as we take a look at those unofficial scores right now. Christie chipping away, chipping away at the lead that Stetson has staked out through the morning hours. We're into the afternoon time or on the verge of it right now. Certainly the second half of this tournament day, but still plenty of time. Three hours of fishing left to come. Stay with us. We'll be right back to Hartwell. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Time marches on on the final day of the Classic Championship Sunday. We will crown our world champion today, later at the weigh-in with all the pageantry, the lights and the noise. That's going to be something, but there's a lot of fishing between now and then. For now, our leader is Stetson Blaylock, came from fifth place earlier or was it sixth place earlier today yes sixth place sixth place today assumed the lead very very early on on this day and he has hung on to that Stetson Blaylock is, is many things but he is a bulldog if he gets a stake out of place near the top of a leaderboard at the start of a tournament he, he's not one of those guys who falls off a cliff immediately after no that. doubt about it all eyes this morning was Kyle Welcher Jason Christie out of nowhere in sixth place your mercury move of the day Pretty easy today, gang. Mercury move the day from Arkansas. Stetson Blaylock, pretty, pretty good with a spinning rod, but his damage this week has been with a crankbait from one to six feet of water, getting it done with that spinning rod today with this yum dinger. And here's the amazing oh. thing about Stetson yeah. Blaylock throughout this tournament. Fish like that right there. Big, big Lake Hartwell That's largemouth. That's right there, baby. That's one of them. I'm going to say that fish right there is conservatively over five pounds, backing yeah. it up with quality spotted bass. Stetson Blaylock with that largemouth you just seen a minute ago, basically yes. evened out that lead early today. Your Mercury move of the day has been all day long with Stetson Blaylock. Oh, oh yeah. This one about an hour ago. Yeah, we're getting. At one point, Stetson Blaylock with a five-pound lead, the biggest margin we've seen in this tournament. And there's a look at Stetson Blaylock's catches today, just around the corner from our takeoff at Green Pond Landing. Stetson Blaylock, you are the Mercury move of the day. Stetson Blaylock, who's won in the state of South Carolina. Take a look at his uh, what's yes. in his live well throughout the day so far. A big one, two big ones, actually, we saw. And two big ones may be the magic combination. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, and you really you look at his week so far. 17-5, day one, 15-7 yesterday. Today, he has his biggest stringer that he has caught so far in this event. 
But as Brandon Cobb said and you said Davey Hyde, he's going to need to make another call or two to win this title. Guys, I wanted to jump in on that Mercury move of the day, and I wanted to show some love to our photographers on the water covering this event on Bassmaster.com, getting great shots that we'll see in the magazine for years to come. And Mr. Kyle Jesse following Stetson Blaylock. Didn't know probably starting the day in sixth place that he would make a move, but some epic, awesome photos from the water that Stetson, Kyle, our fishing fans forever may remember if Stetson ends up winning this event. So you can definitely check out all those galleries from the action. We've got people all over our top 10. Anybody moving just like we do on live, they will cover them on the water as well. I think that fish catch is going to be one we remember for a long time. Z, Tommy? Absolutely. And we think about Stetson and pictures from here. Uh, 2019, a tournament here on Lake Hartwell. He gave us some of the best footage we've ever seen. Here's who we're going to focus on the rest of today. Guaranteed all the way to 3 o'clock. Jason Christie, four fish in his live well. But things starting to happen the last 30 minutes. Not a big one, but keeper number five for Christy. Blaylock's lead now cut inside of three pounds. Man, he caught me off, not off guard. I just wasn't in position to jerk. Kind of look at the boat docks that he's concentrating on. Very isolated, flatter, shallower docks. Not big rows, not deep docks. Tell me if I'm wrong, Z. Finally, at the Classic, you're not fishing any new boat docks. You've already I, scoped I, out. No, I absolutely he? think okay. he is. Okay. I, have watched, I have watched his track the last two hours. He made the comment that he studied Google Earth last night to find some of these flatter areas. But one of the last fish that he caught, I don't know if it was the second to last, he caught it on a little bit steeper bank, which might open up some of the areas a little bit instead of very, very specific flat docks like you see Welcher on right here. No, but I'm going to tell you, a lot of these docks that we've seen him on today, he has not fished in this event. Welcher in third with the... I don't think he's going to help. I didn't help him by letting me get that long either. I can tell you that. We got something to do now, I believe. He's a little bit bigger. I don't know how. I'm gonna double check. Two smallest are listed as a one pound even and one pound six ounces. This one's bigger. That one looks bigger to me. Let's get back out to Brian New, day one leader. Boy, this has just turned into a dock tournament here in the last five minutes. I love it. Right. I love it. And you have to say it, with the conditions that we have, if you look out of this outside of this expo right now, a lot higher skies today than we saw yesterday at this time, which will help this. And the other side of it is these Every one of our competitors in this field know if you're to catch a truly giant stringer of fish on this lake right now, that is how it's going to be done. Warming temperatures, high skies. 
Well, that's certainly what this fellow told us early on after the day one way in. Look, and, and here's what that is. The is principle you, behind it, yeah, Z. You always hear, you want your, your bait in a strike zone. You've heard that since it's Bass Fishing 101. A boat dock is a strike zone, so your bait is in a strike zone at all times, and it's a law of average. If you fish enough shallow water boat docks this time of year, somewhere in that day you are going to collide. How about a Skeeter Boats Big Bass? Z. What? Well, from our nation angler, Taylor Smith. A 2,500-mile drive to get here. A six-pounder just came in at 1142. He's up to 14 pounds today in sixth place. Wish his family the best. His wife is uh, dealing with an ailment. And he's having a pretty good Bassmaster he, Classic, his second. He talked about that. He talked about that in the interviews. Taylor's the highest nation guy we have going into the final day, and he said he didn't even know if he was going to be here for the Classic. You don't ever want to miss a Classic, but he qualified in November for this, and in December his wife was diagnosed with cancer, and so she's been going through those treatments. She went through chemo this week before coming to be here with him. What an incredible journey for the Washington angler who has qualified through the nation, Tommy, twice for the Classic, something that's very hard to do. Oh, yeah. And he's only fished the nation twice. He is two for two on classics from the nation. He and his jerk father drove the 2,500 miles to get here. Somebody that's not scared to come from behind in this event right yeah. here. I Brian agree. Brian New said yesterday after that way, and don't be scared. Daddy can do this. Oh, he is tweaked. <laughs> It is, friend. Boat docks, places like yes. that. What's playing right and now, that. That's the main feature. And, Tommy, really, that's the one thing we talked about. The higher that that sky got today, when that sun came out, they were going to set up on these docks. That is exactly what's transpired in the last hour. And what's transpired today, Christy and Welcher, there, two and three, started with the lead, lost the lead, and have bravely fought their way back. We'll be right back. Yeah, you'll be able to pick up on that PBA action just minutes away. We do have some fishing left for you from the state of South Carolina, the final day of the World Championship, the Bass Master Classic yes. from Lake Hartwell. And there's our host city, our fantastic host city of Greenville, South Carolina. Terrific folks couldn't make the anglers, the fans, all of us feel more welcome. It has been a fantastic week for the fourth time, the Classic here in this part of South Carolina. Aha. Mark Zona, I tell you what, we started out with the whole field bunch together. It's widened a little bit, but at the top, the top four guys have gotten closer and closer. That's good news for all of us fans hoping for a, a photo finish. Yeah, and really Stetson Blaylock has been in the driver's seat all day long today, coming out firing. The other thing that we have to kind of address right now, not kind of, but yesterday at through the weigh-in, we had a tie. And a lot of people, a lot of folks that are here at the Expo said, well, what happens at the end of today if we have a tie? It actually will. <laughs> we're not hoping for a tie no, today. No, 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 no. But if we do, if there is a tie, it will go into sudden death tomorrow morning out at Lake Hartwell. There's two anglers. It will be the first angler to catch one keeper bass. And again, we do not want a no, tie. No, Tommy. That Let's, would make baby cry. That is exactly right. Nobody Let's think wants of Let's tie. think of more helpful things like the Yamaha midday report for everyone who's just picking up on this final championship yes. day of the Classic. We take you out to Lake Hartwell to see what we have seen during the course of this day. Yamaha midday report so far. Your day one leader, Brian New, starting out with a spinning rod. A lot of his damage was done on shallow boat docks. Day number one, and that bite kind of has left Brian New. One of the things Ronnie Moore was talking about earlier in this tournament, 
Brian New, one of the more under-the-radar locals in this event. We had Brandon Cobb up here. You look at a Hank Jerry, guys like that with a lot of experience. Brian New, as much experience on Lake Hartwell as anybody in our field. And he's one who wasn't afraid, Z. Wasn't afraid to fish deep, wasn't afraid to fish shallow. He was prepared for this. But like, like we've mentioned all week, he has not liked this lake in the past, but he loves this lake now. Kyle Welcher started tied with the lead with Jason Christie, has not been able to maintain that pace so far today. His main thing that worked yesterday, not really showing up big time today. No, Kyle Welcher, he was a gambler by trade and he is a gambler by professional bass fisherman terms. Locked a big, big oversized swim bait in his hand yesterday yes, and a glide bait. In fact, a lot of the bass that he uh -oh, literally that. visibly got to see yesterday along the bank, wolf packs of big herring chase and Hartwell bass. He capitalized on that today, not the case. Kyle Welcher with a five bass limit in his live well, but he will need big upgrades today to make a run at the classic title. Has been chipping away at that lead, however, in the the biggest chunks taken out of that lead by Stetson Blaylock in the last hour, Jason Christie. Yeah, Jason Christie starting out deep right around the corner from our takeoff, 10 to 30 feet of water every single day of this tournament. He has done a lot of damage in the first hour of competition, and this was the only bite Jason Christie got on his deep stretch. Come here. Got you. This area Z we'll wasn't. the class block that. Wasn't a 100 fish school. It was a bunch of individual five to eight fish schools. And there was and a they lot were of gone, them. And they were gone. But he's made that move to the docks much earlier, and now it's starting to pay off. Deep. Exactly right. And if you look at Jason Christie's five bass limit that he has in his live well, four of those coming on boat docks for Jason Christie. Most of his work with a half ounce War Eagle <laughs> jig. Jason Christie with five in his live well. And this one right here got a little bit lucky on this one. Hung up in a cable. Three very, very solid fish for Jason Christie, and he made the comment, if I can make two big calls, I'm going to win this tournament. Going to be a fun afternoon. Jason Christie's boat. Final day, we've always said he is a closer with six BASS victories to his credit. Well, here's the man to run down, Stetson Blaylock, early today. Started in sixth place, did not waste much time taking over the top spot. No, Stetson Blaylock oh. doing a lot of damage today with yeah. a yum dinger. Two giant largemouth for Stetson Blaylock. In fact, That's what we needed right there. Baby. That right there is one of the biggest ones that we've seen on camera all event. All week. And like Jason Christie, Stetson Blaylock has some room to move. A lot of the folks that we've had on the set here yes. in the last couple hours said to win this tournament, Stetson Blaylock's going to have to make either one or two more calls today. A lot of time still on the board. Yamaha yeah. midday report, Tommy uh -oh, yeah. Sanders go. Stetson himself said, I got to yeah. catch 20 pounds today. Yes. That's it's looking like that's the way it's going to have to play out for him. We'll get out to Stetson Blaylock right now, hey. live out on Lake Hartwell. Yeah. Well, there's one of those calls. It's a big spot. I'll say it. We will see the biggest bag of the event yeah. weighed in at the arena today. No doubt. No All doubt right. about it. I like that prediction. It's been a great tournament, man. Might absolutely belong, great might belong to Stetson Blaylock. It absolutely might. You know, the rest of the coverage of today will be available to you on Bassmaster.com, including the weigh in, all that pageantry you don't want to miss out on. Right now, though, Dave Lamont is getting ready to take the baton as we look at our unofficial leaderboard right now. Dave Lamont getting ready to lead us into PBA Bowling, the World Series of Bowling, PBA Rock Holman Doubles Championship from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, is on the way. 
again, we continue here on Bassmaster.com all the way through the weigh-in. Stetson Blaylock, what a big move today yes. and a, a, a significant fish catch just right there. Big bass, big stage, big dreams, man. I got to tell you, hats off to Anderson. Half off, hats off to Lake Hartwell. This has been an incredible event, and everybody that has joined us in this expo this week. Absolutely. Hats off to all the anglers in the Classic. Let's go to bowling, PBA bowling from Wisconsin. Orange, yeah, orange, right there, yeah. Yeah, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, bye bye. <laughs> Very big. One, two, three, four, five. Cash. Thank you very much. Oh, Rocky, hook off. Hook off. Oh, no, man. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good fish. I think uh, here is uh, Rajmo's Disney World, I think. I can see in a three, five pounder and uh, one, one fish eating. <sighs> I'm very, very lucky. And I, I don't know why I hook off, but I can hold two. I need one more. I need one more. I need one more. Five pounder, the too much power. Too much power. I don't like it. I don't like it, but I need it. Uh. Oh, Rocky, Rocky. I use a, I use a half ounce jig head and then 25 feet brush bar and suspending big rudge moles. What's that? I'm gonna try. You gotta get closer than that, though. This whole gang of these suckers are good ones. Dude. Huh? Yeah, it's the same place. I've caught one every day. Yep. Another one right there.
I could just get me one more of those, then I'd go look for another five. No, it wasn't on the bed, it was just suspended. Woo, give me some, dude. Yes, baby. We're live. <sighs> Make sure. That's a big one. You watched him come over there? Yeah, yeah he just barely slurped it. Is this that spot? That spot's definitely bigger. Good call. Ooh, dude, that was freaking sick. I love sight fishing more than anything in the world. And I seen this sitting up there, and as soon as it hit the water, it went and it was a freaking big one. I mean, as soon as it hit the water, he was like, I'll take that. That was sick. He's skinny though, like he's he's big frame, but he probably don't even weigh four pounds. He's probably like a three and three quarter though. Oh, dude. It might not take two weeks for him to be spawning. There was three males back in there and that one right there. You may not need two weeks, you may need tomorrow. Gosh, dude, are you kidding me? I knew when I seen it on the map, I was like, if this is gonna be the first place they spawn in this region. I can't believe he bit. A little jacked up right now, dude. Oh my goodness. There's another one. There's another good one. What is it? That might be a daggum. He ain't that good. I think it's a uh, bluegill bed or something right here. Cause there's a lot of bluegill and some bass. You watched him come eat that thing? Dude, there ain't nothing better than that. There's, there's a good one. Two or three of them. Dude, they're up here cruising. I have threw this worm in front of 200 that I've seen this week, and zero of them have bit until that one. You got to have the gray worm, my friend. Gray worms only. I was like leaving here too. Oh, thank you, Lord. We got a chance. Now they might have caught them good. We got a chance now. We need to we need to catch one more. God, biggin. See him right there? It's like a three and a half. Three and a quarter, three and a half. There's a pair. Would you put him as an NS? Three and three
and get another one to react. There's still some more in there. All right. Let's go right over here and hit these docks. Let's go right over here and hit these docks. I like this stretch, but it's almost like there's too much good stuff. I 
Like there's not that one dock that's flat to make them all get on that one dock. There's a good looking walkway up there though. It sticks off the, the bank a little further than the rest of them. Hmm. That ain't what's supposed to be here. Missing a fish. One, two. What's that? Yeah. Oh crap. Maybe not. I need Rajmos, but no. Freaking sick.
<clears throat> Did not go. That's just too pretty not to reel an old swimmer by, dude. I'm just gonna tell you. I was like, look at that tree. coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. It's Bassmaster Live, but oh, it's not just any Bassmaster Live. This is it, the big day in the world of fishing, the final day championship Sunday at the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented yes, by yes. Hook. And man, oh man, we've seen some changes in the last half hour. Let's take a look at our leaderboard, Stetson Blaylock. Still on top, holding wow. on to that lead. It was Jason Christie right behind him. But Kyle Welcher, about 25 minutes ago, added a four-pounder to insert himself right into the program there. Jason Christie now in third place. And Taco Ito, we'll talk about Taco Ito just yes, seconds will. away from that right now as we take a look at our Humminbird Unlock the Lake first. Exactly right. Tommy Sanders going to take a look at Lake Hartwell right here. Here are your top five anglers. Humminbird unlocked the lake. Most of them fishing, you know, just call it kind of the western branch. As you get into the Tugaloo, seeing a lot of our anglers in this tournament thus far, at least today, a little bit of a mixed stringer going on. But the one thing that we've definitely got to see on FS1 was that better than average size largemouth Tommy Sanders. Your Humminbird unlocked the lake really for the better side of the last two hours has been the Humminbird unlock the boat docks because that's where well, predominantly three out of four of your top anglers are fishing right now. Okay, and for those three out of four, absolutely, Humminbird. Unlock the Unlock lake. The lake, thank you very much. So, for those three that you just mentioned there, that's going to be it for them for the rest of the day. Do you predict that? No, I don't predict that. I think you're going to see, you're obviously Taku Ito. He's been offshore, but he's been mixing in some boat docks here and there. But really, when we were tuning out of FS1, Stetson Blaylock with at least the first time that we've seen him keeping boat docks honest. Welcher definitely moving to docks. Jason Christie, he is all locked in boat dock fishing. And predominantly, if you weren't listening to our boat broadcast earlier, the boat dock bite has been best by far now until way in time. All right, time now for our Toyota Midday Report. We are happy to bring that to you, bring you up to yeah. date. If you were not with us this morning on FS1, we got it for you right here. Let's start with Takami Ito. We said we would mention him, another one of the anglers who added a good four-plus fish in the last half hour. Yes, sir, and really, Ronnie Moore nailed it. Ronnie mm. Moore was talking to Taku Ito yesterday after the weigh-in, and Taku's fishing offshore, getting it done with spotted bass, a couple large mouth mixed in. But very, very interesting. He had a slow day yesterday, backing it up with a big day two stringer. Taku Ito is going to have to catch one. He said to Ronnie, I have two bass. I have two bass that are over six pounds on docks. He's going to need those bites to take the title. That's right, 13-6 uh, on day one and a big 18-7 on yes. day number two. Just yes. finding his way, yes. finding his way here. Talk about Jason Christie tied at the top to finish day number two and start into the final day with Kyle Welcher. And Jason Christie did not have the quick start he wanted. Exactly right, Tommy. You know, 
when I bring up Ronnie today, and I brought him up a few times in the last yeah, few yeah. minutes, <laughs> he's back in the mix. Ooh, Jason Christie not quite getting it done offshore early, leaving that game, leaving that game, getting it done on boat docks. He has three really solid fish in his live well. But you heard Jason Christie talking about his calculator, knowing he needs two big bites, two big culls today to take the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, he thinks he can do that. He will hold the trophy at the end of the day. It <laughs> yes, is a trophy just, he has been pursuing for a long, long time it's and uh, almost had both hands on it a couple of times now. once on this lake. Toyota Midday Report, Jason Christie finally catching those five <laughs> bass. On this one got a little bit sketchy at about 1045. One of his better fish from the docks, though, Z. Yeah. That's the one of those deals. Yeah. It's not 100%. You're not going to land every fish from under those docks, especially on the cables at Hartwell. So he's he's not, he doesn't know about it, but he's uh, excited that they're starting to bite on the docks. Excited indeed. Somebody else that's a little bit excited, Kyle Welcher. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Slow morning for Kyle. Slow morning, caught his limits, but not able to execute on some of those big swim bait fish that we got to see on day two of this tournament. Kyle Welcher again tied with Christie to start the day. Yeah, one thing that was really weird talking to Kyle after the weigh-in yesterday was seeing with his yes, eyes, seeing wolf packs, wolf packs, two, oh, three, four, oh, five fish basically nose pointed at the bank and he said they are so incredibly hard to catch capitalized on two of those yesterday but we've seen him really bounce around a lot more today than we did on day number two Kyle Welcher made a great comment this morning we heard him say look I you know they always say, savor the moment, enjoy this day. He said, I'm too close to it. No way I'm enjoying this not day. Not at all. I am grinding hard. I will not be looking up all day long. He hasn't gotten the results he, he wanted yet, but he's getting closer, and things are starting to pick up for Kyle Welcher. Yes. And really, you just kind of got that vibe. If this tournament's going to be his, that swim bait is going to have to be a factor this afternoon. Got a lot of bites today. Oh my God, stay on. This one about 30, exactly 30 minutes ago. Oh my gosh. Stay on, please. Don't you do that. I can't wait to get my hands on you. Dude, I seen it sitting there, and I was like, is that a stick? A stick that bites? No, it wasn't on the bed. It was just suspended. Woo, give me some, dude. Yes, baby. Really the story of the morning so far. This man right here from Arkansas, Stetson Blaylock. It's been a one-two punch for him throughout this tournament. Doing a lot of winding, one to six feet of water, mostly main lake or island points. Oh, yeah! Big, big, large mouth today for Stetson Blaylock on a That's young dinger. That's what we needed right there, baby. That's one of them. Yes! Yeah, you can really see Stetson catching more of his fish today on the Yum Dinger. He told us that yes. he was catching a lot of these fish on crankbait with calm to zero oh. winds, but today it's oh, really yeah. been the pla soft plastics for him a little more. Yeah, we're getting. We 
talked about it earlier today. Looking at that Toyota midday report, really there's potential. Whoever catches the biggest stringer, possibly the biggest stringer of this tournament, could win. Stetson Blaylock right now pretty much one bite away from doing that. Yeah, once he put that second five-pounder in the boat, it's, it's obviously just one good bite like that, a five- or a six-pounder, and it would be very hard for anyone to catch him. Well, less than three hours for some of these anglers to fish left in this day. As day goes by very, very quickly. And, of course, we're looking forward to the uh, to the weigh-in. Uh, Dave yes, Mercer getting ready to hold court over there. As a matter of fact, I uh, actually want to show you some footage from, what? from the uh, – Bon Secours Wellness Arena. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are they what went? Hey, look at this. Look at the drone flying through there. I love drones. Check it out. It's a sick drone shot of the arena. Our Marshall signed it off on legal. it. It is legal to yeah. do that in the Bon Secours. Yeah. See, Today, everything, everything, everything going perfect. Insane. No need to worry about this. Everything worked just fine. Look out now. Until we Look get out. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my gosh. That's wow. great flying right there. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, and I would gamble oh. on that myself. <laughs> I don't know if a younger Dave Mercer would have done that. <laughs> oh, now. <laughs> Might have sounded like a younger Dave Mercer. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> Boom, well, check a lick Plenty, plenty of pageantry, plenty of hijinks, lots of fun, sound and fury coming up at the weigh-in. That starts at 3.30 right here on Bassmaster.com. First fish about 4.30, but that's a long ways off. And uh, for Stetson Blaylock, not long enough. Stetson wants that clock to run out as fast as it possibly so. can. Interesting to see how he has transitioned his day compared to days one and two. I'm catching them two, and I'm still need need. Yeah, it's been a, a really good day. I feel like I'm, uh, you know, at least putting up a good fight. I mean, that's all I could ask for. Got two of the right bites today. Feel like I need a couple more of them to, to really have a chance to win. And, uh, you know, the conditions are changing again. We've got strong winds now and it was sunny earlier. Now it's cloudy again. So it's, it's really hard to know what to keep running, even though I'm having a good day, I, I really want to do whatever I need to do to catch another giant. But being in contention, putting yourself in a in position where you have a chance, that's that's all you can do. And I'm, I'm putting in as much work as I can today to try to give myself a shot. I'll have to admit, I think this is all to he just wants to hear himself. He tell himself he needs a couple Whoa. more bites to put himself in contention. He knows he's in contention. There's no doubt. What's we, going on? We on got the, a. We got on. a. Ronnie, bring me in. We You're got a, a, a real life Stetson Blaylock on the right, and we've got a digital version, video what? game version. Did, that is the Dovetail Fishing Bassmaster 2022 video game. Did he and just launch up on a rock bass right there? He here? did like <laughs> on a swim jig. They just added in this game, they just added, look at the classic decal on the front deck of the boat. You can also play Lake Hartwell. They've got Gunnersville, St. John's River. They've got a lot of venues. And you know what? I'm, I, I've been known to catch some biggins on oh, there. I'm really bigger going. in the game than real life, I'm just saying. Like, who do you... Like I play as myself. Do you really? I, play, I put myself on the Elite so, Series Z. And so when the you classic. play yourself, you'll be a winner <laughs> either way, right? <laughs> Say, say it again. When you play yourself, you can be a winner no matter what. Yeah, right? exactly. If 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 the tournament only lasts an hour, I'll make it last two hours until I win. I will play. Okay. Okay. Right. So the lake, the lake, the lake might you. win. I mean, come on. Yeah, for a moment or two, you know, <laughs> but not gonna let it not gonna let it whoop me. Do you get to have a, a sort of a virtual avatar that's a, a representation of you yeah, on you there too? Yeah, you can customize. You can okay. customize it. They have Bassmaster, Pearl Bassmaster. Do you Bassmaster fish in your studio clothes on the video game? Uh, I do have a nice little <laughs> polo that oh, I wear sometimes. Do you, you know? talk? Do you talk to yourself and say Ronnie is going to catch one? <laughs> I, I look at myself in the mirror at the takeoff. Yes. <laughs> Back to Jason Christie live. All the wacky worm talk. I try whenever I see one though, I try to because they're so high that that jig, I just feel like that jig's gonna scare them. There's nothing over their head, like if, if he was under a float or something, I could use the float to. But 
hear Christy say saying that a ride and hide. I don't know. Whenever I, whenever I leaned down, I never saw him again. He came back up. He wasn't that big. But a lot of times, like I say, there'll be multiple fish, so. Remember, these two started the day tied for first place. Very rare here. I don't. We've never seen it at a classic. Not, no. not the ones we've covered. And they've. They had fallen way back just a couple yes. of hours ago. They were like ninth and tenth, but yeah. back up to second and third place unofficially. If you watch kind of the adjustment, though, that Welcher made and Stetson Blaylock so far today. Stetson catching a big one off of a dock. Kyle Welcher catching a real quality one before our midday break. A lot of people thought that this would be a game of adjustments, especially as warm as it's gotten today. Let's get back out to Justin Hamner in a place where it's likely going to look a lot windier than where we just left. Well, it's not as bad as it was. That's a big one. See a bass. Oh, it's a bass. I think it might be a stripe. It's a bass. Come to the back. Oh my God. Golly. Come on with it. This ain't over with yet. This ain't over with. Dude, they're everywhere down there. Get you some. How about this call? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Come on. Let's get some. Roll tide. Roll tide. I mean, that was a. Uh... There's that Mississippi <laughs> State. Dude, there oh, down this there. roll tide. <laughs> Enjoyed talking to yes. Justin yesterday. He said he's got a offshore spot in about 30 feet of water that he said if I could catch five, I could have 25 yeah. pounds off of. He was astonished he had not had yes. on days yes. one or two. Note that he has been light oh, on his bass track. Stetson, in my opinion, making a good adjustment with that wind building. He's back to throwing oh, yeah. the crankbait. That one just uh, moved Hamner from 19th all the way up to the top 10. Wow. Oh, now. Yeah. This is the back, if looking at Kyle Welcher, it's the back of a oh, yeah. ditch that he had caught a lot of fish early in the week. And you can see the surface of the water. He said it had gotten cluttered with, yes. with leaves and debris, and Dust. it really hurt hurt that area. A little one. Lee Livesey made that same observation. Is that, did Christie did too, did he not? Yes, this yeah. morning easy, he yeah. did. Easy, easy. Absolutely right. Lee Livesey was one of the anglers after the weigh-in yesterday talking to him. He said there is no doubt he's fishing a lot more off-colored water than anybody else in the top ten. Is He said there is absolutely fish spawning right now. No doubt. I'll tell you what we've not done all day long, and it's time for it. And this is what I like to call Such's wheelhouse. What?
a sponsor yeah, element what? called Phoenix Rising. Gotcha. Go ahead, Suge. Phoenix Rising. Taylor Smith from the nation, the second qualifier for the Bass Nation. From far off Spokane Valley, Washington. 15 pounds, four ounces today, rising up into our top 10 in sixth place with the Skeeter Boats Big Bass of the Day, a six pounder. You are Phoenix Rising. Did you just get two sponsor elements in one? I'm oh, talking about have... nailed it. Taylor oh, wow. Smith, big day today, and it's been all day long. Starting at 747, just a very solid day. Grieb. No, 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 no. The Phoenix Rising. Good stuff right there, Such way to nail it. Look at the carcass. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's right. That, that one's well seasoned. Yeah, it is. That's, that's right. That's that, right. It's going to look like that later tonight. When <laughs> <laughs> that looks kind of like your room service last night. Pretty similar. Oh, boy. Pretty similar. Oh, no, that's, no, why no. That, that's why it only took five minutes. Good uh, stuff right there, Phoenix yeah. Rising. Phoenix Rising, good stuff. Stetson Blaylock hanging on to that lead. It's been beaten into by Kyle Welcher and Jason Christie, our twin leaders at the top of the day. Aku Ito making, making some headway. Brian New trying to hang in there. Our day one leader, only man with 20 pounds so far this week. Got a lot more to come. Don't go away. 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Couple hours away from way in oh, time, yeah. the crowd starting to gather there. The Bonds of Course Wellness Arena in Greenville. You want a tight one on the last day of the Classic? Of course you and do. And there has been a crowd, my friend. Oh yes. my goodness, yeah. Big crowds here in Greenville. All the sound, all the fury, all the excitement here for the fourth time. Master Classic weigh-in happening here at the Bonds of Coors Wellness Arena. Oh, yeah. Man, there is much to see. There's, there is. There's that <laughs> there's right there. That. Go on, That's Hannah. Go on now. All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, welcome to the gun show. No doubt about it. Yeah. yeah all week long. Breaking it down for you right there. <laughs> That's all coming up. The big That's show right. starts at 3.30 right here on Bassmaster.com if you're in this uh in upstate South Carolina, you got time to get over here and make it. No charge for admission. So that's on the way. Again, 3.30, the show starts right here on Bassmaster.com, but we got fishing to do two hours of it with the top three within about two and, two and three quarters pounds. So a good tight competition, probably all the way till the end of the day. And every day, these yes. last two yes. hours have been the best two hours for Good coals, getting yes. rid of that spotted Great bass point. and putting a good large mouth in there. Okay. Yeah, bye. Taku has been catching a lot of his fish in standing timber and brush, and you could tell by the way he was holding his rod there, that fish was in timber. It's fair to say he has won the deep water tournament yes. here on Hartwell, and something we talked about earlier today, and Brandon Cobb brought it up. Brandon Cobb, one of the anglers, obviously the biggest favorite in this, but he said, man, I wanted cold weather. That would have totally helped Taku Ito, keeping those fish really grouped up deep. Maybe yes, maybe no. Okay. Maybe cold. Yeah. Little bit better one, I think. A few minutes ago, we saw big, big call from this Ooh. man from Alabama, Justin Hamner. Caught a big, large mouth, about a four pound upgrade for Hamner. A lot of fish on a Demiki rig this week. 
See, he entered that fish as a four pound, two ouncer. He it was, looked like it. Well, it'll help. Look how fat that thing is. Justin Hamner fishing all the way at, down to the dam, the clearest water in the lake, and this wind could really help him in these last few hours. And he said that every day I mean, of this tournament, he has caught a big, <laughs> large mouth out deep, but he's not been able to duplicate it. Your unofficial tournament leader, Stetson Blaylock, trying to get that crankbait going again. A lot of his weight on days one and two, even when it was calm, came burning that crankbait. So these these are the conditions you, you would, throw the DT6. You would These think. are the ones, I mean, he's, this is playing right into his hands. There's one. It's just barely, barely. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. It's barely hooked. I don't know if that's gonna help or not anyway. We'll see. Oh yeah, he's fat. Look at the belly on that one. You know, we talked about his big largemouth obviously being a factor days one Fantastic. and especially today. Dude, fast. he has caught some hammerhead mm -hmm. spots this week. Yes, he really has. I just think these are main lake spots that move it. up around these islands and m move up there to spawn, and they're just coming up from the main lake each and every day there again. No one else doing this something, that we've seen on camera. Something else that's really interesting about that that we haven't really talked about was a lot of the really – big spots that we've seen in this tournament, they've been pretty much about 10 foot of water and yeah, shallower. Baby. Yeah, you're exactly right. Right? You think about it. Those, you think about that. Those yellow, those pound and a halfers have been out there Absolutely. Robbie Floyd is out there with Stetson right now, our leader. And Robbie, let me ask you, I mean, mostly these guys have a sixth sense about where they are in a tournament. He's, he's aware that he's, if not on top, he's very close, right? Right, his sixth sense fired up just a moment ago. I, I pulled up to him. I saw what he was doing. I asked a few questions. But I said, how many people were on you? He said, well, there weren't that many. And then they started coming in. So I think he knows he's doing something special right now. But when I came up here, I saw him looking a lot. And I said, you look it or are you fishing? He said, well, I'm trying to find them right now. And look, he had, had a finesse ri uh, rod in his hand. But then he picked up the red crankbait. I asked him before he did that. I said, have you been throwing that red crankbait? He said, I haven't caught one on it yet. In less than one minute, he threw that crankbait. He said they were in about four foot of water. He caught a three-pounder, and that helped him by a half a pound. And you and I know this is a game of, of ounces, and a half a pound is a really good upgrade for him. And, again, he was looking at them, didn't necessarily find them, got out that crankbait, and I'm, I'm assuming he was digging up dirt like he told us before, and, and he actually caught one where he hadn't caught one all day that way. A lot of main lake points really from mid-lake towards the dam, a lot of island points in that same region. Robbie, you've been out there all week long, and this is very, very rare what I'm going to say right here. Have you seen anybody else doing what he is doing the entire week? Uh, not really. I mean, like right here, this little section with this rock coming off of it. You know, let me change that. Some of the stuff he was doing closer to the main lake, closer to the ramp, um, I saw him. He was over there near where Joey Nania was. Uh, today, Steve Kennedy was in one of those same uh, places um, doing some, you know, some of the deeper stuff, trying to get those spots. So, yes, there are other people that are doing it, but he seems to be doing it better today than everybody else. Again, Robbie, just like Z said, you've been out there all week. I haven't seen these kind of the wind blowing as much as it seems to be blowing now. You've, you've talked to a number of anglers just today. What are they saying? Are most of them saying, gosh, I really want this wind to blow, or no, I do not want the wind to blow this afternoon? Both ways, as it looks like he got his second fish there. I don't think that one's going to help him. I think uh, his next call is like a, a 212. Uh, both ways. And, and, you know, I came up here and I asked him about those docks and or where he was going, which side of the lake. He said it really doesn't make a difference. It, he's just looking at – 
You know how you kind of fish free and you say, oh, that looks fishy. I, I want to go throw there. That seems to be what he has in his mind right now. There's no set rhyme or reason or direction that he's going. He's just trying to fish the way that feels right right now. And I think you, sometimes you get stuck on history and, and things that you should do. He's just looking at it going, yep, there should be a fish there. And you just saw it's been in five minutes he's caught two in a row. Great job, Robbie. Thank you so much for being with our leader. Robbie Floyd is generally found on these days, especially the final day. Of yeah, the you know Master if Robbie Classic. is hanging around you on the final day, it's yeah. all good. Tommy. Yeah, it's, it's, all good. All good. it's all good. It's all smooth. Good. It's all looking good. But he's got to get this thing to the barn, and we're a long way from that moment right now. Plenty of fishing yet to come on Lake Hartwell. Got a very tight the top three anglers, and then all the rest in pursuit. Many more stories to tell before we're done. We'll be right back. What's going on guys? We're over here in the Academy booth with the VIP brands Igloo. And one thing that's really cool about Igloo, you guys are a staple brand in the cooler department and you have been for years and years. But now, being a part of the Academy team, you're in every store across the country. I'm with John, AKA Max Cold. I and he's going to break it down cold. for me. I keep things ice cold at Igloo. <laughs> so, John, it's pretty cool to be a part of the Bassmaster Classic. I mean, you guys are here activating. You've got all of your cooler brands. How many fans have came by and just been like, man, Igloo's iconic. I've missed it. And now I'm seeing you guys here, and I'm excited. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know count, but it's just been a steady stream since the opening door. Like, it's just been steady. And we love interacting with our consumers. I'm a product developer, product designer. Um, so I get to tell them about my product designs they ask questions I can show them things that they don't see in the store they're always giving you ideas like hey you should have thought of this have you tried that hey I love this so uh, being here it, with the Bassmasters Classic and Academy is just awesome well when we started this classic when we planned it last year we were probably thinking winter coats maybe some hand warmers and these anglers fishing this week are like I need a cooler on the boat I need ice because it's been 80 degrees a lot of these days but for for igloo to be across the country this brand I mean, Academy has been a big supporter of the Classic, and you guys being in every store, you guys, you mentioned it, you're like a couple miles down the road from each other's headquarters. We have a great partnership with Academy. Um, you know, we talk through the buyers, it's, hey, we're going to run over and see you on Friday, we'll have lunch, we have barbecue, um, it's a great collaboration with their buying team, so like, there's nothing gets by us. Uh, between their team and our team, it's a close-knit collaboration. That's awesome. Well, we're here in the Bassmaster Classic Expo, the final day, Championship Sunday. Sunday. It's going to be crazy and hectic, packed in here, and it's definitely going to be packed over at the arena. I'm going to throw it back to you guys in the booth. Hey, John, appreciate you. Igloo, thanks for taking care of us. Thank you very much. Max Cole. Yeah, John Ronnie Moore. Max Cole. John Max Cole. <laughs> Ronnie Moore <laughs> chilling in the <laughs> expo. And Tommy, yeah, real quick, I mean? you know it's a big day when you see the owner of Bass, Chase Anderson, right behind him. <laughs> just saying, right there. Hey, one thing real quick, real, real quick, is we talked about this on day, and this is for all you hardcores that have followed this tournament along. This is generally the time of year when that water warms up in a big way. They will leave chasing baits, moving baits, crank and plug, stuff like that. And you'll see them transition to soft plastics, to soft plastic stick worms on docks. And we actually made the comment, yeah, they're getting away from those moving baits and stuff like that. How Stetson Blaylock has made that work in some way, shape, or form. Granted, today he got a lot of work done with a young dinger, but he has made that crankbait work in conditions in a time of year where traditionally he should not. When when you hear the leader of the Bassmaster Classic say, I can't explain it, I really don't know why, Mark Frazier just told me, have faith in it, trust it, and go do it, and I did that, and he's done a great job at it. But, but I think as fishermen, we all want to see these fish moving up, getting on bed. Yeah, somebody saw right. one on bed, and there's still thousands of fish that are out deep just moving up. Stetson Blaylock didn't fall into and the dock rotation. He fished his own deal so far. This I'm tournament. sure he's pretty happy with the five-pounder, the one-bite dock bite that yes, he got absolutely. today. Yeah. It and, might be the fish that wins him the Bassmaster Classic. Absolutely. But after we interviewed Stetson on day one, he left the room. I looked at you. I'm like, that, that's never going to play by the end of this <laughs> tournament. So. Well, well, he did say if it does play, he's got a great shot at winning this thing, and that's what's playing out absolutely. right now. Got a big bass from Chris Johnston. We said the top 25 was separated by seven pounds. He was in 14th place, five and a half back. He got a five and a half pounder. He's up to fourth place. A couple more calls. He wow. started two pounds back of uh, Stetson Blaylock. 
Jason Christie fishing in his eighth classic, finished third here in 2018. Started the final day with the lead. Started the final day at the lead at Grand, Grand Lake 2016. Finished in second. So had a seventh place finish at Grand as well. Along the way, he is uh, his history and the classic history are intertwined yes. to be sure. The we thought coming into this morning, or I, I can say I thought, there's no way this can happen to him again. Having a great opportunity to win the Classic, and and it it's, it's far from over. This is the best time of the day for him. He's caught his better fish this time of the day. But it's, <laughs> man, you just can't believe when we saw what happened this morning, a creek that had hundreds and hundreds of fish in it, that this morning there were like just a few singles in there. He said after the first day, there's too many bass in here. And then this morning, only seeing a few fish, period. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about, if you're from anywhere else in the country, outside it feels like dead middle of spring out there today. Yes. I mean, it's just, but the, the movement of the fish, with, we correlate with that sort of weather. Sometimes it's not instantaneous. I mean, if it dawns a day like this, it doesn't necessarily happen that day, right? 100%, Tommy. And what we, we all forget as fishermen and fans or, or whatever it might be, these fish are cold-blooded. They, that water temperature is not so changing as fast right as the air temperature. The These fish are not adjust, adjusting to it quite as much. And it's just, it's, it's, we always want those fish to be up there on the bank. But, but oftentimes, just a small, small percentage of the fish do move up when the first warming temperatures come around. Stetson Blaylock hanging on to that first place spot. His we had an interesting situation. Somebody oh, tried yeah. to rush the set. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. He got rushed. Rush he got bum actually, rush. <laughs> he got, I think we're going to have him up shortly. Well, good. Good, good, good. People in the know are laughing behind us. Yes. Our stagehand just sent Johnny Our Moore. Our stagehand yeah. did out. a great job and shoot him off, but uh, we'll show you who he <laughs> hey, is in a they second. They had our back. <laughs> That's right. That's what counts. <laughs> Ronnie Moore, standing by. We are at the screen of knowledge. It's been a quite a few, quite a fun minute or two there watching Johnny Morris get escort, escorted off of our set. <laughs> it's got me totally flustered. My cheeks are hurting from laughing. But when it comes to Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, this is winding down the event. And the biggest thing we need to look at when it comes to the fantasy teams is not if your guys made the top 25. What it is is going to be who is in the lead. If you have Stetson Blaylock on your team, he was a pretty solid pick, but I had him high in the buckets. We put him in bucket A, bucket B, because he was going to be a contender this week. If you have two the winner minutes, of this event, minutes. you get triple points for Mercury Drain the Lake. That is huge for your team. For Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, you'll get bonus points as well. So keep an eye, keep an eye at the top of the leaderboard, not only to see who's our classic champ, but whoever wins this event, it's going to make the whole Fantasy League flip upside down be because of those bonus points. So guys. Stetson, Welcher, maybe Christy. There's a lot of guys watching uh, this final couple minutes and hours of, of fishing. Ronnie, we are running out of time. Yesterday, you said you gave yourself a passing grade of a C. Where do you put it at the final moments of this Bassmaster Classic, Ronnie? It will be an A if Jason Christie wins this okay. event. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm unbiased. <laughs> I'm okay Go on now. if any of the other guys win. Ronnie, but, for some reason, I knew you'd give yourself an A. an A by the end uh, of this if tournament. If Christie wins. If not, it's a C. It's a C plus, okay. a B minus. Good I'll be honest. It's I would love C to go minus. home with my report card to my parents. It would be an A if. <laughs> yeah, it would <laughs> be an A if. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the deal, folks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah. but that's, right that's the scoop on the fantasy fish. Fishing, and uh, I'm still a little scrambled about Johnny Moore. So am I. So am I. That was a weird, <laughs> awesome situation. The way Ronnie he Moore. just scooted off set was pretty funny. <laughs> Last word in fantasy. Ronnie Moore is over there also running a help desk. Uh, he's <laughs> People are stop, the, People walk by the say, hey, they say, I, I, I we need to get us some autograph. of that knowledge, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want Tommy's autograph. I want Davies and Zona. So I got to be the I got to be the buffer. I got to be the buffer. You need to get busy on Rapala Fantasy Fishing. If you're going to go fishing with us, I can tell you that. Well, that's the only way y'all will ever invite me to come fishing with y'all, so i got to earn it. I'm trying, okay? This is a better week. A better week. Stetson Blaylock. Ronnie's going to be leaving us here soon to what? go to the yeah, arena. Yeah, we're going to have show arena stuff, you know? Oh, my goodness. While you're over there, Ronnie, how often do you look at Bass Track? Uh, yesterday, none. I was a little shocked. I needed to look at it. Today, I will be paying attention quite a bit, for sure, at the arena. 
We got to interview some anglers, you yep. know? Yep. In the Academy Big Chair and doing, doing some other giveaways and stuff. You know how it is, stats and stuff. I think we're going to have a special guest here in a few minutes. I, I don't know that we've ever had a special guest that has been escorted <laughs> off of the set and then asked, graciously asked, to come back on. No, please come back. He came all the way up to it. You know, Christy and Welcher both only need 15 and a half pounds to catch Stetson Blaylock, and they did it both the first two days. Yeah, Christy. there's Z, I'll ask you, Davey and Z, was that four from Welcher? I mean, it, to me, it looked like a four. Close. Did it, it was it skinny. Didn't, it didn't look like a five. It was so, not. So it's going to be yes. more accurate than other four-pounders we've and, seen this And week. listen, Jason Christie has had a calculator in his head the last three hours. He has verbalized it. I know I need two bites. And this next 90 minutes with him is going to be uh, – it, it is critical there, that he gets honest, two bites. Honestly, the, the top – <clears throat> Two through fifth position, one good bite, not a miracle bite, one good solid bite, you know, five pounder, maybe a little more, and they take the lead. Stetson Blaylock with that lead hanging on as best he can the remaining two hours. Powell Welcher, Jason Christie. Chris Johnston moving up into the fourth place spot right now. Chris saw Takuido catch one that we believe was able to help him, but. Jason Christie, what he has to do to win after so many tries. I mean, I feel like for me to win, I have to make the dock bill work. The, the, the dirty water is just not, there's just too many people spinning around in that stuff. And these fish are grouped to size on these docks. So if you get on a dock that's got, you know, you catch a four pounder, chances are you're gonna catch a couple more around there or a five pounder. But, and uh, like I said, I'm just, I'm here to win, and that's the only way that I believe that I can win. He is your champion, ladies and gentlemen! Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Okay, I think I hear everything good. Thanks. The hours and minutes are clicking away here at the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. This is Championship Sunday, is. single most important day in the sport of bass fishing in Arkansas. Stetson Blaylock hanging on to that lead. He has spent most of today on top of that leaderboard. Kyle Welcher, Jason Christie started the day tied for the lead, something which is very, very rare. Man, oh man, we have got a lot more developments probably that yes. we're going to look at before this thing is over. And we have a special guest here. And, 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 and you know, we, we've been so blessed with great guests this week, pioneers in bass fishing. And uh, Johnny Morris, welcome, first of all. Did you ever get run off a, a, off a, a, a pond on someone else's property when you were a kid? Uh, you're getting personal now. I can't. But heck yeah, what fishman I'm hadn't. I'm sorry you got run off our set by mistake earlier, but uh, we're so happy to have you here. And you've been serving people who bass fish for such a long time. You fish, I, I've heard of a few places you haven't fished. Have you ever fished Hartwell? No, I have not. Okay. What does it remind you of as you take a look at what's been going on in this I classic? just, I tell you today, my main emotion being around this place is just, you, know, you think about what's going on in Ukraine right now. Yeah. And you think of the free, all, I've been coming to these classics for years, you know, and I just, it's kind of like how our whole business started was Ray Scott and Bass and going to the first tournament in 1970. And then to come here today and see these crowds, and especially the kids, the families that love this sport, and that we have the freedoms here today, and we're safe in America to come and gather like this and everybody have a good time. So we're very blessed. That's the main thing on my mind. Uh, you can't help but have it deep. Johnny, I'm not going to lie. When you ran through the set and our stage manager did not recognize you and shooed you off, the whole crew was screaming, no, no, please stop. He's a <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, what – we made a comment last year when we were in Texas, and we talked about it a little bit at that classic. Man, with what's going on, where there was lockdowns and stuff like that, what the first thing you said when you walked up to the stage was, this is absolutely awesome to walk into this building and see what you see out here. Yeah, it makes you appreciate our country and freedoms and, and a great sport, too, and people being happy and, and then – it's a beautiful day out there, too, for people that want to come in and 
meet their fellow fishermen and uh, fishing celebrities and heroes. And it's a flood of memories to me, I'll it's tell awesome. you, and happy times. Johnny, you mentioned being at the first Bass Master event back in 19. I guess at Beaver Lake you're talking about back well, in those days. Well, the first one I was in was 70 on Table Rock. On Table Rock, lake. just yep. up one, one lake up, yep. two lakes up, as yep. a matter of fact. Biggest changes you have seen in the sport since that time. I mean, here we sit and it's in these giant arenas and everything. The classic, classic weigh-ins have taken place in parking lots and little spaces through the years. What advancements we have seen. Yes, advancements, technology, but one thing's consistent. I think back in that first tournament, I remember when those that White River chain of lakes was built. You know, I'm a kid, and Table Rock was built when I was 10. And seeing that, that habitat that was created, I mean, we hated to see our favorite stretches on the river go away, but these reservoirs, and that's one thing till today that fuels this sport and all, all outdoor recreation to me is like, so much efforts for conservation and being mindful how do we manage our resources and have limits and i i just think ray scott you know he's one of the pioneers to support uh live wells and catch and release and uh taking good care of our resources and that to me is something we all fishermen can celebrate together as we care about the future. You know, when we had the St. John's River Tournament, which a, a, a body of water that you are absolutely passionate about, you're passionate about conservation of all waterways, but you texted us a few pictures, old school pictures, I believe was one was from 1974, and I made a comparison where I compared your wild eye for fashion, your wild eye for hair back then, <laughs> I compared you to, I think it was Justin Bieber, and you immediately texted me back, which let me know you were watching that. Tur Do you watch a lot of tournament competition? Uh, so right no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but now and then I catch it. I well, love it when I do. But it's 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 exciting. I mean, the advancements. You talked about advancements. Like one is the cameras in these boats, and to be able to to be there, it's like golf is head to head. This fishing now, the way you guys cover the anglers out there, it's like you're right in a boat with people. Did, it's did great. you ever see this coming? Ever? No, I mean a lot. It's it's great, and it. It's so captivating for people. It connects young people to want to come and participate. Then they need more gear, and I don't mind that. <laughs> Johnny, you, you make it your business to know what moments, what images connect with people who are into fishing and into the outdoors. Where does the Bassmaster Classic and all those great scenes we remember, all those magic moments we remember, where does that rank in your mind? Uh, it's deep in my heart, you know, and just I think a Ray Scott, what – as a single individual promoter of the sport of fishing and just a great character promoter. But I was thinking about coming here, how, you know, he used to charter a plane and host the qualifiers for the classic to like go to New Orleans, have a big dinner, and then get on a jet that he <laughs> chartered with the top 50 outdoor riders and seeing like you guys all the press. But he, he knew what it meant to get press to cover oh. the sport. And he was a master of that. So. And just the kidding around and the fun and weighing so many only 10 pounds of tackle and oh gosh it was but it was a mystery and a great excitement so oh, a lot of happy memories. A quick story We're watching Justin Hamner right here making a good push here in the last 30 minutes the night before you opened the Wonders of Wildlife Museum connected to Bass Pro Shops in Springfield. It was about 1.30 in the morning, and I was in there doing videos. We were doing videos for the big live opening the next day, and you walked through there with a notepad looking around. It's one of the most amazing outdoor museums I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm thinking to myself, what is he doing up at 1 a.m. in the morning walking through there? Do you ever, Johnny, get tired? I don't I, like, like to waste time sleeping. I, I noticed that. <laughs> right. Hey, guys, thanks for inviting me up here. Absolutely. I mean, I really appreciate it. I didn't intend to, you know, bum my way up here. I just wanted to net you and say hi off to the side. But thank you, and thank you for what you're doing. It's, it, it's a happy day. We Absolutely. sure appreciate it. We appreciate Absolutely. everything you do, Johnny. So Carry happy on. to have you here. Have a, good, right. have a good time the rest I of your day here. Wait gonna go shop and, and real real quick real real quick i um, got roland martin's autograph already. so you know blue dave's autograph so 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 you know you you are welcome to rush the Bassmaster live <laughs> set any day you want to do that hey guys one more souvenir i got to get both your autographs okay oh my goodness <laughs> thank you for having me <laughs> yeah I, I don't feel right giving Johnny Morris an autograph. I, <laughs> I truly do not feel right doing this. 
so great. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. There we go. That was the one of <laughs> I said something something very interesting could happen throughout this Bassmaster Classic and watching him come through you, the set was absolutely awesome. Was there you great. go, Tommy. That that's great. that's man, all I got. I'm speechless. That, that was too. fun. That was fun though. Man, so much of the what we know about bass fishing and how we've advanced in bass fishing, that person right there, responsible for so and much of it. I will tell you something else. When Johnny's done, he is done. Oh, yeah. When he is done up hey, here. I, I agree. <laughs> Sleeping, talking. <laughs> this is the, hold on. Hold on. Right, right. That—that that is the set manager, Lori, that kicked Johnny off of the set. <laughs> Bunch of Taku Ito. He's. Let's see if this one's going to be of any help to him. Currently, he's four and three quarters pound back of the lead. Oh, that was fantastic. I don't know, maybe no. <sighs> Gotta be over two pounds, three ounces to help talk there. Taku, he's gonna have to put that one on the beam most likely. Maybe not. Oh yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Again, talking to Ito in sixth place as we stand right now. Three. Yeah. He's back out to Justin Hamner. Another big. Boy, he is doing some late day work here on Hartwell. Uh, no. Yeah, deep Back bite. out again, yeah, deep. Deep bite starting to fire a little bit. You can see Taku's. He's casting at a bunch of these, though. A little bit good one. But I don't know. Oh, maybe help, maybe help. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, 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 okay, ah, oh, maybe yes, maybe no, maybe yes, maybe no, what do you think, <laughs> close, yeah, very, very fat, very, very fat. No. Blue and yeah. 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 Cool. Nice. It's nice. Beautiful. A little bit of help for Takami Ito back to our leader. Yes, yeah, Stetson Blaylock leaving his cranking gig out near the main lake.
Need one more big one. One more big one would give me a real good shot. Taku Ito definitely getting wow. bit. Uh, about every five minutes now. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. It's nice. It's a nice. It's a nice. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a nice. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh no. I don't know, but pretty good. Pretty heavy. And boy, he is not making big calls. It's about an ounce at a time. But if you look at that leaderboard, those are very, very critical ounces right now. But you get to a point where you think wow. even gaining an ounce, because he now he's got five beautiful spotted yeah, bass yes. in there. No, the one thing I was thinking no, when I saw Stetson just a minute ago. I need more. Wow. Avoiding the wind. Six. Looking at his forward facing sonar. As fishermen, yes. when you're throwing a crankbait all week and the wind blows, you're jumping in the windiest point. But he's avoiding it because your sonar, your forward facing sonar doesn't work as it's good when the front up boat. So, uh. I'm having a hard time just going and fishing docks because it hasn't been consistent at all. You know what I'm It's, it's changed our sport in a short period of time, just the last few years, but. Here we go. Dude, it don't even look like a bass. It's not. Chain pickerel. How about ah, that? Yo. The old Jack shows up for the party then. Exactly. Absolutely. You know? That's a fact, Jack. <laughs> That's right, Jack. How about a little striker day? <laughs> Absolutely, Tommy Perfect Sanders. Time. Perfect time. Anytime's the right time for striker. It's been a weird last trip. hour here on Bassmaster <laughs> Live. Kind of Indeed. How many different anglers have qualified for the 52 Bassmaster classics? Would that number be 596, 646, 696, or 726? Oh, yeah. yeah, just do the arithmetic. As Dave yes. Mercer says, it's simple arithmetic. That's all it's <laughs> going to take. Get yourself an answer, and we will be back. The 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook, is sponsored by Minn Kota, Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Rapala, and by Progressive. Final day of the classic. Striker Daily Trivia, we left you with this question right here. Let's pay it off right now. How many different anglers have qualified for the 52 Bassmaster Classics in total? How well, many have qualified? Yeah. Is it A, B, C, or D? You know, I was bored. I was bored in the production trailer during our midday break, and oh, I yeah? actually was thinking about that number. It's six. Uh, it's 696 C. Davey? Yep. I'm going to go with you. The only, now, the why only would you time go with this week I have not been correct, I went with you, but I'm going with you this time. I See, stand. six nine. I mean, from. I can't tell you. I'm saying 646. I think you guys are wrong. Such. Such we Tighten up, bud. Where, where yeah. you at, babe? I'm right here. Just simple math. You, you just simple add math. the 52 classics and how many qualifiers oh, are there? Simple math. Man, oh, simple man. Math. Simple, simple, simple math. Simple math. Double qualifiers and 32 time qualifiers. You get to that. Ah, I forgot about that. Nailed okay. it, baby. 
This is this is how you end the classic. Absolutely. Well, we've been watching Takuhito the last few minutes, really getting on a pile of beautiful spotted bass. Takuhito loves to catch spotted bass. How does he feel about largemouth, though? Think about that. I don't like largemouth. I don't like it. I like spotted bass, but today many, many largemouths. I will try to find the spotted bass, but oh, largemouth. I don't know why. I don't like large mouse, but today it's okay. Yeah. He doesn't like the large mouth. It doesn't does seem so. No, it doesn't. It does not seem. He's pretty fond That's of small mouth, I would think. Kind of sounds like yeah. he thinks the large mouth don't like him either. <laughs> Good. Tommy. And he is hooked up again. Let's get out to talk to live. him the last hour and a half. Man. We just thought he was. Uh, no, no, okay, now he's hooked up. Please come here. Uh Wow, very, very fat. Very, very fat. Man, having a banner day with those spotted oh, yeah. bass there. I think we're going to just nominate him for one of our important recognitions here the BMC On Point. Recognitions going to Taco Ito. You take a look at man, he has landed on a pile of them. Yes, he really has. He's won the Spotted Bass tournament on this particular day, no doubt about it. And maybe even for the entire tournament, he's had solid limits yesterday and today. Just crazy, incredible. Numbers. BMC on point, Taco Ito. How many waypoints? Secret waypoints did he secret have coming in? Secret waypoints from pre-practice. Taku Ito has 1,500 secret waypoints. BMC on point, without a doubt today. I mean, if this was a no, there no. comes Spotted Bass Derby. Taku Ito absolutely lighting them up. And you know, yeah, you just kind of man, one of those maybe. deals. If he had just kept it tight on day number one, could be right there. Many bluebuck herring is here and fish schooling now. So I think uh, I think uh, many bass, too much bass, too much bass. Knows Point how needs to retire, but how critical each and every minute is. He oh, doesn't boy. really want to take the time, but he's, he's doing the right thing here. You don't want to break one off. He's one big fish away. Unfortunately, probably one good largemouth away from leading this tournament. He needs to sign a treaty with those largemouth just yeah. for temporary. Just, well, just one of those like Gerald Swindle called on day one. Yes. Living in 50 feet of water, but just yeah, floating around happen. out there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me show you something real quick. Look at that screen right there. All, basically all spinning rods. <laughs> One bait caster on the whole deck of Too his much. boat. 
Too much blue bar carrying, too much bass. Yep. Oh my we heard, gosh. We heard that, but the reason he's saying too much bass, he wants to target those bigger fish. He yes. can see with his electronics and, and throw to just the bigger ones. And, and that's one of the things that we heard as we're watching Taco right here. Too much blue buck herring. What was that? Too oh. much blue buck herring. Oh, a little bit better. And that's one thing that we heard this week when you or no. would see groups of fish see. suspended offshore. They were not the big ones. It was the lone rogues. The lone fish were the biggest ones. Or just you know, two or three in a group, not, not yes. hundreds yes. like you've heard some people talk about. That's when they seem to be one to two pounders. Mm -hmm. No. Catch Blaylock, he needs one cull, a seven pounder, or a couple of five pounders, or four pluses. High fours. Taku does? He said yeah, four he's, back? He's four or five back. He's got a 210 as a small fish. Taku Ito just trying to chip away, chip away, needs a big one. Absolutely, as do most of the anglers in our field. Even our leader, Stetson Blaylock, could do with a big one. Robbie Floyd still standing by. What's the, have you taken his temperature lately? What's he, what's he feeling like at this point? Well, Davey was talking about how he was in the calm just a moment ago, getting out of that wind. He came back out here and went right in the wind, pulled up to this bank on the backside. I don't, it looks like an island. Either way, it's a point um, and caught one, either first or second class with that red, red cast with that red crankbait. So I asked him, I said, have you caught any on this spot before? He said, haven't been here at all. So he's trying new stuff, trying to duplicate what he's been doing on other parts of the lake, and it worked. It wasn't a cull. It was like almost dead on his uh, smallest fish. So he needs another three-pounder to help him a few ounces, but it gives you a good feeling when you pull up to an area or a spot you haven't been to and catch one on the first cast. Robbie, you are a red flag for anglers on the final day of the Bassmaster Classic, especially if you're hanging with them the last couple hours. Do you think Stetson kind of knows that he's in the driver's seat? I I don't know about the driver's seat, but I think he knows he's got a good chance of winning. Whenever I show up at the end and I'm trying to see the thrill of victory or the agony to defeat. And, and right now he's doing everything right. So I think he knows that he's right there, at least on the bubble. Um, but again, he's got two fives in there. If he had three or four fives, I think he'd feel really comfortable. But he knows he still needs to catch one because the field was so tight. Somebody could make that big jump. I, normally in the Classic, you wouldn't have thought that until Edwin Ebers caught that 30-pound bag that one day. And the size of the fish that they know are out there, they know anything could happen. So he's not going to be comfortable until he gets over that 20-pound mark, which he's probably hovering at right now. Yeah, so, Robbie, we, we've talked about Stetson as fishing Untouched water, basically. We've not seen anybody out on these islands throwing yep. red crankbaits, that sort of thing. Now that the wind has picked up, have you noticed some of the anglers or some of them leaving those calm pockets, fishing the docks, and, and getting out in that wind or no? No, and I'm glad you, you brought that up because earlier you were talking about, hey, have you seen anybody doing that? I saw people in those areas that Stetson was fishing, but he's the only one I've seen doing what he's doing as far as staying out here throwing the red crankbait. I did talk to Hank Cherry during practice, and he thought that was going to be one of the keys to his victory in some dirtier water. This is definitely not dirty water, but he thought that he needed to throw that red crankbait along the along the bank with the, you know, with the red crankbait, and he said that's where he was getting his bites. But the longer it got, when things started clearing up, he didn't catch them. So it's kind of ironic that when Hank couldn't catch them that way, that's all that Stetson's been doing, and he's been hammering them. Robbie, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Keeping us updated on our leader right now. Leader to start the day, of course, this man, Jason Christie. Still got some ground to make up. With a one-pounder, three pounds, three ounces back, it's one bite for Jason Christie. Yes. Yes. He's got a is has he got one in there he's calling one even or one Yeah, and it's probably not a one. Yeah, but one even and a one twelve. Yeah, he's one. Here we go. That's the other one I saw.
Certainly bigger than a one pounder. Absolutely. And I must say that one looked not much bigger than one pound he just released. Gosh, he's one bite. Hey, you know, the other really strange thing about watching what he's done, he's dedicated. Let's call it. God, I thought that was a begging for a little bit. 70% of his time fishing boat Probably. docks. He's pulled the trigger a lot the last three days with us on camera. What are What is the law of average? Pitching a jig on boat docks on this lake yeah. that you don't connect with one of those giants. I mean, yeah, we've seen I mean, him catch a four pounder. We've seen him catch a four. Yeah, but you're, you're right. He's, but a four would put him in the lead right yes. now. He doesn't need a giant. He just needs one of those that, like you say, the law of average tells us that before three o'clock, he will have the opportunity. But you hear, you hear anglers like a Brandon Cobb that once you get that opportunity, you got to put it in the boat because it's, you're not going to get those four and five pound bites one every hour. You'll have one or two a day. And Stetson Blaylock has had them and put the two in the boat. Jason Christie needs needs to get that bite, and I wouldn't bet against him and, and just put it in the boat. See, he threw back that one pounder. They put that one in as a two pounder. You think it was a little bit bigger, maybe? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Put some two pounds, three ounces back. Two and a quarter. And Kyle Welcher's smallest fish? Two. Two, two even? Oh. On uh -huh. Bass Track. That's, Boy, that's the three box. Yeah, that is you, the you, three box the really next is. hour. Yeah. You, uh, it looks like Stetson, he's had the lead most of the day, but he is on razor's edge of not having that lead. Yes. Stetson has led since 8.01. Come on, big bass. I'm sorry, Brian New took it back an hour later than Blaylock took it back at 9.30, ah. I'm sorry. Incomplete notes. This, it's this is really amazing, you watch Taku. Oh. Would he like to check, trade Jason Christie like five of those two and a quarters, two and a halfs <laughs> that he is not using at all for one of his four pound large right. mouth? I mean. out to Justin Hamner. Home Lake, Lake Tuscaloosa in Alabama said it was great education because tournaments are won with about eight or nine pounds. Right. Oh, usually. Man. Oh my gosh. Boy, the wind has really helped him this afternoon. Mm -hmm. We are down to the final hour of fishing. Saw that he missed a fish or two before he hooked up with that one. So often it'll be a small group and those smaller fish will bite first. And you think it's unfortunate, but a bigger one will bite second or third. And maybe it'll work out this way for him. Look at that. Dang, I thought that was a big large mouth. Still in the spot. Well, 
We got an hour, Suits just said, an yep. hour of fishing time left on this final day of the Bassmaster Classic, and it's, uh, I'm not calling it right now, oh. no way. <laughs> Absolutely very tight, especially those top three, four positions, really. Chris Johnston has joined the fray. Justin Hamner not too far behind. Any of those guys could make a big explosion. Could disrupt this thing in a big way, but for now it is Stetson Blaylock as it has been. 99% of this day on top. He's doing what it takes to stay there. Said yesterday when we were on Fox Davy Height, you made the comment. This one would go down to the last hour and still there are several, several anglers that are one bite away from Stetson Blaylock. T totally agree, totally agree. And I don't think it's going to do anything but tighten up a little more in this last hour. It's awesome. It will be an incredible way in this afternoon. Yeah, in about an hour's time, these uh, anglers will put them on the trailer and head to our fantastic host city of Greenville, South Carolina. And there we go, this beautiful place which we love to visit. A visitor's paradise and a great place to hold a world championship of bass fishing. Greenville, South Carolina. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Final hour of fishing on a day which every competitive angler dreams of making it to. The final day of the World Championship, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook. This has been a really one of the better ones in my Absolutely. opinion. It's been great, great competition all the way through. Good, solid fish catching. A lot of different techniques, different ways to get the I job done. I think that's done. been the biggest story right there as we talked about it. The great thing about Hartwell, especially, I want. I mean, I've loved the cold water tournaments we've had here, the cold weather events. This has been fantastic as far as diversity. Yes, diversity from one foot of water all the way out to 50 feet. It started out great, and sometimes turn, these tournaments start out great and then slow down by day three, they but suck. it has been great uh, throughout. Right. Justin Hamner. Worked his way all the way up to fourth place. Gosh, he's got oh, a, a solid big... limo spotted bass. Mm -hmm. See if this one helps him. You gotta do this again. No, he ain't gotta do that again. Yesterday's bass track had four two pounders and one four pounder, 12, and he ended up with 16 10. <laughs> we, it's been an issue all week long, man. <laughs> this has been. Some guys are proud. They don't want boaters getting near them. I will say it. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Bass track is yeah, eerily similar to my brother-in-law. He's cool, but I don't trust him, man. <laughs> I just <laughs> don't. Wait a I don't. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> ah, you see, wife say it's the devil. <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't that far, Such. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not your brother-in-law. Bass oh, track. He <laughs> <laughs> <Make a> store. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I still got time. Justin Hammer, knowing he's still got a chance, and absolutely he does. He said Happy. we still got time right there, and absolutely. he does. You're right. That boat, right on both counts. He's got 15 pounds, seven ounces today. He's three, five back of Stetson Blaylock's estimate, Shoot. estimated weight. And I'll tell you, before Stetson Blaylock went off in this tournament, this morning on FS1, all eyes were on Luke Palmer. When he caught that big one, you're like, ooh -hoo, you got a lot of time, Jack. And it's slowed down. Going to get back up to Kyle Welcher, like Jason Christie. One big bite away. A four-pounder away. Big, I think. It's a helper. Oh boy. I promise you that. God, please get in this boat. Please get your big tail up in here. Don't do that. Oh. Come here and do this real one time. 
Yes, sir. Uh-huh. That no help. We getting a little more dangerous. All right, I guess I'm going to uh I don't really know which one's the uh, smallest. I don't know for sure it ain't that one. And I know for sure it ain't that one. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. we almost saw that other one. That would yes. have been great to see that other fish. He has a two pounder in there. You saw that graphic. He'll gain something out of that. Maybe it'll be enough to take over the lead. Maybe not. We talked about it this morning. We talked about it last night. Starting with a tie going into day three, surely you wouldn't end up with a tie. Go but on man, now. now. Go on now. Go on it now. It is getting very, very close All to All right, that. so we have to talk about that real quick. We don't want to talk about that. No. If there is a tie, it would get settled in sudden death tomorrow morning out at the lake the first keeper will decide the Bassmaster. Let's not go there. Would you like to see that? Would I? Know? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. All right, let's take a look at the fish he finally released. Uh -huh. Oh. Dude, that's hot. What was that one supposed to be, Such? His smallest one was supposed to be? 2-0. Uh, that fish was better than 2-0. Don't you agree? Go ahead, Such. I'm sorry. And a 2-6 and a 2-8 in his... Uh, Estimations there. Let's look at both fish side by side. Oh, that's not a two pound upgrade, I don't think. No, that was his two smallest. Oh, that, okay, that was his two smallest. All right. Wow. Came he may have way yeah, more he, than we think. He wasn't showing what an upgrade it was. He was showing he was looking like this one or that one. So I'm saying his smallest fish now is 212. Look like to me. A pastor X says 26 is. Don't, yeah, that's, don't trust Pastor oh That's not the devil. Yeah, now, so that's, yeah. That, now we're getting <laughs> <Yeah>. close. Oh boy. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't see it good, but he acts like it's going to help him. It jumped. It might help him a little bit. That one's a little skinny. He is one of the most by the seat of his pants. Yeah. Gerald Swindle style, yeah. just all over the map as far as what he does. Even more than Gerald. Yes. But yes. you're right. It's a good comparison. Yeah. Last fish winning is a three pound, 12 ounce. He's three ounces back on best track. Oh, 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 oh. Monday morning shootout, Z? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> Hey, and I want to tell you something. One of the things to really highlight a couple things that we've seen today, you heard a lot of people coming into this tournament that you were going to have to, in some way, shape, or form, adjust each day of this tournament. You saw Stetson Blaylock really start the event winding. I think that's a big one. Went over to a young dinger. You looked at guys like Kyle Welcher. Most of his damage yesterday, the bulk of his damage, a giant glide bait, a big swim bait, transitioning yeah, today, catching a I few of his big ones on docks. I think it is. The, the story that we talked about earlier in this event, you could not stick to one thing. Look at that, Z. Huh. Pretty sure it is, dude. I just skipped that right in front of his nose.
I mean, I, I so, just got one right on his nose. I mean, I know that. We've seen Stetson with a spinner rod in hand. He's really good. He popped that dock three times. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, the, it's, final the, last day. Hour. it's, it's the, the last final day, the final hour of the Bassmaster Classic. I would be in the same oh, situation dang, more than likely, but. That's a great shot. Great camera work there. I mean, All it's right. just the fish that you're pretty sure will win the Bassmaster Classic for you. I don't know why. I'm, <laughs> I'm not why you would out. hit the pole oh, if I, he no, hit it again. No. I am not going to call out any of our Phenomenal Bassmaster Live cameramen oh, and women. But they're starting to calculate what Welcher has in his boat. There's some other ones that are calculating. Look, the cameraman or woman wants to be in the winning boat. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Just can tell out, you, man. Kyle Welcher's cameraman, I who I do a lot of work with, he's like, he's better than 15-4. He's better than 15-4. Okay. Can you believe this? That's a bass. That is the bass. So Stetson saying that's not a bass. That's well, the bass. We just basically said the same thing. Give him the meat. This isn't how he got where he's at. Right. He one of his five pounders, granted, but. This is the rabbit hole that another divider in there. Some great down. anglers chased yes. for two days. And I mean, it is boat dock weather right now. Dang, that's the one. Just ain't hungry. Yeah, he's big, four pounds. Just don't think he wants to eat. I mean, I know that's the fish right there. Dude, he just don't want to bite, man. Interested in how much time he spends on this fish. Yeah. I saw him look at his watch just a few minutes ago. I just don't know if you slap the dock four times and then get one in front of it for a big fish like that. I right. mean, how many baits has that fish seen this week? And we've talked to a lot of anglers that have said the first cast is so yes. critical on this lake, on these docks. Stetson Blaylock says it's definitely one he wants. Four pounder, he, by his estimate right there, could make a big difference for him. Kyle Welcher, we think, wow. may have more weight wow. than our unofficial bass track number would suggest. Man, it is so close. It is so close right now. And Welcher, he's a guy, he, since day one, he said, I have the potential to win this tournament. I may have to go a lot of places to get the right five. I'm going to do it. It's going to have to be a string of good ones. I'm not, I don't have any one place where I can, you know, I just decide to go here and then catch five. That's going to be enough to win the Classic. I'm going to have to pull up on most likely five different spots and catch them on probably three or four different baits. That's just the way I've been fishing. So we're going to have to make quite a few good decisions to win this one.
coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. I guess the last day of the Classic should be a nail biter and that is what we have got right here with time running out. Getting into the last 40 minutes or so of fishing time for the 25 anglers who have made it thus far. Wow. And look how close they are right at the top of the leaderboard between Stetson Blaylock, who's held on to that lead most all day. Kyle Welcher, who started with it, fell way down out of it, ninth place. And has worked his way back. And uh, those are just estimated weights as well. So, wow. So, wow. Stetson Blaylock working on a dock fish that he is seeing, one he wants, trying to get it to bite. I have a right to be a little bit. I said my nerves are shot just trying to make these casts and all. Yeah, I know. I'm digging. I don't think it was that good. You just talked about it, Z, but Kyle Welcher is. <laughs> I mean, he's been fishing brush piles 30 yes. feet deep. Yes. He's been fishing drains. He's been nice fishing some docks, big swim bait, no glide bait. It's just all been over the map. all over the map. Yeah, he really just for if you're just tuning in with us, it's one of the things we didn't talk about is he really started this event fishing deeper brush piles outside of major flat time. spawning pockets said threadfin shad were the key, not blueback herring. Yep. Went to a big swim bait yesterday, and wouldn't you know that he's going to end this tournament dock fishing. <laughs> uh, not, not, not the three-prong approach that we thought we'd see. I had never thought about it, though, until I read his profile. A lot of experience on West Point Lake. This lake looks so it much does. like West Point, it's not even funny. The lake's only like not even quite four tenths below full pool. You look at the banks and you think, man, this thing is three, four feet low. West Point looks the exact same way. Not a lot of cover in the water. Boat docks. It's set up the exact same way for Kyle Welcher. Red clay. Yep. Spotted bass, <laughs> a few largemouth that right. you need to win. Steve yeah. Kennedy, when we were there last, I guess, you know, was able to catch those few big largemouth. Just going on every dog. Let's get over to David Did Mullins, check that? in with him. Did you see that? <laughs> wow. He pulled it off. He wow. he pulled it off the freaking he got it unhung for me. He, he got it unhung for me, Seth. Look at he just barely got hooked. I cannot, that's, that's the, the most amazing thing ever. Tough day for David Mullins. God, he's just barely got it. Just barely got it. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's a nice one, too. Did, I mean. What just happened? What just, that just happened? <laughs> I mean, it, would people believe it if we told them? You, uh, you know what I'm saying? I could just see his little fin going. It was, I was like, it's hung. No. <laughs> well, here is your story right now. Stetson Blaylock, Kyle Welcher. Kyle Welcher is moving every time yes. we see him now. He is he knows. feeling it. 
And he did say yesterday, he said, 14, I got a prayer, 18, I think I'm going to win. He did, huh? That just wasn't meant to be right there. I mean, I threw all around him. The first few casts, I hit this dock and all, but he didn't care. He sit there, I threw it right by his nose about three times. I don't know, kind of weird. Just checking in on the classic on this Sunday. Take a look at first and second place. At how close these two anglers are. Definitely will not be settled until the weigh-in. I remind you the weigh-in coming up right here on Bassmaster.com, starting about 3:30. Uh huh. First fish about 4:30, all Eastern time. And the we talked about it. But the 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 tie thing has become realistic. Yeah. <laughs> the devil, you mean? <laughs> it, 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 we don't it, want the it, tie. It, it, is, it has become realistic. Reway. Reway. No. We are down to the final half hour of fishing. All 25 must check in by 3 p.m. at Green Pond. <laughs> mm. What? I mean, it's just one bite, man. It's all that stands between me and that trophy. I feel like, I feel like a five pound, four or five pounder would do it. Well, there's about four or five people that a four or five pounder would do it for. Absolutely yeah. incredible. What a day. What a tournament. Still far from over, yet there is not much time left. One more striker daily trivia for this special day in the world of bass fishing. Here it is with Hawaii native Matty Wong. Ah! Classic. How many states have never had a qualifier? How many states have never had a, that's a good question that's right a there. darn good question. Think about that for a little while. A wise end, so think about it. How many have not been in the Classic? What states have never had a qualifier? We'll be right back. The 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Berkeley. Less than half an hour's fishing time for these 25 anglers on the last day of the Bassmaster Classic. Striker Daily Trivia, last one of the day. It's about these here United States, Hawaii native Matty Wong in the Classic. How many states have never had a qualifier? Is it one, two, three, or four? I put it to you, Mark Zona. I go two. Two. 
Davey Hyde? Uh, I'm going C3 because Alaska and North Dakota I know are two, and okay. I've got to be missing one or two. Correct. I'll, just, I'll just go over. I'll take the over at four. See how that works out. And your answer is three. Ah. Wyoming. Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming. Wyoming. You've been on fire this week, dude. That's boy, you have. You really good. have. You really oh, have. I like trivia. Oh, I know yeah, you do. I like trivia. You're so fast fishing you go, trivia. You built up your game. You've been eating beef, I think. <laughs> I like bass fishing trivia. Incredible scenes, incredible photography this week at a beautiful place, Lake Hartwell. And a visual feast to be sure, and competition that is absolutely off it's been the an awesome chain. tournament. Absolutely awesome. Of all the like I said, man, we have we have covered some grimy cold oh, weather boy. tournaments on Lake Hartwell. It uh it is a very, very dynamic, diverse fishery when that water temperature spikes. Very cool to cover one here as it was warming and not seven degrees. And I'll be yeah. honest with you, when Brandon Cobb won in April, that was a good tournament. Yeah. It's just so much diversity, so many different ways to catch them. And with Kyle Welcher, we've seen about three fourths of the different ways, fishing all the different depths and all the different baits. But don't count this guy right here out, Jason Christie. One five pounder, or maybe just that even short of that. Uh, He's that back in there. Absolutely do it. So if just, even if there's a three way tie, we still fish tomorrow. No, nope, it just I, we'll just wait till next year. I don't know how <laughs> I don't know how any of this works anymore. Today. I don't, don't want to know. I hope I never have to. Know. I got a feeling Jason Christie is not going to finish three pounds out. Not saying he's going to win, but I just think he's going to make another call. He's done it every day around this yes. you know, in the last hour. Both he and Welcher are very close to Green Pond. Welcher is on the east shore. Christie's across the lake, so they're not very far away. They got the most fishing time left. Which ain't a lot. <laughs> exactly. No, sir. That's right. Davey, I'm thinking you in your career at, at one time have been this guy right here. Young angler, a lot of promise. Tons of skills, great mind for, for bass fishing and a competitive spirit. What does it mean to him? He wins the classic at, at this point in his life. Oh, it means everything. I was in the same situation just three, three or four years, almost the exact same amount of time fishing Bassmaster events. And I finished second and in the last hour, I. Truly had thought I, I was going to win because a lot of boats came to me. All two of the three camera boats back then. Um, oh, I was I, I knew it was, I knew it would be life changing and and, and I, it's life changing at any point in your career. And, and Jason Christie knows that Greg Hackney knows that. But for somebody as young and intelligent and just, you know, it's, yeah, he's smart. He is yes. smart. The more you talk to him, the more you yes. realize oh, yeah. he, he is. He's he, a calculator. Absolutely. Yeah. He's always processing. And I'll, I'll tell you, you know, you heard Lee Livesey yesterday say it is not about the money. It is about that trophy. I think look, Kyle Welcher, it is about the money. Yes, oh, the sure. money and the trophy. Absolutely. It's a lot of money. <laughs> absolutely. And you've been Stetson Blaylock when you won your first classic. You, I would say multiple championships in different. Yeah. That, so Differently, you felt both sides of it, I guess, and, and thank you, Tommy. But it, it's, it's life changing either way. It's life changing either way, and uh, it's going to be great for our sport. Any of those top anglers that have a chance here right now would be great for our sport. Yep, um, it, it, it really would be. And and it's but this is really bizarre. But Stetson Blaylock is a man child. He's done this a long, oh, yeah. long uh, Yeah, he's time. youthful. Yes. He is yes. youthful, but man, he is 34 been, years yes. old. Top level for you a know, long time. It's a dude that started as a co-angler, went from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. Tommy, do you remember Stetson being in studio with us when he came back fishing the Bassmaster Elites? His first season was not him. He, he didn't qualify for the class. He said, this is not me. Yeah. I'm oh, a better yeah. fisherman Absolutely. than that. And yeah. I mean, that takes some, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. just playing out that yes. wasn't me guys it, you're not going to see that out of a, me anymore and we have it he had a period of adjustment yes. he sure did
You were talking about a little earlier the the cameramen in these boats they they become a team with the angler they Absolutely. they're pulling for the person they're in that boat with Without it's a team a it's a team event to them and Without that's really cool i think Cameraman Brian Evie in Kyle Welcher's boat. He's, I works on full time on the Zona show. Brian likes to be in the boat that the winner's in. Yeah, no doubt. He takes a lot of pride in that. That's great. Brian likes the fish, too. <laughs> Seeing that wacky rig Cinco there, uh, Brian had used a couple packs of those Cinco's out of my right. boat, I can tell you. Exactly that right. right. <laughs> yeah. Brian didn't mind when I pull the plug on a show and have a crew day, if you know what I mean. <laughs> They'll go through some tackle, won't they, Z? <laughs> Two Alabama anglers in our top ten here to start this day. God, freaking waves! Freaking hot. Kristen Hamner tells us, and I'm sure Kyle would too. You can find so many different kinds of lakes, so much different water, now to to match up with these places you're going to be going if you're a traveling professional angler. I don't, I don't know if you can find any herring lakes, but, uh, you know, you can you Well, can I got close. a bite, but I don't know what it was. Probably a crappie. Lanier, similar to this lake, with yeah. a lot of herring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Comes yeah. to mind. That's right. Come on, biggin'. And really, it's something we didn't even talk about. Front-facing sonar has equalized a blueback herring lake. Sure. You know what I mean? It, the biggest mystery on Earth is a suspended bass that li lives his life chasing clouds of bait. It, 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 to just say, I'm going to go chase a herring bite without front-facing sonar, you always need it to be near a hump, near a, near yeah. a something. Yeah. You don't need to be anymore. Right. I guarantee you when Taku Ito went off today, those fish were not relating anywhere yep. to cover. Yep. And even Jason Christie, the first two days he was starting and he was catching some fish that weren't far away from one of those right. docks, but those docks had nothing to do yes. with those fish. Those are bass in years past that would never see a fishing yeah. lure yes. the entire spring. Yep. Unless you had a backlash and you threw out the <laughs> left side of the boat. We need us one. Tommy, what do you think Justin Hamner's uh, teacher would give him for a grade on his paper on bass fishing <laughs> nowadays? Well, I, 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 in retrospect, it'd be an A plus, wouldn't it? Yeah, his first classic, maybe a fourth place finish, thirty thousand dollars. He told me he was so nervous on day one in the morning, he was throwing a bait that was supposed to be on the bottom, and he realized it was near the surface, and he sat down and ate something and relaxed, and then he caught his big first fish, about a five pounder. Said if he wins, what do you, what do you think he's going to buy if he wins, Suge? New skateboard. No, no. <laughs> truck. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, of course. He's, he's, got, he's got a truck that needs replacing, I think.
I don't know. You, you look at these, and I'm just the top five's on my mind because they are literally one decent fish from winning. Every one of them, Stetson, Kyle, Jason Christie, Hamner. Christ, I mean, you just go, Taku, would be great stories. Oh, there's great, no I doubt. I mean, you can't no. help but pull for every one of them. Come on, fish. Great stories. Need a new truck. Yes, need a go new up. truck, sure. Stetson Blaylock's been such a Probably great fisherman for so fast. long. Jason Christie, for every reason in the world. Finish right the business. Finish business, exactly. Mine's just somebody else who finished second four times. Classics. Get back yeah. over to him right now. Last few minutes of fishing. Jason Christie. Oh. Right on the other side of Stetson Blaylock. They're all getting closer to check in. Could you imagine if somebody came over that hill and yelled, Stetson's got 20 pounds. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh -oh. Here oh. we go. He's over the cable. Get over there. Get over there. He's done this a million times. Oh. Oh my gosh. Well. Definitely help him. Did you see that hook set? Yes. I mean, he's, oh my God. he's got a good hook set, but. Yeah. He made that fish feel his lash. <laughs> Smallest fish. Bigger than those other two. 112? So, oh, that's a, yeah. That's a pound I, I upgrade? It's bigger than the other two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't want to make a mistake, but time is ticking away. Yes, yes. My yes. gosh, needs to get back in there. That's why he's saying, dang it, he knows how precious every minute is right now. White goes. How much time we got? Oh, we got time. That fish freight is line. Right. Not taking time to retie. Got another one ready in the box. one here yesterday. Yellow pine pollen on the mm -hmm. water in the backs of these pockets. That was not there a few days ago. Absolutely. Things are popping. Not the time for this. Oh, no. Well, he's having a time right now, Andy. Boy, talk about a cliffhanger. This yes. is this is one of the truly is. The cavalry is on its way, but will it make it on time? One of those kind of situations right there. Stetson Blaylock. Well, Bass Track says he's got the lead right now. Kyle Welcher very, very close. Call it statistically a tie as we stand right there. Not a real tie though. Yeah, no. Jason Christie, Justin Hammer to Chris Johnston. We are running out of time. Final day of the classic. He is your
champion, ladies and gentlemen. Live coverage of the 2022 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented by Hook is sponsored by Toyota. Out of fishing time, one of the best nail biter. Oh, excuse me, all but out of fishing time. One of the, I can't, I've been biting my nails. I had to get my microphone out of the way. One of the best nail biters we've had yes. of all time. We will not know the answer to who wins the Bassmaster Classic until we get to the weigh-in. And there's actually still a few minutes that we're, we're kind of pulling for somebody to, to catch a thumper to pull. Oh, well, yeah. And, yeah. And this is one of those weird classics. I have no idea what is going to happen in two hours. No, I don't either. And honestly, there's three people right now that might be tied. We don't know which one's ahead, and there's still Ooh. fishing time left. As close as they are to Green Pond, the check-in site, there could be another catch or two. Absolutely one of the most diverse Bassmaster Classics we have had in many, many years. And kind of an underdog. You heard a lot of anglers say, man, I just want to be within a couple pounds of the lead. Stetson Blaylock starting the day down in sixth place. Winding a plug, throwing a yum dinger, the power pole replay of the day. By far, today, Stetson Blaylock not catching only one, but two big largemouth. Such, do me a favor. End this thing, my friend, because I'm going to throw Stetson it to you. Stetson Blaylock of Benton, Arkansas, an Elite Series winner. Two five-pound fish on Championship Sunday, the Bassmaster Classic. You the marathon peak performance. Exactly right, ah, Suge, from 8.01 wow. all the way to 105. Very, very solid day, and we literally have it right now is virtually almost a tie. And Tommy, I'm gonna tell you some, David, we have covered a pile of classics together. Absolutely one of my favorites I have ever sat up on this desk. Oh, absolutely, great 100%. Crowd, great lakes, 100%, yeah, the crowds have been incredible. The fishing, the best we've ever seen it at heart. Well, I think, do you do you yeah, agree, Davey? Uh, absolutely, I mean, from start to finish, the fishing has been great. It's been so diverse, like we've said, from one foot of water to 50 feet, and then the expo. Oh, man. Oh, usually like Thursday, not quite as big a crowd. Thursday, Friday, excuse me, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday has been a packed house here. Still yeah. wall to wall. They'll start filing out uh, minute by minute to make their way to the Bon Secures Wellness Arena, and that's when the, uh, the weigh-in is going to happen. Uh, festivities start at 3.30 right here on Bassmaster.com. First fish at 4.30. Exactly right. And if you've tuned in on Bassmaster.com watching Bassmaster Live, big hats off to all the fans. Everybody that showed up to this tournament have watched us online. Unbelievable tournament. The arena will be rocking come 3.30 and especially at 4.30. Going to be plenty to see there. It is a visual spectacle. Uh, gun, uh, yeah, yeah, the gun show, welcome. <laughs> we'll have that and so much more. Some big ones, maybe one more big one that we didn't see during the course of this day. But it will be so much fun. The Bassmaster Classic weigh-in is always just a peak point of the year for fans, everyone who loves sports. Hey, like you said, Z, most of the time we pretty much know we do. who's going to win this we event. Do. We no absolutely clue. do not have an idea uh -uh. who's going to win this event. There's three, maybe four people that could I, win this. I, here's what's interesting. I, have, I said this on air. I have got texts from a lot of the cameramen that are out on the water, what they think they have, and I still, if I calculate it, cannot tell you who's going to win this wow. tournament. Wow, that is rare. <laughs> that Usually is rare. You have, you have a, at yeah. least an inkling of who's going to win the tournament. Man, still wide open, and we won't, whoa, look out. We won't go know. On now. Until, go, yeah, go on now. Go on. Get on out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you keep doing that, and you'll be on out of here. Yeah, that's right. Oh, we can't wait for the weigh-in to get underway. We'll just have to keep, uh, you know, fretting and wondering and pulling for our favorites and see who comes out on top of it all. One life will be changed. That is for no sure. Doubt. Forever. So Written I'll, into the legends. I'll have to say, i got to pay off a debt. I've done pretty decent on trivia this who'd week. Who'd you have a Mike with? McKinnis, the producer in the, I mean, Cheers Mike so. McKinnis. So I've got cool. to go pay out a debt to him. What? I, bet, I bet my life savings on Brandon Cobb. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Well, 50 you know. cents. <laughs> That's, might make you a partner. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. There's no, there's no telling what might happen. So great being able to share all of this with you, especially all, all day long. The last day has been the best day. Uh, I think you know, as far as competition goes, as far as what's on the line. Yeah, absolutely. The final day of the classic is is so much better when you've got good tight competition. It's almost too tight this time around. Totally agree with that. Big, big thanks to all of you that have watched us online, everybody that showed up to this party here this week. And I mean this, I love working with you guys and the whole production crew. It's been a heck of a ride, Same man. Same to you, Z. Yes.
No, hold on. Wait, oh, what? Let's pause the music. We have a little live Not action on the water we need to get up. to. We are told here, and we'll take it. Oh, my gosh. Two minutes till less than two minutes till check in. Oh, boy. wow. He got back out in the wind with the red crankbait. You're kidding me. My goodness. <laughs> He's choked it. Might have done it. Wow. Might have oh, no. done it. I can't even get the bait out. What's the time? Bait's out in the box. It will go. Let me get right there, guys. Get rid of his smallest fish. Oh, my gosh. Oh. This is We're going to let it lay right there. What do you say, yeah. Tommy? I say that's, let's I do let it. it. Let's lay leave. right there. We don't want to know everything just right now at this moment. That changes the aspect of things, though. We will see if it changes enough to play. make Stetson Blaylock your Bassmaster Classic champ. That is far from a certainty right now. Again, what a day. What a great bunch of anglers. These 25 who have made Absolutely. it to the final day. They put on a great show. They worked so hard yeah. to get here. This opportunity you only get so many times in your lifetime. Stetson put that fish in the box at 259. Oh my goodness. Yeah. There's something special about the Bassmaster Classic and I thought about this. There's always weird, weird ghosts that show up on the final day of the Bassmaster Classic. That is absolutely, absolutely how this tournament ended in the last minute on the water. Uh. God, it's just you couldn't draw it up any better than this. No, no Hollywood script writer no. could improve on this. All right, before we leave you, wow. let's throw it to our man Robbie Floyd. He is coming in right now with Stetson Blaylock. They will take the Bassmaster Classic victory. This may be the closest one if you can pull this off. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. It's been an amazing day. The best day I've ever had on Hartwell, for sure. Coming from behind, I know it's a long shot, but we're gonna make them earn it today. When you caught those five pounders, you knew this day could be special, didn't you? I did, I really did, and it turned out to be one heck of a day. Unreal. I even asked you, I said right before, as the clock's literally ticking zero right now, even if you caught one, you would still have to call. You caught one there, I mean, literally at the last second. Yeah, I did, and there was like four or five right there on that brush pile. I don't, I didn't know that tree was there. I fished it this morning, that's where I started, but I didn't see those fish. They're there, I mean, had I known, you know, if I'd have just pulled up there 30 minutes earlier, what could I have done? But we made a day of it. I mean, that's all we can do. We gave it everything we had. You feel like it's enough? No, I feel like I needed, uh, I feel like I've got right at 19 and a half or 20 pounds, and I feel like I needed 22 to have a real chance to win. But they bit good for me, so I know they bit good for the other competitors. And, uh, you know, I did all I could do. I'm happy. I mean, if I finish fourth or fifth with that, so be it. If I finish second, hey, I ran it as hard as I could all day, and I, I caught most of the fish that bit this week, and uh, I'm happy with it. This will be one of the closest Bassmaster Classics in history. It's crazy. Let me put the 